I didn't plug in my headphones yet. <laughs> Welcome back to the Open Chess Anime Podcast. <laughs> I am your host, the Anime Collector. <laughs> Joining me tonight is Greenline. <laughs> now, welcome, everybody. Thanks for having us here. Reese2753. Um, hello. Lance. Haven't you heard that I'm Lance? Random11. Hello. And Phenom. Hey. And uh, many apologies. We were supposed to go live uh, over an hour ago. And then I realized my son had homework that's due tomorrow. And I had to do all of it for him. And by do all of it for him, I mean dictate exactly yeah, what sure he should write. Done. And somehow that took longer than just giving him an F. Right? <laughs> anyway, so uh, it's been a, it's been a, a night. So uh, jumping right in, thank you all for being here. Um, I would like to remind you that if you would like to support us, it's a great time to do so because I need the money. <laughs> <laughs> my, I don't know. If, I, I guess, I guess I haven't mentioned this yet. My car had an issue the other day. I think I mentioned this last, last podcast, right? Was that that long ago? I don't know. The alternator. Uh, so I, I got to tell you, you know, I, something that's very disappointing to me. In the manual for my car, it indicates that the little light on the dashboard that's shaped like a battery is to tell you when the battery is no longer charging. Therefore, that should go on immediately when the alternator stops working. But instead, it waits to go on until the battery has died and failed on me. That's not cool. That was a whole big day. Not going to go into too much detail on it, but I had to carry a battery from AutoZone for like a block and a half, and that shit is heavy. Uh, and then I had to, of course, get a, a new alternator, which is also not cheap. So supporting the podcast can be done via the Patreon. I recommend this method because it's actually a method that gets money to us. The other things you can do are supporting... The Anime Collector Patreon, although I love... Which will never it, bill you. I do not <laughs> recommend this method because... <laughs> I recommend this me method. Produce, yeah, chances of yeah. me producing content. <laughs> I mean, look, I'll be real. If I was raking in $1,000 per video with this Patreon, you bet your ass I'd be getting more content out, right? <laughs> because this would be how I get out of my day job, <laughs> right? But I just don't see it happening right now at the level that I have the patronage. Uh, there are more ways to support us uh, on the website. Uh, direct donations. These will be PayPal bills monthly or just a donation, a one-time donation you can also do. Uh, and then we have the affiliate links. Now, Amazon messaged me and let me know that we were selected as part of a group to opt into basically just getting a higher rate of affiliate earnings for the next three months so we did it all right and i gotta tell you random 11 has set up an awesome affiliate bot so on the discord which i should probably put the link in the in the in the chat for um if you if you are shopping for people like for Christmas or whatever you're doing. Look, you just or need a, yourself. A, new, a new a new thing, a deodorant, a new toothbrush. I don't care what the hell it is, as long as it won't embarrass you to post it in the Discord. If you post that link in this Discord, the affiliate bot will convert your post with the affiliate link. So you post it, then the affiliate bot spits out the link with our affiliate code. You click on it, and then you add it to cart. It's that easy. Doing that costs you no additional money for your purchase on Amazon and it funds the show and helps me pay off this alternator. Right. So, <laughs> so an easier wow. method that it's sounds just great. Back to, just an easier method is just, just to bookmark the Amazon affiliate link. Yes. So the other way is to um, go to ocapodcast.com slash support, open either dot com, dot ca, wherever you're at. And bookmark this and make sure there aren't any other, like delete your history, your browsing history, then bookmark this. And then every time you type in A-M-A-Z, it'll, it'll take you here. 
So that's one, that's another way you can do it. Anyway, enough grifting, not <laughs> enough grifting, but, but enough for now. I would also like to mention, I recently guested on the anime back when podcast with Rekka. So if you are interested, you can check out his video. It's linked in the doc, right? OCAPodcast.com slash OCA-205. That's there. Uh, Rekka will also be, be joining linked us. in the description. I don't think it's in the description, but... Um, well, the, the, the link to the doc is, yeah. But uh, um, Rekka will be joining us on a future date. Uh, maybe tonight. I don't know. I told him just come when he's available because uh, I think he's in the middle of moving right now. So it was it was not an opportune night for him. <laughs> anyway, do you guys know what day it is? Monday. Monday the October third. October the third. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Why is the overlays tab closed? October huh? the third. <laughs> so, uh, Who's in Dick? Vic Mignogna, today? Oh. I would like to share. According to Catherine Tusum, the new filings in in uh, Vic's uh, appeal were filed. Yet there was a motion for rehearing and an en banc reconsideration. But the problem is, the only difference between the two is that one was titled motion for rehearing on the cover page, and the other one was titled motion for en banc reconsideration. Apart from that, they were identical. And uh, also, Ty labeled as a certificate of compliance, this document complies with the form requirements of Texas Rule of Appellate Procedure 9.4 and contains 7,944 words, except those items excluded by Rule 9.4 H1. And apparently, the maximum length of documents listed below must not exceed the following limits, including 4 thousand five hundred words if computer uh, so uh that wasn't so good more stuff here uh full disclosure here pretty reasonable logical conclusions Catherine Tusum came to here regarding this document that we're not going to spend time going over why because the appeals court already denied the motion so the uh in the Court of Appeals, Second Appellate District of Te Texas at Fourth Worth, they said, We have considered Appellant Victor Mignana's motion for en banc reconsideration. It is the opinion of the court that the motion for en banc reconsideration should be and is hereby denied, and that the opinion and judgment of August 18, 2022 stand unchanged. And regarding the motion for rehearing, same thing, basically. So, uh... Where do we go from here? Well, same place as before. If if Vic wants to go to uh, the Supreme Court of Texas, he could try. Um, it's going to cost him more money. Personally, I think he should do it. But I'll be honest, you know, Ty's filings have been such shit that I don't know that it's going to work. Uh, he needs a new lawyer. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. In in appeals, you can't uh, you can't. Hey. No, no, you can't submit new evidence. You know, so like, even if he had a kick-ass lawyer, I just, I don't think, like, he's, Ty's already dug him so deep, right? So, I don't know. But as in regards to what we talked about the podcast before last, nothing's changed on that front, you know? It's all, it's up to, you know, us as fans or whatever to continually hold feet to fire and whatnot regarding, uh, the false statements that are constantly being thrown around about Vic uh, and even about the trial that didn't even happen. Right. The, and all that. So uh, I guess nothing has changed now. Vic ironically always seems to go to the Funko pop route once things are in the shitter. So that sucks. <laughs> but, but if you like Funko pops, if you're weird like that, if you got that kink, uh, he's doing a new Funko Pop signing series um, for um, One Piece, Full Metal Alchemist, and uh, as Broly from Dragon Ball Z. So uh, he's partnering with PSA to grade them so that they will be uh, authenticated as, you know, his signature and in good condition and all that shit. Um, so there huh. you go. If you are interested, it's in the doc and you can click on the link to get the more information there. Now... 
somebody in our discord showcased this amazing thing that happened um so you guys recall this was his reply to the ruling um from earlier and uh apparently ronald toye the fourth also known as Chunky Milk Uwu or whatever he went by before, <laughs> as LMAO Get Fucked You Pussy. Now, this account is from August 2019, but that tweet, August 21st, 2022, is the first one apparently that this account made, or at least all the other ones have been deleted and the name was changed. I don't know. Very strange because. It's following both of real Ron Toye's accounts and it's being followed by both of Ron Toye's real accounts, not followed by Monica. I don't even know if it's following Monica. Following Jamie. Oh yeah, it is following Monica. Now, uh, somebody in the Discord, I think it was Mecha TV, had pointed out that um, now that Nick Ricada has been um, banned off of Twitter, it seems to un have unlocked the blockchain. Uh, also, also the thing we call the block bot because the blockchain is confusing when it comes to crypto. Um, but here's the huh? thing: that's not true. Um, if I click on this, oops, it still says you are blocked. So just because it allows me to try to follow, are you following Vic? says you have been blocked from following this user at their request um well i'm just saying the the thing that they said was that <laughs> the fact that it says follow and the fact that they're even featured here indicates that they're no longer blocking you but apparently that's not the case as long as now anyway so i do not believe for one second that this is the real ron uh toy the fourth i'm pretty sure it's a troll i think it very likely might even just because of the fact that it's following and Follow, followed by the other Ron Toy accounts. I think it actually is just a sock puppet of uh, of Ron Toy the third. I, I <laughs> no, I don't know. It, that seems weird because it know. was my kid who said. I don't all know. That. It's very strange. It's very strange. I don't know. Make of it what you will. I'm following now. I will. <laughs> I will. I will be able to see if any weird stuff happens. Uh, this is definitely, I mean, at least the roller coaster has a couple more bumps in it before the end, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's basically it in Vic News, uh, I'm sad to say. Um, now we've got, oh, I totally skipped. No, nope, we got to do this first. All right. So Crunchyroll has updated uh, their advertising VOD <laughs> policy. So Crunchyroll, this is a, a statement provided to Anime News Network. Crunchyroll continues to make more than 1,000 hours of anime available for free through our advertiser-supported tier. Select episodes of our most popular anime prior to the current season, this should also be highlighted, not sure why it isn't, they must have changed something, are still available to watch for free with ads. Similarly, we do make new content available for free with ads via our seasonal samplers launched at the beginning of each anime season. AVOD, which is Advertiser Video On Demand, meaning it's content you can watch for free because you watched an ad basically like it's supported by ads um but you're not paying other than watching the ad right so avod content will rotate and refresh regularly sometimes returning for stunts whatever that means special promotions and commemorative occasions i'm assuming they mean like uh a month of witches and then everything from witches is i don't know that's what i'm guessing that means crunchyroll confirmed I'm sure there's probably more shit here it's supposed to be highlighted, but it's all fucked up. Crunchyroll confirmed that with continuing anime, ad-supported viewing will not be available with episodes starting with the spring season, but episodes prior to the spring season will be available. Uh, Crunchyroll previously allowed free ad-supported streaming for simulcast titles one week after an episode premiered. So basically the point is that stuff that used to be free is no longer free. ANN reached out to Crunchyroll after discovering that several titles, including El Hazard, Hero Bank, Kirato Prechan, and Fairy Musketeers, which had used to be available for free users until August 31st, had then changed to content for premium users only as of September 1st. Now, moving on here. 
this person. Uh, free Myanmar from dictatorship. Tell me if you agree, uh, Ronan Ja. Um, said, ever since Crunchyroll stopped doing free with ad watch for current anime since March, that has left the months of the most recent Detective Conan episodes locked to premium only with no signs of a change. It's ridiculous and frustrating. Premium, 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 premium. Can't watch shit. Nothing's free anymore. Pay then. It's almost <laughs> like you're in Canada now. All right. Anyway, so Lindsay Lovard said both Crunchyroll and Funimation are increasing their subscription cost, albeit in different territories. Funimation is going from $99.99 per year to $149.99. Unsure if Funimation's increase affects all subscribers. Crunchyroll's monthly increase can depend on the subscriber tier and seems to be affecting Canada, New Zealand, Australia, some slash all euro currency countries, Chile, and Mexico. According to an email sent to a Canadian subscriber, Crunchyroll's cost increase is is a the result of merging libraries with Funimation. So basically, if Sony's going to own the two largest streaming, you know, Netflix style, you know, subscription streaming platforms for anime, uh, then they're going to make half as much money if they don't charge you twice as much when they merge them, right? So... Uh, as part of Crunchyroll's transition to a unified subscription service with Funimation, a necessary step to achieve completion giggity, of the unification <laughs> is for Crunchyroll to adjust the prices in Canada for the mega fan plan. While this is purely speculation, the simultaneous increase of both services when the purpose is to merge them feels like taking from both ends. According to users on Reddit, the price increases are $12.49 uh, Canadian per month, for mega fan or 999 for regular fan 99 whatever mxn is is that like pesos <laughs> i don't know anyway um and then euros new zealand dollar australian dollar those are the raises right um you can find mention of the increase on crunchyroll's fact but it doesn't uh lay out which countries are affected or the respective price increases blah blah blah, blah. basically the point is that um Funimation and Crunchyroll are trying to scrape up more money and they're passing that on to you. And, and this is not an accurate, true statement here, but I thought Zethus Thorn made a great, like kind of what it feels like to be uh, a subscriber. Crunchyroll be like, we can't, uh, we can't fix the subtitle issue because we don't have enough translators. So we like to make a new tier called super fan, which promises accurate straight at the second subtitles for a dollar more than a fan subscription. We will continue delaying subtitles for your favorite shows unless you give us more money. I thought that was like sort of an accurate uh, description of how it feels to be a customer. Uh, now in, in more important news regarding crunchy roll, Oh boy. <laughs> let's uh let's stop there for now. So let's watch this entire video. It is five-ish minutes long. Make sure I don't have it on. Okay, let me uh the entire video. Jeez. <laughs> Did you copyright test it? I think so i'm gonna pause it throughout because uh it's important too oh look at the most replayed two seconds in <laughs> hi everybody kyle mccarthy here that? you may know me as the english voice of she yes yeah. a, a mob in the anime series Mob Psycho 100. I'm making this video to let you know that, uh, well, first of all, in case you weren't aware, there is a third season of Mob Psycho 100 on the way very, very soon. As what? a fan myself, I was super excited about this. I'm, I'm a big fan of the show. I love playing Mob, uh, and I, I love you guys, the fans. So real quick, I just want to point out. Trust exit out. First of all, this guy's supposed to be an actor, and he can't even convince me that he's excited and loves me. <laughs> uh, but I'm making this video because I wanted to let you know that uh, there have been talks over the past couple of weeks between the cast of the show and Crunchyroll, who is who's producing the show, 
uh, about potentially producing this season of the show on a SAG-AFTRA union contract. And as a result of those conversations, I'm making this video because it's, it's looking very, very likely that I will not be reprising my role as Mob. I know for some of you, that probably sucks to hear. If, believe me, it sucks a lot to say. Uh, okay, so real quick. From everything I've heard so far, it's not just in this video, but just generally out, out in the public about this, right? What's been said. It sounds like multiple people are going to be recast, but we don't know which ones. And I'll just say, as long as Reagan is still Chris Niosi, I don't give a shit. Like, that's the only character <laughs> I give a damn about. So. <laughs> um, here's the thing, though. Uh, just, to, just to give a little bit of clarity to why this is happening. This is the direct result of Sony buying Crunchyroll and Crunchyroll taking over Funimation. Or more specifically, Funimation wearing the Crunchyroll brand as a mask. Right? <laughs> so what happened is seasons one and two, seasons one and two of uh, Mob Psycho 100 were licensed by Crunchyroll before the merger with Funimation. And so Crunchyroll produced the dub at Studioopolis. Is that what we decided? Or was it? It was Bang Zoom. Yes, we Crunchy decided. Used, that's what we came up with uh, when we looked it up. Uh, they used Bang Zoom um, in LA to dub seasons one and two of Mob Psycho 100. And then through their partnership with Funimation, Funimation released the physical um, discs for the Blu-rays and whatnot, right? Now, post-merger, now that Funimation is Crunchyroll and Crunchyroll doesn't exist, uh, they're doing the dub in-house at Funimation in Texas, a right-to-work state without the union representation that they have in LA. So that's why this is now an issue where it wasn't but, previous. But, 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 but crunchy robot for animation. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it very you much predicted this. Oh, wait, it, we did. It's almost like uh, Sony, after buying Funimation and ruining that brand, is now determined to also ruin Crunchyroll by just being Funimation again. Right? So, um, anyway, continuing here. Oh, I'm clicking on the fucking thing instead of on the actual video i'm i'm really really bummed about this but i wanted to let you all know how we got here and, and, and where here is as a sag after a union member and a member of the sag after a dubbing steering committee it's really really important to me personally that all the work that i do be covered by a sag after a union contract for those of you who don't know sag after is a union that represents actors Unions exist to protect their workers. I could get into the nitty gritty about why unions are a good thing and why SAG-AFTRA exists and what they do for performers like myself. But but I'd be lying. Uh, I'm not going to muddy up this video with all that information. If you're curious, you can just scroll through the Twitter thread that follows this post. It has been made abundantly clear to me that in the case of season three of Mob Psycho 100, Crunchyroll is not going to be producing that show on a sag after contract. And I want to put this little note in here just to be very, very clear. It's not about money. They were prepared to pay me at least what I would be getting on a union scale contract, possibly more. They just don't want to put it on a union contract. It, with 99.9% .9 of the work that I do, that would be the end of the conversation for me. I would say, thank you very much for the opportunity, but I don't work non-union. But with the help of my castmates, who I've been in close contact with throughout the course of these negotiations, I was able to see an opportunity here. Crunchyroll has historically been very, very hesitant to take anything that they produce onto a SAG-AFTRA contract. And uh, just because of the role that I have in this particular show and this particular show's popularity with you guys, it seemed like maybe there was an opportunity to change that. So I went back to Crunchyroll with the offer that I would agree to work on this season of this show, non-union, on the condition that they agree to sit down and meet with SAG-AFTRA representatives 
with the purposes of negotiating a potential contract for them to use on future productions. That's all I was asking. Not a commitment to definitely guaranteed make such an agreement happen, not a commitment to definitely guarantee using such an agreement if it came into existence, just an agreement to good faith negotiations, an agreement to sit down and have a conversation on their own terms, where SAG-AFTRA can present the needs of the performers that they represent on a contract with any given employer, and a conversation where Crunchyroll can present their needs as a production company and just find out if there's any middle ground to be found between those two so that a contract could be made for future productions. So two things. Number one, first of all, this is extremely disingenuous, I think. Um, throughout a lot of the uh, things that have covered this, you know, like different outlets and whatnot, it is extremely wishy-washy on whether or not he outright refused to do the dub without a union contract or hashtag just a meeting wanted to exclusively do it. Like oh, I'm willing to do a non-union contract as long as you guys will come to the table and just have a meeting with the union reps. So that's number one. I want to mention that. Uh, I would just like to say though, um, fuck Crunchyroll, fuck Sony, fuck Funimation. They are all suck. Okay. They don't deserve any, um, I shouldn't be backing up their horse on this, uh, thing. That's not, that's not what I'm intending to do. But second, I would also like to point out that as we talk about the rates that the, uh, voice actors are getting and whatnot, everybody across the board is owed a raise on grounds of inflation alone. They should probably get a 20% raise at minimum, just on inflation alone. So as we get into the conversation on whether or not, you know, people are fairly paid and should they go for the union and all that shit, I just want to have that laid out there that, that regardless of whether or not they're bitching and entitled and whatnot, they do deserve at least a 20% raise just to cover the inflation that has happened up to this point and will likely continue throughout the rest of this year and in the next year. So I, just throwing that out there. I'd like to make a comment as well. When he said, I, I tried my best to watch that video and I watched it several times and I tried to watch it with an open mind. But when he said the whole, we want to have a sit down, no consequences, yada, yada, yada. That into me is not being forthright because you're just wasting both people's time. If you're saying, let's get together, but I have nothing that I desire out of this conversation. Bullshit. Okay. First yeah. I, I just say that I think that you covered again, I, I think it's super disingenuous for reasons that are going to become really apparent as I unveil everything I've got to show you about this topic. Hit up. Um, but uh, real quick, let me go over some of these chats real quick. So Effing Anime Act said, you think it would have gone down this way if Rakeda Law was Vic's attorney? So let's just say in an imaginary world that Rakeda was based in Texas and could have taken on this case. I don't think he would have succeeded exclusively on the grounds that he does a show every goddamn night. But if you were to just say, you know, if, if you were to take that off the table, let's just say that that YouTube wasn't Rakeda's, you know, main source of income. And Ty was, Beard was the YouTuber instead. <laughs> I think Rakeda would have done a better job than Ty. Rakeda repeatedly, like, knew Texas law better than Ty because part of his job that brings him, what did he just reveal, $700,000 a year off of YouTube? Uh, was wow. that he, uh, he does the research, right? And he presents it to his audience every night. So I think he would have done better, but at the same time, I don't think he alone has the, let me put it this way. If it wasn't uh, Beard, Harris, Bullock, and Hughes, and was instead Rakeda, Harris, Bullock, and Hughes, yes, I think he would have probably done a lot better, right? If that was the situation, just based on um, how well he grasps the, uh, um, 
the way that you know the law is interpreted and whatnot, he is far more uh, articulate on it than Ty Beard was. Um, and uh, I think he wrote, he probably would have done a much better job. Yes. Um, but would he have, st- would he have outright won? I don't know because his, uh, his with judge Chup, I think Ricada's attitude and personality would have been even more abrasive against Chup's no nonsense, you know, sort of um, approach than Ty Beards. So it's hard to say. However, at the end of the day, I still think Vic is in a better place now than he was when they canceled him uh, in 2019. And uh, Effing Animatic also said, so Leverage is saying that streaming, uh, I think you mean Leverage, Lindsay Leverage. So Leverage is saying that streaming Crunchyroll and Funimation, uh, other countries is taking it from both ends. So, so meaning raising the price. And you're saying, I think she knows what she's talking about taking from both ends. Uh, I think her husband does. <laughs> Oh God! For reference, references I shouldn't have made without bringing up his Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stan says, "Are we really surprised by this? Not at all. Not even a little bit. In fact, um, Savakis had tweeted out uh, this one. Let me let me pull this up real quick. Uh, he had said, But let me get this straight. Um, oh, am I, I'm not screen sharing. Anything. You got to take Kyle off. I know. I'm sorry. I failed. Screen sharing. So let me get this straight. A major movie slash TV studio buys the largest anime distributor and within a few months does common sense business cut cost cutting without regard for the shows, fans, or talent, and everybody is now enraged? I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell you. Well, not that shocked. Right? So... Yeah, I think that I think that we're all in the same place on that. Yeah, I'm not at all surprised to see this. Um, and then Smart Geek 97 says, "Did you see Jonah Scott's new tweet that sanctioned by Sony to have a YouTube series with Alex Lee for a VA comedy show to show the hip cool things of being a VA?" No, I oh, actually no. haven't seen this. If one of you guys can pull this up, that would be awesome. Um, and then Effing Animatic said he wants the SAG meeting with the Crunchyroll so the Will Smith slap doesn't happen and the voice acting. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did I find Lance's uh, um, sock puppet account? <laughs> Ouch. Uh, Stan says, no, Kyle, you want to control who gets the work and what other folks get paid. You could not just do the job. So it's it's really hard. I mean, I, from from the perspective of fuck unions, yeah, I get this point, and I agree to uh, to a degree. But it's really hard to um, to really under like to really know where they're coming from when it comes to the uh, the specific um, point he's making, because as he put it, um, basically he had a discussion with all of the cast. Or you know the majority of the cast, the LA people. It was a conspiracy, and he decided that because he's the main character, he's going to be the one to take this fall, right? So I don't know. Uh, it's called voiceover to go, vo to go, uh, but feels a bit like a being a voice actor is cool after the union drama. Cringe, man. Uh, Luigi the Mouse 64 says Crunchyroll still sucks for stealing subscriber money to make High Guardian Spice, yes, and X Arm, def- double yes. <laughs> and the mm-hmm. subtitles can be wrong, always. Japan is having streaming services. I think there is Animeka. Well, they've got a bunch of, you know, on demand stuff in Japan. I know Michael Hollick is mad at the Actors Union for not paying voice actors enough as the people working on the technologies help put out products. Okay. Um, okay, cool. I'll, I'll pull that up. Thank you. Uh, um, yes. In terms of uh, controlling who gets to work and stuff, didn't Vic get kicked out of the union in the um, in California or something like that? Because I remember he said something along the lines of like he can't work anymore in. Um, California because his agent dropped him and stuff like that. 
that's fucked up. See, and, and again, this is the thing is that this creates um, uh, a barrier to entry that in this situation can be like, look at all the things we can do for you. But if you, if you, if you do something we don't like, you're done, you know, kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's effectively what, what unions do is it's like a mafia of whatever industry you're in, you like, know, like they can't collective bargaining. Projects, that they can't, that like the union can tell them, no, you can't work on this project. They can, but in the case of SAG-AFTRA, if you're non-union, you can still work on union projects as long as you're in a right-to-work state. It's a whole weird thing. They, I, I, all the shit I've been reading about, all the voice actors who are drinking the union Kool-Aid or trying to you know, spell out how you can still do the work as long as you don't go to work in a state that's not right-to-work in which case you have to pay the, the union fees. See, because the thing about right to work is that it actually prevents unions from um, extorting money out of you. Uh, it's one of, the, one of the things that it does. So um, anyway, uh, Crunchyroll will keep giving Monica Rial and Jamie Markey roles. Monica dated Illic Guardiola, who did statutory rape, and Jamie supports school shootings. They can go to jail for unrelated crimes. Well, I mean... While both of these statements are half true, <laughs> uh, it would be incorrect to make them the way you did. <laughs> um, let's. Um, so the way I see this uh, situation is, so Mob Psycho has two other seasons, very beloved show. Mm -hmm. um, there, I see them as original cast as their own like bargaining chip. So yeah, I, I feel like this situation could have been theoretically each of them just use themselves as like, I'm an OG of the, the cast pay meet my needs individually, like union or not. Cause as, as Ka Kyle, that's his name um, said, they, the Crunchyroll was willing to meet like, you know, the same pay and all that stuff that he would have gotten in union. What he said, so, he was very specific about it. He said, it wasn't okay. about money. They were willing to, to pay me what I would have made. Uh, with union scale now with you or scale, more he said even. right with union scale means not only the money you get that goes into your pocket but also the extra money that would go to your pension and to your health care and to all those things so okay they were well, they well that were just makes it even more compelling and, uh, and yeah they were willing to to they were willing to really move you know, heaven and earth for them. Exactly. To, in order to, uh, to, to keep the legacy cast. Right. And again, fuck Crunchyroll, fuck Sony, and that, fuck Funimation, yep. but <laughs> at least they tried, you know? So now, and again, uh, there's a whole big thing well, here. Let well, me, that's what I'm getting at minute. is that the rest of the cast could have followed suit. Yeah. Let me, let me finish this last minute here. As far as where things stand right now, uh, Crunchyroll's a big corporation. There's a lot of people that have to weigh in on a decision like this, most of whom I have not spoken to. But uh, all I needed them to do was agree to sit down and have a conversation, and it seems like that's not something that they want to do. So I just wanted to let you guys know that unless things change, you're probably going to be hearing at least one unfamiliar voice on Mob Psycho 100 Season 3. Maybe more. I don't want to speak for anybody in particular, and I certainly don't want to to, to cast judgment or blame against any actor who, who takes whatever work opportunities they're given. Everybody's in different situations in their lives and, and in their careers, and they all have to make their own decisions and, and the decisions that are best for them. And I'm not going to, to begrudge anybody for that. Thank you guys so very much for your support. I love you all, and I hope that the next time I talk to you, I will have some happier news to share. You have not convinced me one bit. I mean, it's all on him at this point. <laughs> right. Now, uh, I think it's worth uh, mentioning. So first of all, this is the Twitter thread he was talking about, where he says, unions protect the workers they represent, chiefly by you're giving not, them collective sure. bargaining power. Oh, you're right. Thank you, Reese. You're a good son. <laughs> that, that's not what you said before the stream. You told me to unzip that mess, young man. <laughs> what? 
What? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just our lips are unseal that mouth, young man. <laughs> the one thing. Out of <laughs> context, it that does not extremely make sense. Really gross. <laughs> yeah, that's in context, it made sense. Like, unzip the... those <laughs> pants. <laughs> No, 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 he said, un that "Unzip you that mouth." Un un right. Unsteal that I mouth. Like I said, our lips are sealed. About that one thing that you're supposed to not skip. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, hopefully that gets brought up when it's contextually relevant in the podcast. <laughs> so here's what I had to say. Unions protect the workers they represent chiefly by giving them collective bargaining power. Also, I would just like to point out. Um, flags and also i i couldn't see it previously because i have youtube premium but if i look at the ah oh, fuck me if i look at the archived version i forgot that i i put it up as way back machine instead of the archive uh one moment you what, can is see it gonna play ads that are relevant no 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 he he has a um he has a what is that thing that everybody uses for their uh merch? Uh, Link tree or whatever. No, no, no. Teespring. He has a he has a Teespring uh thing. What did, what's just say? Mob saying union for life or something? No, he's got the I wear this for you. It's a it's a face mask, right? So uh bleeding heart. Uh, I, this is all for the, the betterment of mankind and viva Ukraine and, and all that shit, right? Hook, line and sinker. Just pointing that out. Now, again, on principle, I stand against unions based on, on, I, I detest the idea that people who cannot compete in the workforce choose to get together to collect, you know, the collective bargaining power, which is to beat down the competition because they're getting the, they're mopping the floor with them. Right. Like basically, for example, um, well, I, well, let's just read this and we'll, we'll come to it in a minute. So units protect the workers they represent chiefly by giving them collective bargaining power, meaning that instead of negotiating the terms of your employment individually, one-on-one, -on -one, the union negotiates baseline minimums for everyone all at once. So basically what he's saying is that because you can't get the you can't get the company to give you what you want, we're going to make sure they give everybody what we want uh whereas if you were, you know, like the most talented voice actor in the world, companies would be, you know, um tripping over themselves to, to give you the best deal possible because they want you because you bring in the money, right? Um, now, instead of negotiating in terms of your employment individually one-on-one, -on -one, the union negotiates baseline minimums for everyone all at once. This generally leads to better terms for all workers because as a collective, you have sway in these negotiations. How much you get paid, how long your hours are, how hard those hours are, how often you get breaks or time off, what safety precautions are taken, etc. Just one example of how SAG-AFTRA helps voiceover performers specifically is by negotiating terms that protect us from vocally stressful work. We often have to do a lot of screaming slash shouting on the job, but our contracts ensure it's never for too long a time. Our unions also, our unions also gone to great lengths to educate both us and our employers on the dangers of vocally stressful work. And there are plenty of other benefits. But the big ones I want to point out are, are the health insurance and retirement fund. America Clearly doesn't Aaron have Dismuke universal not, health insurance. Uh, have a union. Again, like listen to the, I know better than you. And, and therefore we, so I'll just say unions are a band-aid to a problem it <laughs> but the band-aid actually makes the problem worse it's also a situation as as bad as i know the job everyone knows it's not just me fuck but unions also have you know that you you could you could say there's good on either side but unions have another issue of even if someone isn't fully like good at their job 
you know, because of their union situation, it makes it a lot harder for that company to deal with that individual as well. You know, you've got yeah. a shit worker or something going on. It's like, you don't just have to deal with this. You have to deal with everyone whose dick they're sucking. So it's, it's, so it's a big cluster. It. <laughs> so I'm Stan here, says, Kyle, if you are unwilling to do the work to negotiate your own pay with the company, then yeah, the union is for you. Uh, Sweet Hone Girl 95 says, Neosi has been really quiet regarding any news related to Mob Psycho, not even liking any post. Good. <laughs> I hope he's still in it. That's the only the only cast member I give a shit about. Um, Luigi the Mouse 64 says, I was told that the anime studios get a lot of money from the publishers to do what they want with, uh, to do what they want with it. That is why the animators are paid less. Just give your money to the animation creators. I'm not sure about that. Um, with all the Kickvick tweets he liked recently uh, and the other ass-kissing likes and comments towards Crunchyroll affiliate people, I don't doubt he'd jump at the chance to voice Reagan again if he gets that lucky. Um, I think he would. And I, I think that there's nothing stopping him from taking a non-union contract. Kyle McCarley, again... All I'm pointing out here is that he very much is coming off as the I know better than you, and I am the better, more moral, more virtuous person. So I am going to take the fall in the name of, of the collective bargaining that bringing every voice actor up a peg on their pay scale. And, it, you know, like that's very much how this comes across to me based on all, you know, the clues of the virtue signaling he's been doing. The studios uh, do not need the money from the fans. The studios already have the money. Uh, see how far you can run a studio without any fans. <laughs> what ticks me off uh, is a voice actor, nobody, who ties Vic into this drama of theirs when he doesn't work. Oh, right. So I, I saw your, uh, I saw that exchange on Twitter. I, I don't have it in the, in the doc here to pull up, but I did see that, that uh, somebody just decided to make it about Vic and then claim it was fans making it about Vic. And it was, yeah, it was pretty pathetic. Uh, Sony should have went bankrupt. Japan sort of already quit Sony. Well, no, Sony quit Japan is what happened. Um, anyway, so uh, so he goes on to say here, um, America doesn't have universe, universal health insurance. We pay for coverage, which can be expensive. And it often doesn't cover everything. Some workers can get it from their employers, which is why it's expensive, which often means better slash more affordable coverage. No, literally the reason it's expensive. But that's not possible for performers. We're freelancers. We work for a lot of different employers in very short bursts. So it wouldn't make any financial sense for any of them to give us health and retirement benefits on their own. That's where sag after comes in. By collecting a small, a small percentage on top of our fee for every job we work on, SAG-AFTRA funds a phenomenal health plan that's very affordable for qualifying members, as well as a retirement plan. Doesn't it sound like his sales pitch is like he's getting a you know, back pocket uh, payment from SAG-AFTRA? To, well, to, well, yeah, I, like I was going to say this earlier. Usually, like, don't... Um... Uh, unions help the the high like the top of the line more than the bottom yeah like um it, and he's one of the steer what do they call it the he, he'll we'll talk about it in a second he's he's like he's in a top position at the union for is that the top the of the pyramid scheme I'll, I'll show you in a minute yeah basically so um, sag after funds a phenomenal health plan that's very affordable for, for qualifying members as well as a retirement plan. These are huge reasons for actors to work union. I could probably go on for days about this, but those are the big bullet points I wanted to cover for those unfamiliar slash uncertain about the benefits of unionization that wouldn't fit in this video. Eight tweets that wouldn't fit in the fucking video. <laughs> fucking unbelievable. Anyway, it, it sounds like, um, a Scientology ad. Like, it doesn't it? That's what I'm saying. Is like this is like uh it, it's a recruitment, is what he's doing. So anyway, um he also I'd said also, just that, quickly, I'd also like to point out that I work at a very small company who does not have a health plan. Now I get Ontario uh health care has some quote unquote free health care, but 
um, you know, the, things like dental and vision care and all that kind of shit doesn't isn't included in the provincial health care plan. So generally people have supplementary health care plans through their work. But my work doesn't because it's so small. It doesn't make sense to. Um, however, there are other um, organizations out there that do offer uh, health care plans for people like me um, where the idea of a health care plan for insurance purposes is if you if you go in by yourself, then the insurance company is just going to be like, OK, well, you know, if you use it, well, we're just going to charge you later then for it. Um, whereas if you spread it out against like hundreds of employees or thousands of employees, mm -hmm. then they're kind of like, OK, well, you know, we're going to assume 10 percent of the people will never use it. And that'll mm -hmm. make up for the 10 percent of people that use it a lot. Right. right. And that helps keep costs a little bit down. Literally any health share, all insurance operates this way. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's effectively so, what it is. So if he's looking for his own health insurance, right, and he goes to a, a private in, uh, insuring company, he's going to get reamed on the costs because he doesn't have this benefit of spreading it out. But like I was saying, there are companies that will offer a pooled plan for like self-employed things that you don't need to join a union for the, the one I'm part of doesn't need, I'm not in a union. Um, so uh, in order to use it as an excuse, wow, I mean, it's the only way I can get health. No, it's not. No, it's the only way I can get cheap help. No, it's not. So just, yeah, as, as Stan put it, you don't need to be in a union to get health insurance and a retirement account. This is another reason for you to join the union because you are unable to, to do the work to get these ba these basic coverage, meaning that you could you could literally you know set up an account for your um, paycheck to be deposited into for a retirement on your own. You don't need a, a, the union to make that happen. That's something you can just do, right? Um, but choosing not to and making it like oh you're so you're lazy are you well i've got a plan for you you can still have a retirement even though you're lazy right kind of idea um and then uh, little rock says i recall a funimation voice actor who opened a gofundme because he couldn't afford it since funimation has no benefits voice actors urge funimation contribute uh referring to chris Ayers, i assume about his um, emphysema or whatever it was, COPD. That's what it was. Anyway, um, so I want to, I want to, I want to round out this point real quick. Kyle McCarley said a lot of people have been asking me how they can support. You're doing it. Let Crunchyroll know in whatever way you see fit that as a fan you'd like them to reconsider their position. Hashtag just a meeting. That's all I'm asking for. And there it is. Does this look familiar to you? It should, because this is exactly what Reba Burr did, weaponizing her Twitter followers to renegotiate a deal. It's also what Amanda Wynn Lee did to renegotiate a deal that she was fucking wrong about, never deleting the tweet. The only apology she gave was, I'm so fucking sorry, blah, 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 right? This is exactly what they do. And this is why I detest these VAs. They treat this with such entitlement. And once again, he says, it's just a meeting. That's all I'm asking for. Well, let's see how far that goes. So Cartoon Cypher uh, interviewed Kyle McCarley. Um, and I, I want to play this. It's I'm very so short. There's surprised. An, there's an hour long SoundCloud uh, interview that you can listen to by clicking on that link. Um, but just to give you the like minute and a half version. This was kind of a perfect storm in that I'm an actor who's been strictly union only with the work I take for the past couple few years now, who happened to be in a lead role in a popular show that Crunchyroll had another season of and wanted to keep non-union. That combination of factors is not going to happen very often. It was one of the other cast members who was like, well, what if you use this as an olive branch to get them to the table? It's a much bigger thing than just this one show. So, yeah, I would do that if it got them to the table. But uh, but they didn't take it, so. <laughs> now I'm not even getting money. 
I'm risking nothing by saying, hey, I won't work on this show if you don't flip it union because all I'm risking is this show. They're not going to offer me any other work that I'm going to take. Yeah. So uh, effectively, he's saying, I won't do it if it's non-union. And I'm not going to do any work for you if it's non-union because I'm uh, the union, like literally, again, it's hashtag just a meeting. But behind the scenes, he's like the top of the pyramid, like we just said, at the union. So how is it going to look for him to take non-union work if he's out there saying everybody should join a union, force your employee to do everything you did? Come on, everybody. It's all about the unions. Like I said, uh, Crunchyroll could easily just be like, okay, we'll we'll have a meeting. And then immediately get in there and be like, yeah, nah, yeah. I, I'm good. And, th but, and see, then here's there the we go. Again, I don't want to defend Crunchyroll because fuck Crunchyroll. But if I were in their shoes, I would do the exact same thing because this is a situation where you cannot give an inch. If you're right to work state and you are not intending to work with unions who are going to constantly come back to the table and raise the rates and renegotiate, and you have to then have royalties where you have to hire accountants to keep tabs on every ounce of income you got on this show and that show and what percentage it gets split off to this person's contract for their union and everything that is a huge overhead that they don't currently have to to use they don't currently have to pay for right that i don't blame them for you know not wanting to touch this union uh meeting with a 10-foot pole and let, let's uh let's just wrap this one up here the I think all the actors, L.A., Texas, union, non-union, stand to benefit from a union contract at Crunchyroll. So as long as nobody tries to turn this into an actor versus actor conversation, I think we'll be okay. The last, what has it been now? We By the way, you just told Crunchyroll how to make this go bad for him. <laughs> and a half since Turn this it into whole an actor situation versus actor started conversation. has been transformative for me on a personal level. I feel so empowered because of the support the fans have expressed. I get to be the protagonist. It's my life. When corporate profits are at an all-time high, that indicates to me that there's still plenty of room for everybody down at the bottom levels to get a bigger piece of the pie. When one group manages to advocate for themselves through organizing efforts, I think that signals to everybody else that it's possible. I'm optimistic about it. I think we will get them to sit down at the table and meet. If we can do that much, I think there's a high probability that we'll be able to come to terms with them that'll benefit everybody involved, including Crunchyroll as a company. Trickle down economics. So the, the thing is that when the company starts doing well, it does trickle down in the sense that they do more and more business. That's really, how you continue to grow. It, it really you, it, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I'm just saying, like, you don't you don't take the money and say, All right, everybody, you know, here is you know your demon slayer Mugen train uh million hey, dollars, hey. right? Here it is, everybody. Here's your million dollars for, for happening to be in Mugen Train, right? Um, you, you instead, you, when you get a windfall of money, first of all, you have to keep large as a business owner, you have to keep large chunks of money available in the event that there's a disaster of some kind, right? Think about all the companies that are that that weather the storm during COVID, for example, right? You need to, you need to be able to pay. Like if you have, let's say your own personal, uh, food truck business, you have to be able to pay when the truck breaks down. You know, these are all things that need to be considered all the equipment costs. Let's say, for example, um, there's a hurricane in uh, in Florida recently, right? Places are underwater. If you happen to be located in a place where there's a natural disaster, like that money and all that needs you, you to need be to have to rebuild out the fucking building. Very, yeah, even if your true. insurance, even if your insurance is going to repay uh, for the equipment in order to keep the day to day business going, that money has to be there. Yeah. Right? Very true. And having a something... major scandal, having anything come up, like it's not as easy. Look, and, and, and look, I'm not saying that in certain situations, there are enormous oh. windfalls. For example, um, Demon Slayer, uh, Mugen Train, for example, where the scalability of that is just outrageous and nobody expected and whatnot. And I'm not saying you shouldn't give, you shouldn't give a bonus to the employees uh, who were contributing to that success. 
I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. But what I'm saying is that on the day to day, things don't scale up the way that they, they act as though this, um, that the benefit of, of the, um, franchise, uh, getting popular and making all this money. Wh well, why doesn't it just come back to my bank account? Kind of it's how they treat it. That's not exactly it how that it's simple. That's not how that stuff to work. Okay. My comment is one. Okay. I understand where you're coming from. And in a way you're right, but in a way you've also got to, you've also got to really beat in the fact for human error on Rekka's podcast. I think it was, I, I'm sorry if I'm getting his name wrong. The podcast you were you just it, on the Rekka. other day, cause I watched yeah, it. You on mentioned on how it. your la ex landlord was renting to you uh -huh. and how he probably still has the house and all the probably more likely dirty way he, that he did you. Well, you yeah. have to understand people are in at their base in disingenuous and they will do the most selfish thing to get what they want. This yeah, but is at happening the end of the day, at the end of the day, it was my fault because in that situation, I didn't demand to renew my contract for the year. And by not, you. by not staying on top of that, I was in a situation where we were month to month. I got you. But so in, what is, I said, just to be clear for everybody, what I was, yeah. what I was saying in that situation is that when my landlord sold, sold the place and, and that was his way of getting me out of there. The reason I, I mentioned that is that he, because of the COVID protections that were that were holding back um, evictions, uh, evictions and whatnot, he that was the only means he had to get me out to of get there. you out of the house. He couldn't yeah. evict me just because he wanted to get a new tenant in there because there were you know there's all sorts of laws because everything that was stopped him up. from raising the rent to be competitive with the uh, the places around or not even competitive but you know to to basically raise it to the new normal level because of all the people from California and, and other places that, uh, that left California during COVID. and, uh, un, un, inappropriate. There's not enough rules in place to cap rent, but we won't go. I don't want to get into that. All I'm trying to say is, is that you all look both situations top of the company and the employees at this point, when it comes to, let's just go with the situation with the mom psycho there. Look, everyone's looking out for number one. They don't give a damn about company as a whole or anything. And they and should. Even when you have, even though they should, even when no, you should. have, they I should. mean, you should care about your your job Why? and employment. But it's like, at the same time, your boss should care about you. No, I'm not no, saying no, 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 they do. You've misunderstood. What I'm saying is, your boss. I'm saying he's more than happy on. to be replaced. Hold I'm on. saying I'm more than happy to replace him. Your boss should be looking out for number one, to use your words meaning looking out for his interest and it is in his interest if you the employee are bringing the money in for him to be looking out for you because protecting you and keeping you happy and and stress free because you've got enough money to pay the bills continues to make him more money yeah but it's, like it, you're, in, you're, that, you're... in that way <laughs> looking out for number 1 is looking out for the members of the company that are actually contributing a net benefit to it. That's a fun way to spin looking out for number one, which is not usually how that's interpreted. Looking out for number one is generally a pure selfish implication is what well, I'm getting at. Use the word selfish then. Okay, fair. If you don't want to go that route. But all I'm just trying to say is, is like this whole situation trickles down to if he doesn't want to do the job, Get someone else. Exactly. Because they offer him that's, a that's fair rate. So, but I'm just saying that, let's be honest, we all know that it's never as kind as we'd love it to be. And more than likely, it in a way, he's probably got a point, and more than likely, that, you know, hey, they're making plenty. But at the end of the day, that's not how a company generally works. Because when you're the CEO of something, yeah, you're going to be living the big life. That's all I'm just trying to point out. So I, I will say I do agree with the sentiment that when the profits of the company increase past, past a certain scale, the CEO should not continually be increasing their uh, their paycheck as well. I will agree with that because, it, because there are levels at, to which increasing, in, um, increasing profit end up padding the bank account of the uh, – you know, the upper echelons of the corporate staff. Right. Um, so just to go back to what we were saying, 
I t- the reason that I that I stopped you when it, when it comes to looking out for number one is because I take the Ayn Rand approach of everybody should be quote unquote selfish because the way that the way that we work as a society is that when we are altruistic, which is I think what what uh, Kyle McCarley would view himself as he is advocating on behalf of everybody else for them and not giving them the say, which is how we end up with unions where you get locked into the, to the barrier to entry of you have to join the union. And also, by the way, if you do something to harm us, you're out and you're on the street, right? Is that that's the click that's yeah. The, the click sort of culture there, right. Of, of, um, Sort of gate all these rules are you fucking out based on building a structure for, through which you can be controlled and used as a pawn in the collective bargain. I have a big unit, problem with as well, right? So, um, I totally lost train, my train of thought here. Uh, let me probably my fault, my sh- bad. That's right. Uh, screen share. So, coming back here, um, Kotaku wrote this article where they uh, where they talked to uh, Kyle McCarley about this, and he said. McCarley told Kotaku that Crunchyroll initially reached out to him on September 8th. Again, there's the way that he's presenting it. And then we can look at it from Crunchyroll hasn't said much. And again, I don't want to defend Crunchyroll because again, fuck Crunchyroll. But if we look at it from this other perspective, I think you might start seeing things a little bit differently. So McCarley told Kotaku that Crunchyroll initially reached out to him on September 8th to ask about his availability in working on season three of the anime. According to McCarley, Crunchyroll typically goes for simuldubs of a show, and this is obviously wrong, meaning recording both the English and Japanese voiceover (laughs) of a series whenever it can. Great job, Kotaku. Failures. Uh, Obviously, what they mean is releasing the English dub as close to the release of the Japanese um, uh, version same day, uh, same date, as they put it. Nah, man, he's just that talented. Quote, I thought it was odd they'd wait so long to ask me about that, given the season was announced in January, I think it was. And the Funimation side of the company, pre-merger, had already replaced me in the Scarlet Nexus anime last year when I refused to work on that project non-union. Kind of sounds like they have a history with working with you and or more specifically not working with you. Right. Uh, (laughs) Because of your demands. McCarley told Kotaku that he'd be happy to reprise his role as mob in season three of the anime. If it were on a union contract. Now, look, Kotaku already fucked up when it comes to how simul dubs work. So maybe, maybe he didn't say that at all, but calling you out, Isaiah Colbert seemed to think that he was saying that he would be happy to reprise his role if it were on, on a union contract. Now in his YouTube video, McCarley clarified that as a SAG after a union member and a member of SAG AFTRA's dubbing steering committee, again, this is why I'm saying that that sort of top of the pyramid thing, right? Uh, that he is a member of the dubbing steering committee. It is important to him that all the work he does is covered by a union contract, a contract that ensures McCarley won't stress his vocal cords from screaming for too long. How much screaming does mob do? Uh... Right. (laughs) Also, Every job, if you're a cashier, you're worried about your knees and ankles. Yeah. If you're a carpenter, you're worried about your back. You have that risk going into yes. this, and that's what insurance and everything is for. Just calling that bullshit as well. And I'm just, I'm, uh, once again, if you are the piece of the puzzle that makes the company work, then your employer is going to take care of you. Here is the sad truth for the entertainment industry here. You're replaceable. As fans, 
We don't have to like it. But that's the unfortunate reality. They replaced Vic. They replaced Kyle McCarley. They've replaced numerous people. They they fucking, in the middle of a season, will swap somebody out because their schedule conflicts happen. Like what happened with Ashley Birch. That's who it was, right? Ashley Birch for Attack on Titan? No, no for, for, for Steins Gate. For Steins Gate for Mayuri, right. Um, she, she stayed on as uh, Sasha. Anyway, so continuing here. Quote, a good portion of the cast and I had a Zoom call that night to talk about it. This is right after being replaced in Scarlet Nexus. Which was when the idea of offering to do this job, um, Mob Psycho 100 Season 3, non-union, in exchange for a meeting with SAG after representation, was pitched. After checking with Treslin Williams, the head of the voiceover department at sag after to see if a crunchy role specific agreement along the lines of what contracts voice actors are offered under streaming services like Netflix, which signed a company-wide sag after contract in 2019, McCarley said sag after would be open to anything Crunchyroll was willing to agree to. After speaking with Williams, McCarley said one of his castmates reached out to the head of production at Crunchyroll directly to give him their pitch to negotiate a potential contract. When none of us had heard anything by last Thursday morning, the first day in their original availability window to start recording, I took it upon myself to ensure the terms of the offer were clearly articulated to everyone who might be weighing in on the decision. McCarley said he emailed Rahul Perini, the president of Crunchyroll, and CC'd the company's chief content officer, chief people officer, chief operating officer, as well as the head of production to restate that he was only asking to have a meeting with them. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but I want to point out again that he did this the first day in their original availability window to start recording. So if if Crunchyroll, again, fuck Crunchyroll, but if Crunchyroll <laughs> has already decided at this point to cast somebody else for the simul dub, which is coming up, and you say, I just want to make sure everybody knows we only want a meeting. No, we just want a meeting. Can, can we have a meeting? Which, all, which also could be a selective alteration of history in order to now weaponize your Twitter followers for the way that makes you look like you only want a meeting. Hashtag just a meeting. Let's get it trending, guys, alongside Crunchyroll. Doesn't yeah, if, theme? if he was willing to accept, because obviously he made it sound like, a, oh, yeah, it's just a meeting. You don't have to accept it. If he was willing to accept the outcome of it, of them not accepting it, why would it why would it matter if they accept it or not? If you were supposedly going to accept the role after that, uh, after the conditions, it just seems to me I reiterate my statement from earlier. Saying yeah. that alone is disingenuous because you know you want something out of it. That is disingenuous bullshit. It to just say, hey, we just me... want a meeting for no reason. Well, Fuck off. No, no, no. no. no so it, 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 just, it just seems to me like Crunchyroll already cast somebody else and they would show up the first day in the original availability window to start recording. They're fucking there. Recording the lines, hypothetically, and you're like, but by the way, I see, I'll still do it, but I just, I just want a meeting. Hashtag just a meeting, right? It uh, just, seems, I, uh, it seems ridiculous to me. So I like the idea. I like the world. I, I would love if he was like, well, um, you know, what we what we get told and what happens are two vastly different things right. and obviously and country country is, even if they've got them dead to rights with the emails and can show you this is precisely what they asked for they're lying crunchy they're not going to come out and say that yeah so so, so he so gets carte, I, carte I, blanche I, 
Yeah, That's I know where you're going with this. You're going to say, I, I like the world where he's like, well, they need us for season three, so let's threaten them. Everybody wants it to be union. And then they say, all right, we're casting new people. Like, whoa, 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 just a meeting. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But then yeah. They, present to, they present to everybody else that all we wanted from the beginning was just the meeting, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that – this is hypothetical, of course, but yeah, it's, it very well could be because, like I said, Crunchyroll, even if they've got them dead to rights, could produce the emails and show everything. And again, this is all hypothetical. They still would not do that. That would not look good for the company to do. Whereas Reba Burr, Amanda Wynn Lee, and Kyle McCarley, any any number of these people can just take to Twitter and share with their followers and spread their version of things. You know, and even taking his word on the like how it all went down if even if they hadn't recorded yet if they signed a contract with someone they're not going to throw yeah. the contract out so exactly you know if he's replaced he's replaced although and he, you know whining about it afterwards it's not too much um funimation contracts for the year so the people that they use probably were already contracted before they uh were given the role because um, you recall in the depositions they talked about uh, regarding Vic and Monica and them, they talked about how um, um, you don't know who you're voicing and you don't even know what your lines are until you get to work and they give you the script. Like they just send you a text message that says, you know, come in 11 PM this day or whatever for your, uh, for your simul dub uh, casting um, recording. Right. Yeah. And they, they do like, they have a 24 hour. Um, well, I mean, if that's the case, then there. if, if they're, if they're hiring it out where they're contracting a bunch of people and then they're playing like well, again, just to be clear, with that's, everyone's... that's, that's Funimation's thing. I don't know if I assume that they would, because again, Funimation is wearing the, the, the skin of Crunchyroll effectively. Yeah. I would assume that they are still contracting out the same way for the dubbing because they that's the part of Funimation that they grafted on to Crunchyroll effectively for um for keeping that part of the company as well as I guess yeah. distribution. So so assuming they do that then even in that model they're going to be playing Tetris with everyone's schedules to yeah. make sure everyone has enough work and if they've worked out that okay well this person's going to get this work and therefore we're not going to hire them on something else to, to last minute go in and say well the other actor is going to come back for this. So now we have to rejig everything to make sure this actor is not, uh, you know, going to waste or he's going to have enough work throughout the year. Um, so yeah, last minute changes aren't going to be a, a keep in mind operable. as well. Funimation has in the past re-recorded. I mean, the simul dubs are just to, for the people who don't buy the Blu-rays, you know, they actually, redo a lot of takes and and things they've redone entire um roles uh for instance remember that one time when um the i stand with vic youtubers uh lost their mind over oh uh, jamie markey's been replaced in strike which is like yeah she had a cold it's for the simul dub she's on the blu-ray right like they updated it as soon as she was better and la di da you know um so it's not on it wouldn't be unheard of uh that this social media campaign does result in the Blu-rays getting Car uh, Kyle McCarley back for the for the physical media releases, and obviously they'll probably update the you know the on Crunchyroll slash Funimation now for as long as that's a thing um, version of it as well. But um, anyway, so uh, yesterday morning McCarley said. He received a call from the head of production at Crunchyroll saying the company was not going to agree to those terms. After reiterating that he wasn't looking for a commitment to anything beyond a meeting, I, he just sounds like, whoa, 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 whoa one more time. I, I just want you guys, will you agree to think about having a meeting? Huh? You know, like, like he really, like he's showing his hand as a bad negotiator. Like uh, he really wants to continue to have the role and the money, right? Uh, especially since they offered him more. He basically just, uh, it's just like the art of the deal is not there, you know? Anyway, um, 
After reiterating that he was not looking for a commitment to anything beyond a meeting, he said he received a call that afternoon from Crunchyroll confirming his stance on the matter. Now, look, he says, I'm not looking for anything beyond a meeting. But the fucking meeting is about setting up the Crunchyroll contract for Union. Right. Basically, what he's what he in other um, articles and interviews basically said is that we want to have a meeting in order to develop what Netflix has for us, but for Crunchyroll. And in doing so, we will have um, basically a uh, drawn out contract that Crunchyroll is already basically um, conceded like, yeah, we'd be willing to do this. Yeah, that's not too over. That's not asking too much from us. Yeah, we can we can do a minimum of two hours uh, for their recording, blah, blah, whatever it's going to be, right? Uh, and then that way, anybody who um, who is part of you know a a franchise that Funimation acquires, uh, or rather Sony acquires, and and they're in the same boat, they're like, well, it's a good thing we've already got that you know contract uh, drawn up. That's the one I'll be taking the Crunchyroll contract, right? The SAG Crunchyroll contract. Anyway, and I've got the, uh, I'm going to read to you what the details of the Netflix one are in just a second. So let's finish this. Um, quote, I could speculate about why they've taken this stance, but it would be speculation, McCarley said. Quote, I don't know why they are so firmly anti-union that they won't even agree to having a conversation about it. I feel like it was a pretty reasonable request, but you'd have to ask them why they appear to disagree. So um, Kotaku asked for... Uh, Reached out to Crunchyroll, did not receive a comment in time for publication, but then they did get the, the comment and they added it to the article here. A Crunchyroll representative sent Kotaku an email in response to McCarley's role as Mob in season three of Mob Psycho 100, saying, quote, Crunchyroll is excited to bring fans worldwide the dub for the third season of Mob Psycho 100 as a simul dub, the same day and date as the Japanese broadcast. We'll be producing the English dub at our Dallas production studios. And to accomplish this seamlessly, per our production and casting guidelines, we will need to recast some roles. We're excited for fans to enjoy the new voice talent and greatly thank any departing cast for their contributions to previous seasons. I hate how much of an obvious PR crafted statement that was. But it actually feels like Crunchyroll is more excited than Kyle McCarley was in his YouTube video. <laughs> anyway, so Ben Diskin said this. There are many things I could say about how Crunchyroll slash Sony slash Sony Pictures have handled the Mob Psycho 100 situation. See Kyle McCarley's video that he quote tweeted here. None of them would be very kind. Hashtag unionized dubs. Indeed. I'd like to contrast this situation with our partners at Netflix. Back in 2019, Netflix approached our union, SAG-AFTRA, to form a Netflix agreement. Along with this general agreement came the formation of the Netflix dubbing agreement. Ever since then, it's been the dubbing contract with the most favorable terms for dubbing actors to take. Now, or to date, rather. Uh, I would just like to point out, Netflix is what, $20 billion in debt? I'm just saying, seems like they've got a pipe dream going. Maybe they'll be able to turn things around as we'll discuss their ridiculous plans for making a game studio later tonight. But uh, I just, I don't know. And maybe, maybe they also just reason. canceled tons of animation. Right. Like they literally just cut their animation, a ton of seasons uh, yeah. or a series for, have been canceled. In-house produced things in Western animation, right? Not, not the anime. Yeah. At least... At least Netflix has realized that anime is the thing that sells. Hmm. Anyway, so here's what here's what he said. Recently, Netflix finished negotiating with SAG-AFTRA for an updated Netflix agreement. Guess what? This is why Crunchyroll will not come to the table for hashtag just a meeting. Because now... The new 2022 Netflix dubbing agreement contains the following upcoming improvements for dubbing performers. One, dubbing actors will be paid for a minimum of three hours of work, up from two hours. Dubbing actors will have vocally stressful sessions, yelling, shouting, screaming, battle cries, creature sounds, unnatural voice textures, extensive whispering. Are you that much of a pussy? <laughs> whispering? Is whispering really that demanding? Uh 
I still well, like I mean, out. if you okay. voice that ASMR anime, maybe you might have another. Uh, Those ASMR okay. thoughts. Let's. I mean, if, hours if doing ASMR and they're fine, right? No. If you're gonna ask, if you're gonna ask a legitimate question, whispering can be bad yes, for your vocal cords look, in long I, periods. But it was a joke. It's but, nowhere but damn near it. as bad as the, the streaming and stuff. Yeah. But anyway, it's so like, look. As he said, unnatural voice texture. So like adding a gravel or something yeah. to your voice. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, when you're whispering. You, you can feel that extra pressure uh, on the back down, of your throat. Yeah, you are actually, I mean, it was a joke. All right, but oh, yes. I, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, yeah. This, this, no, this is footing him. He was like, is it really? I'm like, yes, yes, it can truly be a thing. But it at can. the end of the day, it's three, three hours and the way they do it, I don't, the know, question I, is, I don't know enough no, about no, but, it. But let's be real. Unless you're that one character in Mardok Scramble, that you literally have to turn the subtitles on to find out what the fuck he's saying because he's whispering every goddamn line. What roles are you really going to take that's going to have enough whispering? Hardcore whispering, Seth. Yeah. Like, it, uh, it except for the of... ASMR one that, that Random Level was talking about. <laughs> it reminds me, I think, whenever, I, like, a lot of times when I think of whispering characters, I think of characters that get on my nerves. And the first one, the first one that comes to mind is, Fudum, you'll know I'm talking about Haruka. I think it's, what's her name from uh, Tulavu? Blue-haired girl talks like a mouse. Moist by Monica Real. I haven't, I haven't seen the dub. Oh well. Oh God. It just it it when I watched it. it Haruna. Haruna. Thank you. It <laughs> irked me so bad. And she, wait, 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 wait. That's not It's Monica the whisper Real. in the way Haruna. Thank you. No, no, that's should, not Cyreggie. Yeah, she voices Cyreggie. Blue-haired girl. Renji Haruna. Oh, Google it. Okay. All right, never mind. Just Hold ignore on. me. Little, I, Little Rock's I, referring to the GoFundMe was for John Swayze. It was Save Swayze's Butt. I re right. We covered this. I remember he had ass cancer or something. <laughs> <laughs> Colon cancel. Uh, Luigi the Mouse 6 Four says, I wonder how translated voice actors are paid in Japan. Japan should translate anime themselves. Uh, I will not no. let Monica, Jamie, and Amanda grab my hair. They are lucky I never come to see them. I, I never come to them since I would scream like Mark's stories or Steven Tyler if they tried to fuck me. Um, Good luck. You know what? Okay. I can say with full certainty if I, any of them tried to fuck me, I might also scream. <laughs> um, just on the Japan translation. The power of control. Christ compels you. <laughs> I, I, I do want to say something else. They're saying a minimum of payment for three hours of work, no matter how much you no, 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 no. do. So what they're saying is that you have a guaranteed min minimum. Yeah, well, effectively, yes. You, 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 you get... yell one line and that's it. You get paid for three hours. No, it makes sense. But what, what's going to happen is that Netflix is going to try to structure their scheduling around having you come in for three hours worth of recording. The, the reason they do that, Reese, is because it's like – if you're going to have a company say, well, we need you for one line. Okay, so now I got to drive over to the building, you know, pay uh, gas, get well, there. But the point, potentially, is, the point is that they would just have somebody else deliver a line. If, if there's a character who only had one line, they'd be like, hey, you're already here. Get in here and record it. You sure, know? if it's a nothing character. But like yeah. what if Goku had one line? Right, you need Goku to come and in. He said ah line. once the whole episode. <laughs> you know, he, he's still I charging mean, up his spirit bomb. <laughs> I mean, now with um like remote work, it's it's kind of less of a thing. Or it's like okay, just get to a remote studio, record your one line. Yeah. But when it when you had to go to the place, it's like okay, I got to spend like yeah, two yeah. hours so, to like bus there and pay. Let me and, put it this way: I'm um, only making like twelve dollars an hour for two so hours. The the place where we house the trucks that we use for the job that I do um, has, as everybody else has felt the the effects of the inflation. Uh, they have tried to cut costs uh, wherever they can. So even though the sign says high pressure hose available and, you know, 24 hour access and stuff, they put fucking locks on the hose and then they built a goddamn welded box around it with another lock on it. Right. Um, and so we've had to we've had to do other things like using hydrant and whatnot for, for the equipment we use to, to fill up the tanks. So the guy who lives down the street. Well, not down the street. He lives in the same city, whereas I live in Huntington Beach and go up to Rancho Santa Margarita. He lives in Rancho Santa Margarita, right? So he is hi like hired to um, literally just come in before we get there and fill up the trucks, 
right? With the hydrant. And so he gets paid an hour's worth of work for 15 minutes, as Random 11 said, because if you drive to work and then work a full eight hours and then drive home, that money goes a lot further than driving to work, getting paid for only 15 minutes. Like at that point, the amount, you, of, the amount of money that. you spent just to drive there and back, you've already like you're not making any money, is what he so basically, as Random Levin said, that's why they have the guaranteed minimum. Now, however, I will say back to this. Um, oh god, I, I missed it. Where is it? Uh, so so dubbing actors will now be paid for a minimum of three hours of work up from two hours previously. Dubbing actors will, will have vocally stressful sessions capped at two hours to protect our voices. So you will not, you will not be asked to whisper for more than two hours. And <laughs> if you do have to your whisper, pillow, your pillow talk game is, if weak. you do have to whisper, you will be paid a 25% premium. Why? Well, That's I'm going to go into ASMR now for yeah. uh, animation <laughs> or, or sorry. Uh, Dubbing actors for Spanish dubs will at last, at last, be paid on par with English speaking, speaking dubbing performers. Now, historically, they've been paid far less. Oh, my God. Guess what? How many people watch an English dub? Compared to a Spanish Compared dub? to the Spanish dub on Netflix. I think you will understand why they are paid far less. less. Jesus Christ. I cannot believe that this is even a thing. You know, and, and honestly, what it might what it might end up being now is uh they're they're gonna only have like the people who are bilingual who are already there. Like, yeah, just record the Spanish line too, right? Real quick. Okay, cool. That sounded <laughs> good, I guess. I don't speak Spanish, right? You know, stuff like that. Uh and it's gonna be um it's also going to be um, that they're probably just not going to do Spanish dubs yeah. for everything. You know, they're going to be more or, selective about it. Or they can revoke that new uh, that new policy and get the Spanish people to voice the English lines, huh? Save some money? No. <laughs> well, so so the point I'm making is that like people have this. They just they look at oh Netflix. They make so much money. They're twenty billion dollars in debt, but they make so much money. <laughs> Therefore, uh, they could afford to do this. But in reality, from from the business side, it's like, look, yeah, you want this more from us. You want Spanish voice actors want to be paid more. That doesn't magically make our budget higher. So we'll pay you more, but you're getting less work because we can't afford to pay you more. Well. Right? No, look, at it, look at it like this: is Netflix is trickling down the debt. <laughs> well, fuck. Uh, look at it like this: even though let's say Netflix was making all that money, you also have to understand. Uh, let's look. Let's talk consumer because employees, the way as we've covered, is a clusterfuck. It's like you got to understand that you can have money available, but be shit at a budget. So you have no idea how terrible their planning probably is as well. Cause remember like they don't just have to pay, you know, their employees and everything. They've got to keep like legal shit set up to have this available in other countries. And I bet that is a serious pain in the ass dealing with, you know, the rules of Australia, the rules of England, the rules of the U S where everyone's just like, Oh, I'll just get a VPN. And I'll watch this and the other Well, They have to fucking get it there. So, they they do have some issues to deal with. I'm not saying in any capacity that there's not misuse of funds and you know laundering and everything with, with companies like Netflix. I'm sure there is. They're making plenty enough for someone to be fucking someone over. But at the end of the day, there is so much more to it than just, oh hey, there's money there. They Look, are making in, in enough any debt. situation, in any situation, especially you know, massive corporations and whatnot, somebody's gonna be skimming off, off the top. It's it's near impossible to prevent a scenario like that. But the point is that in the grand scheme of things, it's not that um, they're bathing in dollar bills uh, and could end world hunger at the drop of a hat if they felt like it kind of thing. That's not that's not the situation that they're actually dealing with, the, the, the way that it's presented by um, by the people who are demanding more. 
right? And again, it's like I'm all for uh, the voice actors getting a raise. As I said, they need at least 20% to ride out where the inflation is likely to get to in the next couple months. Like I'm, I'm advocating on their behalf that they do deserve a raise. But the way that they treat it, they act entitled to, you know, all their demands being met. And it, let's, let's just get back to this. It'll be easier to do. It'll be easier to explain with the visuals. Um, so also I like to point out, we just want to hashtag just a meeting, right? So what is, what does Crunchyroll get when you're like, when they say, ah, you know what? We're not feeling the meeting dog. We're just going to cast somebody else. You do you. Uh, we wish you tons of work in your LA branches and everything, but we've got something to do here in our right to work state. It's just not that easy for us. I'm sorry. Uh, you do you. So what do we got here? Sag after. Hey, Crunchyroll. You sure sound excited about booting a fan favorite just because he asked for a union contract. Let's talk union protections and benefits can be exciting too. Hashtag just a meeting. So uh, immediately sick the dogs on them. SAG AFTRA chimes in. Next gen performers unite. Crunchyroll, Sony Pictures, recast Mob Psycho 100 fan fave character who wants just a meeting to discuss union protections. Also, Coalition of Dubbing Actors says, we'd like to encourage everyone to ask questions about the work you're doing before you accept a job offer. For example, if you're being asked to voice match someone, especially on a non-union project, you should know why. Basically saying, like, make it hard. Make it hard for them to not work with us unions. Then we got um, Reba uh, had this to say in response to Sarah Sakura, who said... Lots of people outside the voiceover industry are arguing that they believe $35 to $75 an hour to dub anime is an incredible rate. Here's a thread as to why this rate is incredibly low in terms of voice acting. So she, she has a whole thread here, but I'm more, I'm more interested in Reba Burr's point here. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, the per hour rate seems good if you don't do this kind of work. But if you have a juicy supporting role on a show and you work, say, four hours on it to complete your work for the whole season, that's $300, period, forever. Oh, woe is me. I can't get paid more for four fucking hours of work. Jesus Christ. How how tone deaf are these but, people? Entitled? And they're not... And they're not just getting three hundred dollars an hour or three hundred period forever because they get to cash in forever on the con circuit for exactly. autographs, and uh, also, voicing. Also, they exactly. want to you to, and people also want you to quickly forget that hey, there is nothing stopping them from getting from a having a job. side hustle. Exactly, that they do. Jeff so, Johnson is a pilot for Southwest. I'm just, you right? know, it's, like, it's just, it's like, you've got to do what you got to do to make ends meet. And I know the feeling of loving what you do or wanting to be an actor or a performer, this, but at this the end of the day, me, you got to put food on the fucking table and you can't be like, Hey, I'm going to get paid $1,200 for one gig because you have to make sure that this three hours of work I did once every two months pays everything that I want you to pay. But I mean, community. there's an argument. There's there one second. There's a, there's an argument for like, Oh, well, this job isn't paying enough, so I need to get a separate job to like subsidize my shitty job. That's one thing. It's like, okay, well, you know, it sucks that you have to have two jobs, I guess, whatever, depending on the job. But it's another thing to say, no, no, no. from this job alone, you're going to get more on autographs, pictures, um, a cameo thing. Like you can, right. you Look, can do cameo, this, and that's this, all piggybacking off of this specific role. So it's not so just three hundred period. Remember breath. previously? I don't remember if it, I think it was the Japanese voice actor. I can't remember. Remember, um, oh, what's the guy who wears the Tengu mask in Demon Slayer? Urukodaki. Urukodaki. Yeah, Urukodaka. Daki. Whatever it is. I don't remember. Uh, it doesn't matter. The voice actor for I can't remember if it was the Japanese voice voice actor or the American voice actor lamented the fact that Demon Slayer Mugen Train was the highest grossing. First of all, he's not even fucking in that, is he? No. Fucker. 
<laughs> basically lamented the fact that like you know oh the the series is so popular the manga is selling billions and the 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 movie is the highest uh, anime movie of all time and everything but i i don't get to have a raise at all and it's like look uh, you already did the work jackass yeah, first of all yeah first of all you didn't spend you know the hundred million dollars that uh that like a hollywood studio spends on advertising number one you know but it's like at the end of the day like you said first of all this this screams to me the same the same energy of teachers aren't paid enough i deserve more to teach it's like you work nine months out of the year you don't deserve more you know it's like it's like it's the entitlement here of i should be able to raise a family and buy a house on my um my minimum wage mcdonald's job you know is the kind of things like you have missed the point of work you have zero ambition the system is designed or rather was designed the way it was in order to ensure that you actually worked on improving yourself and society by moving up in the world you are not supposed to pay for everything you do in your life based on your minimum wage job forever you are meant to work hard and gain skills and bring more value to society by improving yourself and rising up in the industry to the next level. Now, yeah, being content to, is fine, but you definitely have to put some effort forth. Yeah, see, to, being content actually, is the exact opposite of being entitled, which is what's happening here. Yeah. Now, and I'll just say again, I want them to get a raise, but the entitlement makes me want to give them less of a raise. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyway. a more applicable uh, uh, thing to this situation, though, or more specifically the, oh, you only make 300 uh, for your day, uh, a half day. Four um, hours of work. Yeah, it is uh, the last time we talked about unions, uh, like, I, I, I think I mentioned something on the lines of, like, this is more or less like you kind of do the art for... Uh, the rewarding experience not necessarily for the money so this is the is always going to be the side hustle to your main hustle so mm. these people are acting as if this is the main hustle when that's only really reserved for when you've made it like super big when you're like what troy baker or something but that's in like the video game sector where they actually i think pay out good because that's why you see laura bailey and uh travis willingham Hasn't done a Funimation thing for years at this point. Well, Laura Bailey. Probably because video game but, dubs are union. Probably. But it, more than union, though, I'm, I'm sure they get paid way more because video games have huge budgets and everything. Well, see, again, though, think about this. Um, the... Just quickly, you, video games have a shit ton more lines as well. They're not in yeah. there for like two hours and then done. Right. Yeah. For, for the yeah. most part. Yeah. It, um, especially if you're a main character or whatever. But um, it's not like I've seen any other tax forms, but I've always heard that video game voice yes. actors have video made game, significantly, video game pay more. significantly more than anime. Here is why because anime got its start in Texas. Everything else is relegated yeah. mostly to the, to the LA area where there are strongly like stringent union um uh, what do you call it a stranglehold right so yes that's why because funimation got access to dragon ball because um what's his name um um gen fukunaga's cousin or uncle or whoever uh worked at toei and he was given the chance to bring dragon ball over and then it originally got dubbed in um in this uh in uh canada ocean. canada with the uh, ocean group Right, and then Funimation did it in house in in Texas. And that, that's it was, good. I was gonna say that's the, the 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 funniest part of this. They're all bitching about like, oh, well, how could you replace? You're talking about the company that literally fired the entire dub cast of Dragon Ball. They're basically one and only big hit to <laughs> recast them to bring it in house to bring make it cheaper. Yes, but the irony here is that in Canada the reason Ocean Group exists literally the reason why it had dubbed so many anime, so many cartoons in general is that there's a law, I don't know if it's still in effect in Canada, 
It is. That, what is it like seventy percent or something? That some uh, thirty. Pretty sure it's 25 percent. 20, 25 25 percent of productions shown on television in Canada must be produced in Canada. They have this regulation in order to subsidize or um, to uh, keep their industry alive in Canada. So the Ocean Group was a way for Canada to basically skirt under, uh, well, 25% of the production is Canadian, right? By getting in there and voicing everything, right? Now, the irony is that when Funimation did it in-house and started over, they still dubbed the rest of the show in Canada for the Canadian broadcast. No, that's not true. That's not how it went down? No. There, so um, Funimation uh, had the rights. They licensed it off to Ocean. They dubbed the first season up until like the Ginyu saga whatever. And then they stopped. And uh, then Funimation took it over. Um, and they went until, um, I want, oh, I forget. Anyway, there's, there's a chunk. There's about 50 episodes that Ocean never dubbed. And then Ocean got the rights back again for Canadian or for Canada. And, uh, I believe the UK. Um, and so, uh, then, I don't know if YTV, the Canadian broadcaster, stopped mm -hmm. broadcasting it or not, or if I'm pretty sure we got the, because where I, I am in Ontario, we also have Fox, and I think Fox also aired Dragon Ball Z, maybe. But anyway, we definitely saw it. So, um, but at a certain point, um, Ocean came back in, but it, there there was a gap. They didn't dub the entire Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Yeah. Um. Did they dub GT or am I thinking of the Blue Water dub? Blue, I believe Blue Water dubbed Blue, GT. Blue Water, Blue Water is, just is a spinoff of Ocean Group, though. Yeah. Like, literally, the water that's blue is the ocean of Ocean Group. Right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so anyway, uh, um, I want to. Anyway, wanna... there, Go main point is there's like 50 Dragon Ball Z episodes that are not dubbed by Ocean. That sounds uh, because you're right. I, I should not have I should not have said they dubbed everything. You're right. There I, I do believe there is a chunk. Um so Stan said if you get hurt at work, you are automatically covered by the company by law. Great job, Kyle. Let everyone know who you're who you are to the whole company. Referring, I'm assuming, to the uh the steering director or whatever of uh, dubs. Um and then I love this. Jason Sal says, Oh, That'll be fifteen billion dollars, Goku. Probably. <laughs> are they hurting because their contractors are causing people to unsubscribe to them? Uh, yeah, I mean, I I certainly wouldn't be surprised. Um, although we're gonna get into some, I, I'm not sure I believe what I'm gonna report on later. Uh, but stick around; it'll be interesting to you. Um, uh, actually, real quick, uh, the Goku ah uh, comment. Uh, uh, that's a Funimation dub, isn't it? And that's probably some of the most strenuous work, and it's on a non-union thing, right? Right. So I don't know. Sean seems well, to think they have it down. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I get you referring to Goku, probably. Yeah. But, so look at Vic, though, when it comes to being being Broly. Like nobody would take that job. He he always is like having to rest his voice and stuff. In fact, I would not be surprised if when it came time to cast somebody for Broly, they gave it to Vic in order to force him to thrash out his vocal cords because they hated him. Like, let's give it to Vic. Fuck that guy, right? <laughs> and then it becomes the, the fan favorite character and all that. No weapon formed against me shall pass. I assume Vic that. actually it's... knows how to, like, uh, uh, I, I think he also does, like, music and vocals. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, he's, he's sung openings and stuff. Yeah. But um, I, I think he, he knows how to properly, like, use his vocal cords and everything in a non-harmful way, so he probably has a better endurance i don't know how many of you guys played the dragon ball Zeniverse 2 game but hearing broly with you know johnny, johnny as Bosch. the voice i like johnny young Bosch's voice don't get me wrong uh -huh. he, i love ichigo but he, he does a great no job bro it's just the 
I the beta male joke that I can't help but make when I hear the older Broly next to the new lines for Broly in that game, which it just got, it's just getting new DLC. That game is not done. Like, just is honestly, I don't want to say uh, black and white because that term doesn't exactly make it. It's just there. It's just day awful, and night difference. It, yeah, it's a day and night difference okay. because. You go from this growl and dark, you know, situation that you know is Broly to this, I am way too, you know, it's it's a far preppier uh, vocal pattern. And again, like, that is hard to do. Well, just, I, the I, point I, is that uh, as, as FDM was saying, um, Crunchyroll slash Funimation is not union, therefore... Uh, you couldn't expect to get paid 15 million for the uh, for the screaming line or whatever. Um, Little Rock says, "I bust my ass eight hours a day for my money." And uh, stick around, Stan. We'll get there. <laughs> the pay us a living wage. <laughs> uh, also, Mirage Leonardo, I will come back to this. I'm glad to see you uh, hanging out. Uh, all right, let's get back to uh, let's get back to uh, to Reba Burr here, who said. Yes, the per hour rate seems good if you don't do this kind of work. But if you have a juicy supporting role, you might work four hours and only get $300. And dubbing is fast. That is a good estimate of how many hours of work you'll get from that role. Well, with the new minimum. Yeah, but but fucking think about this. Think about this. Like, that's that's a good estimate of how much work you're going to do. God damn it. I deserve more than $300 for working only four hours. You know, like... The entitlement, right? And then continuing here, Anaris Canones says, I was paid... Uh, I should actually read this first. Uh, this person said, the Crunchyroll Mob Psycho dub situation just reminds me that Jujutsu Kaisen Zero made $30 million in the US. How much of that actually goes back to the US and not back to Japan? Japan first, or first advertising. Of all, first of all. And the dub actors for that were paid like 300 bucks each for their roles. These companies are literally cartoonishly evil. Or, Did they make the thirty million way, ahead of time before? We're saying that recorded? another way. I have no idea how any of this works. <laughs> so, uh, Anaris Cadona says I was paid one hundred and fifty dollars total, no residuals or anything past that. And who does Anaris Cadona's at Ubu Con voice? Reese. God damn it, Reese. We'll never know. <laughs> um, I, what was her name? Rika. I'll, I'll pull up the character. Drop the ball. Motherfucker. Uh, let me do Anime News Network. I would have answered it, but I haven't seen right, no Zero. Worries. So, You're I mean. You're good. It, she's a character that's only in Zero. In Jujutsu Kaisen, she's Rika. I was right, motherfucker. Rika Orimoto, who speaks like all three times. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so let me let me search Rika. She was the childhood friend of Yuta Okotsu, who tragically died when she was hit by a car. That happens in the first ten minutes. Now she comes back. As the uh, vengeful cursed spirit, who I guess talks a little bit, I, had I, Reese... I assume it's more of a. <laughs> well, I, I had Reese rewatch the movie, and I think in the first twenty minutes she had thirty six seconds of dialogue. So she wanted to get paid three hundred dollars for that. No, she got seconds? paid one hundred and fifty dollars for effectively maybe five minutes worth of dialogue. Now, granted, look, just to be clear, you might have to say a line more than once if you suck at acting, right? <laughs> or no, I'm just kidding. Obviously, you're probably going to say it more than once. You're going to get a couple takes. But still, five minutes, a couple times, uh, let's say 25 minutes, $150. Again, the entitlement here of not realizing that the purpose, the way that this industry works is that you get cast as a character. Oh, the movie made $30 million. Good. Cash in at the conventions then. 
So she says, I was paid $150 total. No residuals or anything past that. Residuals are a union thing that means that you get paid royalties, royalties as the movie is shown on TV. In the future, you get paid a check. Five cents comes in the mail in a check. Might actually cost you more to deposit it at your bank through the mobile app than you actually get deposited into your bank. <laughs> Tara Jane Sands says, same. I also only got 150 right? Now, continuing here. So was the $150 before or after taxes? Both are bad, but one is pointedly bad. Before! So they got paid for two hours of work, 75 bucks. Which Basically. is which is what we the that's in line with what Reba Burr was saying. Like you don't understand. That might seem like a lot if you don't do this, but do you understand? We only work two hours. You know. Oh, woe is you. Since Jujutsu Kaisen Zero was under a a non union contract, all the cast members had to pay self employment tax thirty percent. Thank God you get to write off nearly everything as an independent uh, contractor. <laughs> Plus, we got to pay 10% commission to our agents. So, yeah. Agents don't seem like a good idea. By the way, speaking of the agents, um, they keep on talking about how, uh, oh, we they they give us such uh, poor whatever work condition, blah, blah, blah. Uh, could the agents, like, you know, fight for your, you know, mm -hmm. negotiate your thing? Yeah, yeah what are they here. there for? It says here, serious question. Are these things not outlined in the contracts? Or are they just not honoring them? It is! They're non-union contracts, which means they can pay their contractors whatever they want. Uh, no. It means that you agree when you sign the contract to be paid for the job. Under a union contract, they'd be required to pay a minimum wage, with, with which automatically has taxes, health care, and pension taken out. So basically, give me more. I deserve more. I can't afford to learn how to just set up an account for my pension on my own. Continuing. The SAG after a union provides, once again, health care, including dental. Ooh, taxes already taken off your paycheck. COVID compliance mandate. So you too cannot risk your health to work. Well, that's why you had no work for a goddamn year and a half, I'm sure. <laughs> Pension for retirement. Discounted movie tickets. Kind of neat. But I can only work union. Yeah, if you don't go FICOR, you should be union only. But FICOR does exist. But the initiation fee... So it's basically it's the same shit as Kyle McCarley. Like, uh, go unions. I definitely am not getting paid to tell you to go union. Anyway. Uh, there's, you guys, like... if you want to read these, can go through it. I want to get through this topic because we are like fucking two hours in here. So really? she also said, everyone speaking out right now gains nothing. Most likely will be blacklisted or deal with some other consequences to encourage us to be silent. But I personally want to say something because there's so much damn talent in Texas that deserve better. And I want us all to win once again. Don't negotiate on my behalf. This is this is going back to the Ayn Rand thing I was talking about before. Altruism is fucking bullshit. And it is it is the belief that something is good for me, that you that therefore now you are okay to force it on me that I absolutely disagree with. Because I should have the right to take a job below minimum wage if, for example, I'm working for my son. Like there are situations where you would, let's say that you're already independently wealthy. Let's say you've got something going on where you don't need a paycheck, but you want to help somebody who's struggling to start a business or whatever, but the law says you cannot be employed unless you are paid this minimum and have these benefits and stuff. And then the business can't get off the ground because you decided what was good for me and took my bargaining chip away to say, I'm willing to work for half what the government is telling you, you have to pay me 
in exchange for something else down the line. Like for example, buying into the company or something like that. There's all sorts of bullshit. I, I really that ties I respect, you up. Good. I respect and understand where you're coming from. But I, you have to also take into the fact of that is such a small chance that something like that would ever happen where someone would actually care about someone enough to go, yeah, I'm just going to the principle of somebody else just stating what you can and cannot pay. But it's, it's also another thing you have to deal with in, especially in America where we have a lot of workers who aren't exactly on the books. So minimum wage is put in place to keep a uh, look. I'm not, I'm, I'm not fighting with you that there's problems with the system. At the end of the day though, this is the thing is that, is that minimum wage would go up if there weren't a minimum wage. Because at the end of the day, people aren't going to work for less than they need to live. See, literally every every system Most, that we have designed, do. hold on, every system we have designed to fix the problems of our quote-unquote broken system are not actually addressing the root cause and actually make the problem worse down the line. So, for example... When they're when they're complaining about how America doesn't have universal health insurance, so we have to use unions to have health insurance. It's like no, the problem with America's health system is that the government got involved and told companies basically if you provide health insurance to your employees who at up until that point largely paid out of pocket for their doctor visits, then we will give you a tax break. So businesses changed up how they paid their employees, gave them a pay cut that came with health insurance. Yeah. So to the people taking the pay cut, it seemed like it was a good deal because it ensured that if there was an emergency, they yeah. would be covered when they go to the hospital. Yeah. Then unchecked by the fact that now nobody is paying out for themselves when they out of pocket when they go to the doctor the hospitals started to raise the rate of absolutely everything i think the easiest way to explain it is if your car insurance paid for your gas but you only paid for your car insurance once a month or or whatever you would not think about how much you're putting in your tank Every time you go to the gas station, they would not be competing with each other by putting up the signs that tell you that this gas station here is five bucks per gallon. And the one over there is six bucks per gallon. This is why the system is so broken because the government got involved and made health insurance. Literally the health insurance companies lobbied the government to create this. And in exchange they charge out the wazoo for the for the medical procedures, and I'd now like my we're in a situation minutes, where the band aid actually makes mm-hmm. the problem worse. This is I what I'm I talking. I can't say about. it doesn't. That's that's fair. It's, it's so all, what I'm suggesting it's a major clusterfuck is that in, in the minimum that. wage as a requirement exists care. because of other far too complicated structures to to put into words here <laughs> other systems that have that have leveled the system in a way where where the cost of living has become unlivable because you cannot own property because you never actually the government has set up a system now where you don't own anything you always will have to pay the property tax to the government you always have to pay um like every step of the way there's going to be one more reason for why you cannot just live you can't buy a house yeah. or build a house on land that you own and just fuck off and live off of the rodents on the street. <laughs> you have to be a part of the system because of the government's involvement that has made it. The original so that now, freedom that our forefathers knew is not has, around. Yeah, I precisely. Guess. As time has gone on, we are now in a situation where we're constantly throwing legislative band-aids on everything, including minimum wage. So I'm not suggesting we repeal the minimum wage because the immediate response obviously isn't going to be that it undoes the problem. It is a long process of of unfucking the system. (laughs) But the problem that we have is that every one of these self-righteous, altruistic assholes 
thinks that they've got the way to fix the system by having the collective bargaining that literally is just their, their brand of socialism. And at the end of the day, what do they do but cut you off when you don't agree? They create the barrier to entry so that they control who lives and who dies in the system. At the end of the day, what we should all want is for the freedom to choose your own terms and to have a ne- to to be able to negotiate your own contracts. Literally, we are dumbing down the workers to the point where they can't negotiate a good contract. They take shitty jobs they shouldn't take because they have never been put in the situation of actually arguing and negotiating with their employer for a higher rate of pay. Again, just to state it though, you do have the people who are, who are bad up and off. They just need the money and they have to take lower pay. What I'm suggesting, I'm just, I'm pointing it out. So you don't, don't, don't worry. Don't worry too much. I understand what you're saying. See, this is the problem is that the altruism has gotten to people where the system is designed to reward competency. And it's what we to, have done it's also is, designed is to created keep people who the don't know what they're doing in a job too. That inhibits people from becoming competent. The yeah. other issue with uh, these like systems that everyone likes to set up is that eventually they're a- around for so long that you forget kind of why they are there and the power that you've given them. So they've done experiments where like you you have a group of people in the room. Nine of them are paid actors. One of them is a random person. Every 10 minutes, a chime uh, gets played in the room Mm -hmm. and the nine actors stand up and then sit down right away. And um, and, and the guy who's eventually there, the one eventually random will start guy doing it as well. And then they, what it. they've done, and you're, I know where you're going with this, is they they will take one of the actors out and cycle in somebody else who's not an actor, and then yeah. they'll actually get to a point where every person in the room is not a paid actor, but they are yeah. all doing the stand up with the chime. And then and then they you can like you start. Th- imagining different like you you start prescribing different uh power towards like the system that never was intended like some teachers now they're like well you know back back in the day we invented school systems because okay well we can't teach our our own kids because you know we're busy working or whatever we're going to give the power to the people or to the government we're going to lend them their power our power of teaching our own kids and now we've done it for so long that teachers feel entitled to, well, no, this is my power. Well, hold on. No, we didn't. You're like, you don't have the power to tell my kids whatever the fuck you want. You have the power to tell them what I want in a, in a curriculum that right. we all agree and, on. And governmentally, not not so much specifically, it is it has evolved in the school system a little bit more organically, but I do recall in like 2014 um, MSNBC started to use these, these terms where they were referring to kids. We have to remember that kids are not, uh, they aren't members of their families. They're members of whole communities. Like basically they were trying to start changing the language to remove a parent's. um, They're not your children. They're our children. Precisely. Effectively. You know, they did it a little bit more nuanced than that, but, but this has been an, an effort, an ongoing effort to try and subvert individuals authority over their own families and, and the control in order to basically make your, um, um, it's basically like they're, they're, they're putting the noose around your neck linguistically and then once they've tightened it you don't even realize it's there because they have changed the language to the point where they have uh stolen the power from you so to speak right and to quote uh Tyrion Lannister I, I think is the one who said it in Game of Thrones um no I think it was actually Varys who said uh 
power lies where men believe it resides, right? Meaning that the, the entire system is built exactly precisely on the chime and people believing that it, that it is their uh, responsibility to stand up when the chime goes off, so to speak. Um, so coming back to this, uh, she said, everybody's speaking out. I, I want all of us to win. Uh, and then I saw Katrina Leonidakis had mentioned, last I heard, some holdovers from Funimation are being paid around $240 per episode. So think about that for a minute. An episode is roughly 24 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. The vast majority of shows are not going to have one person Talking speaking for the, the entire... full 24 minutes. Yeah. yeah. But even if you did, and you could do that in an hour and a half, $240 for an hour and a half worth of work is still not pretty bad. That's, that's, that's really not bad. And I think you get a minimum, even at Funimation, I think you still get a minimum uh, of hours pay. Now that was the rate offered to people who were being paid more than that at Funimation for the opportunity to continue working with us. So what, what uh, Katrina Leonidakis is, is saying here is that when the merger happened, the holdovers from Funimation who were making more than $240 per episode were offered, here's what we're willing to give you. If you don't like it, get the fuck out. Now, again, I think every voice voiceover actor, for the most part, does deserve a raise. And this is some bullshit, right? And and you should leave. AM Studios is right down the street. I welcome you to you know <laughs> to go the there. Entire, imagine the entire voice talent pool showed fact, up and then walked out. What if that's the reason that? so many people were featured in AM Studios dub. <clears throat> what if that is the reason why? Because they were offered $240 per episode when previously they were making 600 or I don't know. I don't know what the number would be, but let's just say. What if that's the reason that um, Cynthia Krantz and all them who previously, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see, won't it? When Dragon Ball comes back, I mean, Mob Psycho 100 season three. Who fucking cares about Mob? Like, well, that's not Hero even. Academia. That's, that's my, not even my, a hard my Hero point. Academia. Let's go. With yeah, that one. well, let's just say when Dragon Dragon Ball Super is supposedly starting up again, hmm. when that starts getting dubbed, do you think that that they're gonna not have what? What do you? That'll be really interesting to see if they don't have the full cast because of this shit. That'll be interesting to see. Now, well, they've replaced say, if Dragon anybody Ball. if anybody had the ability to uh, to you know negotiate higher earnings, it's probably Sabbath. You know, like for that click of Dragon Ball and all. That, I don't know, but I'm just saying if this is if this is true, you know what Katrina Leonidakis is saying here that people who were being paid more were offered the lower rate, and you basically like you can stay with us if you want, otherwise get the fuck out. You know. Just uh, also, quickly on Dragon Ball, um, you know, they've replaced Frieza, Gohan, Bulma, mm -hmm. like all within Funimation. So yeah, maybe Chris and and Sean are safe, but other than that, I well, I I, I was know. thinking of um, Cynthia Krantz, who voices Chi Chi, due to the fact that she was in AM Studios dub with Vic. So that, that's kind of what I was thinking. Tiffany Vollmer, Cynthia Krantz, um, all of them were, were sort of in there. So I was thinking, I, I wonder, I wonder, and Cynthia Krantz, I mean, does she do She doesn't really do a whole lot of dubbing. Um, but, uh, I mean, she's Is there for Cynthia Cheating. Krantz. Um, Botan? Botan, yes. Yeah. Um, so she does, uh, in the past, you know, she she had a lot more titles. But I, I feel like more recently, Chi Chi's pretty much the only role that I can think of that she still does, but I'm just saying if she was offered the lower rate, but she still wanted to voice act. I mean, perhaps again, this is all speculation, but maybe that's why she went over to, um, uh, AM studios. Anyway. Also, I would like to point out here, Katrina Leonidakis herself was fired from Funimation after the merger. 
yay <laughs> see on the one hand on the one hand it's like ah, she's kind of an insufferable bitch but at the same time she did come out and admit she was wrong for using big brother instead of nini so i kind of have to give her a little bit of uh uh, well yeah uh, she gets credit yeah. for that well, but she, she had like some fault. other things that followed that up that is like okay well so much for so bamboo dong was talking about everybody at crunchyroll is criminally underpaid including their hard-working marketing and production folks it takes a lot of bravery for the freelance actors to speak out because they're highly visible but unfortunately also disposable 1.2 billion dollar acquisition and none of that trickled down Crunchyroll also monitors employee socials. My partner has legit been called in for a meeting because they tweeted something pro-union. Now, I looked at this person's uh, um, Twitter. Uh, they don't mention who their significant other or whoever is, but um, they do a ton of vor porn. Oh, so God. if you're into that... <laughs> um, <laughs> What was the gist of it? Just, quote, we don't want you using the U word or what? The spin was that they, by working for Crunchyroll in any capacity, they are a rep for the company. Wow, this is really bad it, for, for Vic's claim that they're, uh, uh, what was it called? Um, fucking uh, vicarious liability, right? Against Funimation. Too bad his case was dismissed. Uh, that by working for Crunchyroll in any capacity, they are a rep for the company in public scenarios. So talking about unions on their social media could be misconstrued as how the company feels about unions. My partner was vocally pro-union. I can only speak for the Dallas office, but morale is at an all-time low. And there's been a number of departures and reshuffling among staff. And when Sony originally took over Funimation in like 2016, it actually caused an exodus of many longtime staff thanks to simuldubs. That's what they say. I don't know who this person is. I just know that they drew and wrote disgusting vor fetish stories. And I, I hope I never have to see them on the podcast again. Uh, but um, make of that what you will. I also saw this. <laughs> Kyle McCarley may not return in Mob Psycho 100 Season 3 if Crunchyroll does not comply with his request to meet the SAG after union and negotiate a potential contract for future productions. That was quick. Mob Psycho 100, Shigeo Kagayama, Season 3, voiced by Victor. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, uh, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> that would be so fucking funny. It's not true. It's an edit. But that I know, was, I know, I know. But still, too be so funny. Funny. Well, yeah, Funimation's just like, look, buddy. I know we had some rough it, past, but you know what? As much as we hate your guts for suing us, we just hate unions that much more. <laughs> <laughs> are, are we almost done with this? That's it. That's it. Do you guys have oh anything God. else you want to say about it? Yeah, no. <laughs> I actually took it down a couple notes. Um, oh. Let's see. So he understood oh. the assignment. <laughs> okay. So uh, the the initial thing that I mentioned, uh, uh, I, I yeah, I'm what something something equivalent exchange something. <laughs> That's not even about them. <laughs> just shit, but it's so <laughs> good. Um. Uh, the initial thing I brought up, uh, I was gonna, uh, uh, end it with, uh, what is it? So if I was in the situation where I'm, I'm usually in a union, let's well, theoretically, if I'm in, in a union and, mm -hmm. uh, oh no, this, uh, upcoming, uh, third season, uh, they're not going to accept union. Um, you know, if I loved mob psycho 100 that much and also, you know, love my role that much. And they offered me like the same type of contract. But even if they didn't, I would probably be so compelled to just fulfill that role that I would probably take it anyway, even if I, you know, felt I might deserve a bit more for the the pay. But I think, you know, mainly for the, you know, like the fans and all that, I want them to have the complete experiences I would as a fan. 
Uh, and also, you know, just because that character means something to you. But uh, a- as you're talking about, the altruism trumps the, you know, like, oh, well, we all have to we all have to be in on this all of us voice actors not yeah. just me or what and it's but like I, it just, I assume it, it screams of i need you to come to the table so i can get ahead but it's good for you too why won't you just fucking come to the table right i deserve to make a living wage off of only four hours of work you know and, and it's like uh like i was saying as well the uh bargaining chip is you know, even if for some reason, oh, they made the exception just for the lead character, I'm sure the other uh, characters could, the other characters, the other voice actors could could bargain the same way. They could say, okay, well, I'm not returning if you're not going to meet X or Y need. Uh, I'd presume that the, the money is, like, probably the main one, though there is, uh, I mean, I guess some people in Mob do, do yell and all that stuff, but like I said before... Um, to an extent, I'm not going to say this is solely like your responsibility, but you'd think that uh, you'd you'd like, uh, as I've said before, like uh, the you'd learn vocal techniques so you wouldn't strain yourself with uh, things like this. Because if this is supposedly the thing you want to make your main income or whatever, like uh, I don't know, I, I'd somewhat expect you'd have a bit of that training. But uh, even without that, uh, you need to negotiate your terms. Because you're the merchandise to Funimation. So you <laughs> negotiate that, hey, dude, I need a break or whatever, uh, you know, after two hours or whatever. I can't do this or I can't keep up or else I'm going to be have have some Aaron Dismuke throat going on here. Uh, <laughs> but. um, Yeah, so um, I think that actually covers like all of it. Oh, yeah. And Ocean Ocean Dub, when you brought that up, that uh, they're as big as they were because uh basically they were forced uh <laughs> uh into regulation or whatever uh i thought you were gonna say because they're non-union uh i wonder if it's a combination i am i'm being called out <laughs> okay um so i'm just trying to i'm trying to skim through the uh you know here i you were talking about earlier uh how you know it's going to be funny when or weird when sorry i'm not the right space for the mic you were talking earlier how it'd be kind of funny or weird or something to the effect of you know when dragon ball super comes back around uh that you know we don't have the same cast and all that and i all i could think was man it'd be really nice to have a fucking change of pace if they go back all the new seeing all the new vas hit for super like all the characters, I'm like, man, I don't recognize these voices, and it makes me, it brought me back in to wanting to watch it. Yeah, if it goes back to the ocean group, it would be a nice change of pace. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just, like, I miss, o- I miss ocean dubs. I'm just, I'm just like, man, like I would, God, I just said like again. I would love to see Sean Schimmel and Chris Abbott come off their pedestal. You know, your shit stinks like everyone else's. You, you know, there's no need to act like you're better than anybody. Honestly, but. the the problem with Dragon Ball Super, even more so than the uh, than the egos of the cast, is just Dragon Ball Super kind of sucks. I, like, I'm not going to fight you on that. Yeah. So re- I want to address these. Uh, Stan says Laura, referring to Laura Bailey, and Travis referring to Travis Willingham. Is that his name? Yep. Um, did mocap along with voiceover for games. The same for Troy Baker. Now Laura Bailey and Travis Willingham have their own company producing their own content. So this is back when we were talking about video games pay more, right? Um, And you had, uh, Random Levin, you had mentioned that video games have a lot more lines. And if you get to do the vote, the the, um, mocap as well, right? Especially facial mocap, you know, they're using your likeness and everything in even more ways that you can really make bank doing Yeah, we're getting railed as Abby. Uh, You know, you make a lot more bank. Yeah. Well, Laura and Bailey like did, how many yeah. how many lines of like how many different variations do you have to say when you're getting railed? Because yeah. as a video game player, you might just sit there, and you so might, the game has you to might press the button a little bit or a lot, and you... yeah, so the game has to come up with a bunch of different like lines <laughs> no, that the character can uh, say uh, while you're sitting there you're not jumping. doing like, anything. All, all the all the jumping lines, like uh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah, ooh. and and. You got to remember, she's probably making even more bank because that is strenuous work going. Uh, 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 
Okay, hold yeah, on. she's got to get paid the extra <laughs> twenty five. Reese, can you do that again? <laughs> no. <laughs> damn it. No. <laughs> I'm looking for the fucking. Oh, here. It is. No, damn, it's not that one. Oh, it's in the audio. Ah, oh, god damn it. Fuck me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the video. For damn it! I hate you, Vietnam. <laughs> Well, you, okay. you know what? Yeah, While well, really Green Line is alive, I have a whole board. bunch of uh, different <laughs> intensities of hey, coming up. <laughs> I've had I've had this wonderful idea. Look, but the next time you do like an opening for the podcast, just fucking program that shit across the keyboard setup, and you go, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> we are gonna get hardcore. <laughs> Shadow, uh, not even yeah, shadow like, ban just if overtly in, banned if it's in that. the intro youtube is gonna just watch that and they're like no you're de- denied okay, we'll have to make it a special edition <laughs> outro or patreon only intro uh also while green line's sentient um i forget what the original context was but this was my response uh sorry green line footnum's <laughs> un- unionizing <laughs> My rate will go up to a thousand dollars per finished minute. Sorry, <laughs> I had uh-huh, to. Yeah, you well, it's sorry. Me. It was nice knowing you. So, uh, AC, how about uh, some editing for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only making sure that this thing I, uh, from Jonah Scott isn't going to get us copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, going back to comments. Um, I would like to point out, uh, E. Castro referring to Rika said, "It's ninety percent of her just saying stuff like you die yeah. when she's a spirit, right?" So yeah, again, uh, we'd have to actually like do the math and find out what the exact amount of lines um, Anaris Quinones had in. Um, <coughs> yeah, I watched like twenty minutes of that movie today, and yeah, it's I like mentioned thirty-six this. seconds of lines. <laughs> thirty-six seconds in the first twenty minutes, and the first twenty minutes is largely what she's in because she dies in the first ten. Well, no, no, she's mostly in the, the, the finale when she's actually out in the spirit form. Okay, well, what I'm well, saying is there's it. probably a chunk in the middle. I haven't seen it, but there's probably a chunk in the middle where she's uh, where she's not as prominent. Right. Speaking of uh, percentages, when uh, the ocean thing was brought up, I I was thinking, how did they calculate the twenty five percent or whatever Canadian? Like, how did they ratio right. that the voices no, equaled twenty five percent of the production? No, no, no. The production for that meant that basically by by being involved in the audio form process, that that made it a Canadian production, and therefore it counted towards the the quota of the the um syndication for for whatever channel it was going on of uh, being added in towards the 25%. Yeah, the Basically, percentage is based off of how much the broadcasters are broadcasting yeah. content. It's not about so the like, content itself being 25% uh, Canadian. It's about the content that went on to the TV station. Oh, so you're saying get a single Canadian guy, so technically it's a Canadian production now. No, uh, it has to be produced good. in Canada. Well, no, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be produced in Canada, but the production has to be significantly Canadian. Yeah, so, so the way that, that you do that is to have the production company located. And this on is Canadian why that new bill that Canada's trying Canada. to pass uh, is a not good thing. <laughs> yeah, they're they're trying to force YouTube to um, yeah. uh, have the same rule. Dude, we need to identify your channel under Canada when that happens so we get pushed artificially. No, You're telling me that 25% of YouTube must be Canadian? No, I think it's like 60. (laughs) Uh, I think it's only 25, but either way, whatever it is. Wow, does Canada take out 25% of the world's population now? It would would apply to the algorithm. Oh, yeah, so, it would apply so you're saying if you're in Canada, it has to pushed. suggest 25 yes. percent of the content must that it that it algorithmically suggests you must be Canadian. Yeah, you Boy, get 25 percent more Canadian content. The meme Canadian threshold content is in like there's feed. just going to be 25 percent of memes aren't going to make sense anymore. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're safe. We got 33 percent Canadian house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so, that's what um, I'm saying. We need to identify as a Canadian channel so we get pr- pushed 25 percent more. E. Castro also says not really much variation after the character is dead, referring to the voice changing. Uh, Zeno Robinson raised his prices from $30 to $60 for signings in one year because he does good role. He does good in roles and gets asked to come back for lines for both TV and anime and people are willing to pay. 
Um, so Zeno Robinson uh, also is one of the um, androids in Dragon Ball Super. Uh, hey, I, hey, I have a, a better role. Uh, he's Ty now. Oh, oh yeah, Ball. that's right. So that's why you're willing to pay 60. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's why I'm willing to pay zero. <laughs> and, and, and I believe he's Cox in the, My Hero Academia. He is, yes. And th- another important thing to say here is that Zeno Robinson negotiated his own rate by saying, look, my signature costs 60 bucks. And the fans said, well, all yes. right. Sorry, Reba Burr. Don't need yours anymore. I got to use that $30 to pay for my Zeno Robinson. No. Dude, so I imagine think- the unions require uh, voice actors to give away signatures at a certain rate. Yeah. Oh, like no. um, imagine if you're part of the union at cons, you can, you have to charge maximum. We can't have people yeah. like um, uh, Will Shatner yeah. Yeah. Unions charging two hundred dollars a in- signature. It makes all the two all the people that can't get that feel bad. So they all have to charge seven dollars a yeah. signature. It's now. effectively an equity uh, um, leveling the unionizing, right? I I think that uh, thirty Stand to is, sixty sounds crazy bombs. to me because. Uh, I got Vic's signature for 10 bucks Canadian. So that's like a dollar US. And Steve Bloom was five dollars. And this dude's 30. Well, you could sell those. 60. You should you should throw those up on eBay and saw, see how much what, people are willing to pay for them now. Was your Steve Bloom autograph five dollars on your own product, or did he sell you a, a poster? Uh, the, these are all on my own stuff. Oh, okay. What do you have them sign? Uh Vic signed Kenichi of all things. I, I thought Full Metal Alchemist would be way too generic. Um, and then uh, Steve Bloom uh, signed a game, Pitfall. Oh, right. Yeah, for Xbox. That was a good Pitfall game. You should have like brought the Atari 2600 one. <laughs> Technically, well, it's in that game. Well, you signed this. <laughs> I, I got um, Steve Bloom's signature and it cost me $20, but it was. Like, I bought like his poster that he had on the table. So. Dude, you know um, what? Be you know the only thing I'd want him to sign is a MAGA hat. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think he'd do that. Something tells me you need but to like I, change I need the to logo sign this to be like hat, Bebop and then forever. After he signs it, I'd be like, "All right, I need you to embroider Make America Great Again on this." <laughs> no, 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 no. Take cover the logo and just uh, or put what it about with, the like, one we're Bebop supposed to make forever? Remember that one podcast when we joked about how? Oh God, this is some deep lore. When the Pope went to Japan, he sold merch, <laughs> and I joked that if Trump went to Japan. What is he going to sell? MAGA hats in Katakana? And I was like, I could sell that. <laughs> so that, that is a forthcoming product. I can't believe I haven't made yet. Uh, anyway, so uh, VAs who try and are good at their craft get bigger and better roles. And those roles encourage people to pay more at con slash events. It's a win-win if you do your job. Yeah. So effectively, this is, this is what's going on when it comes to coming up uh, in any industry. Linking your arms together and and saying, you know, um, like like coming up together, right? That only gets you so far, and then it holds you back in ways because from, you're connected to everybody behind you. Because because not everybody is working as hard as you are. <laughs> Not everybody, you know, the some people is like, oh, I deserve to have a living wage for only working four hours, you know. Some people don't have the work ethic. You look at Vic's work ethic. The dude, like when he's not voice recording, he's making music. He's he's got any number of things going on constantly at all at all hours day. He can't stop. You know, it's just at a certain point, you know, the the lift ends up holding you back, right? Anyway, um, and it's I'm not saying like you a- should leave. You should, you know, I'm not saying you should forget where you came from and throw all your friends in the dirt and all that stuff or anything like that. But I'm just saying that at a certain point, um, it, linking arms with with the people in the group who aren't contributing, it's like doing a group project in school. Um, if you and try to keep A-plus. them involved, eventually you just do it yourself. And at a certain point, if you keep doing it yourself, day in day out every single project then they're getting the free ride off of your work 
Which is why right? you take their names off the project. Well, yeah. And, you know, go to the teacher and say, yeah, they did absolutely zip. I'd like to uh, do the project on my own. But yeah, but I'm just saying like, it's, it's the same thing in, in, in a, in a way when it comes to the, the whole unionizing um, aspect of, you know, we're all in this together. Right. But then it's, it becomes, you're doing the work uh, uh, like we're all in this together while they just kind of lay back and let you do everything kind of um, I'm with you in spirit, you know, I mean, it's I'd help, like, but uh, I, I, I did so much whispering last night, you know, <laughs> hardcore whisper set. Imagine all it's also the uh <laughs> it's the creative's way the artist struggle the starving artist like you you take the risk with your art you're not going to be successful by default it's not stable but it, it might pay off later later as we established in a previous podcast right so little rock says i saw a voice actor who wants to take darth vader's voice part even though james earl jones already signed a contract for the company to use his voice via computer generation. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of look and any voice actor should want that role because you want that character that people come to the convention and say, Oh, Vader, I want Vader's autograph. Right. Of course right. you want the role, you know? It, and it, I mean, do you really think that there's nobody out there who could do a Vader voice just as good as James Earl Jones? I mean, I think half the industry probably could do something that would be comparable. You Have know? you heard there's like a new Lion King? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And Ron Joss says, why you lied? I thought you said it's tomorrow. Look, here's what happened. So You lied. <laughs> I did. No, um, my, um, my wife got off work at 4.30. The show was scheduled for six o'clock. I was supposed to pick her up, go to the chiropractor, come home. And then I had like five minutes to throw the rest of the articles that I had up that I was archiving and everything to get them into the dock. And as soon as I started doing that, we were like, we're right on schedule to go live at six. My wife comes in and says, you didn't, you didn't get your son's homework done. And I'm like, that homework you did yesterday. So I didn't do the homework. So my son goes back to school. He he goes to school Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because he goes to a charter school. Uh, and so I go out there and I'm just like, oh fuck! I look at this assignment that I've been putting off, <laughs> helping him do, and I was like, should I push the show to tomorrow? Because I I found out I don't have work tomorrow, right? And my wife's like, yes, just push it to tomorrow. So I come in here and I, I say, all right, we're going to push it to tomorrow. And I hit enter and it posts to uh, Twitch and everywhere else. And then I'm like, wait a minute. My wife gets off work at 6.30 tomorrow, meaning I won't start the show until 7. I'm like, I can't fucking do that. Let's get this homework done. You know? So so that's what happened. All right. Um, anyway, uh, I apologize for the confusion. And Louise the Mouse 64 says, um, Michael Hollick did the voice and motion capture for Nico Bellic in Grand Theft Auto 5 or 4, rather. Uh, when doing that much, it would make sense to ask for a bigger pay. He was only paid a hundred thousand dollars. Now, look, I don't know who Michael Hollick is and what he commands in Hollywood. But if I did Nico Bellic's lines, hey, my cousin, and I was his mocap, uh, a hundred thousand dollars is plenty. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, and who do we want to see next? People in line. Todd Habercorn. Oh no! <laughs> All right. So He's also ten bucks. Yep. Let's. Uh, so what happened with Vic? Did we win? No, his motions were denied. <laughs> we'll have to see where he goes from here. Unfortunately. Brown shirts again, eh? Yes, apparently. Uh, let's see where. Oh, there's more here. And, and just for reference, I looked it up. It's 35%, not 25% for okay. the Canadian content. Uh, e Castro says it makes people not understand their own value. Another side effect of that mindset is that people stop realizing they have purchasing power. Yes. Again, at the end of the day, ironically, this benefits the companies more than anything else because at the end of the day, they normalize everybody into a contract that, that is standard and easy for them to pay and easy to swap out one person for the next. Yeah, they might not like having to raise their um, 
their, you know, salaries or whatever. But at the end of the day, they just pass that on to us, the consumers. So at, at the end of the day, it really doesn't. Oh my help. God. What's up? Say at the end of the day again. Okay. He said it like seven times. So at the end they of the should, day, the day ends. They should be able to quote vote with their wallet, so to speak. But when you introduce mandatory negotiations or negotiators, i.e., insurance companies and government, this is referring to uh, to government regulation raising the cost, then you don't have the ability to vote with your wallet. So I guess this is also in reference to that. It, it, it applies everywhere. I guess the entire market is subverted by greedy actors for sure. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm just trying to get us caught up. Um, what do you mean, full caster? I want to see uh, and right, I'm just gonna skip to the bottom and pretend like I read all those. Uh, if there's anything good, <laughs> you guys can of, start. <laughs> most of them are talking about. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I'm skipping. Okay, so let us. Uh, so I, I have test uploaded, and it appears that we will be able to show this next thing. So let's, uh, let's share this with audio. Thank you to whoever brought this to our attention. What the? <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> I hope I'm going to press a button. No, probably not. That's ill advised. Nickelodeon! Nickelodeon! Uh, it's mad at me. Uh, that's how this battle's gonna go down! Alright, I think we got it. <laughs> hey Max, you wanna be on our show? Dude, I blocked you like three times. How do you keep getting my number? We're going to cut that. Wow, that was that was some cringe. Uh, okay, so this is uh, from Jonah Scott saying, Hey, you, you like voice acting? Well, here is the 15-minute pilot of our at Sony sanctioned comedy show about it. Join me, Jonah Scott, and Alex Lee on a whirlwind tour of the voiceover industry featuring guests from Japan and our friends here in L.A. So what do you mean Sony sanctioned? If these are their LA voice actors, <laughs> apparently they've got a new YouTube I, channel. Well, Sony owns Aniplex, so I guess since that, that was most of what they were showing there, huh? I'm... Anyway, uh, I don't know what to say about that. That was some shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> I I will not be watching it. Um, Anybody else have anything to say? Nope. Thank you for bringing it to our attention, though. I uh, I do enjoy a good cringe. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 Jonas Scott. He's a. It says on his Twitter he's a VTuber. What the fuck? Did I oh, know that? It? Oh, it says VTuber Arc. So does that oh. mean that? Uh, okay. He's going through a phase. <laughs> Sorry, just like what is it though? Still. It is a comedy show about comedy show. Okay. voice acting. <laughs> you didn't realize it because you didn't laugh at all. Oh. all <laughs> comedy is subjective. Where do you see the VTuber thing? At it's the in very his name. top. It's in the it's right on his next to his name. Like in his oh, profile okay. thing. VTuber art. Got it. Okay. I thought you were talking about okay, gotcha. Hashtag BLM. All right. <laughs> and with that we move on. And speaking of that hurricane in Florida, in case anyone was concerned, despite being near Orlando, damage at discotheque headquarters only had a few boxes that got wet and power outages. Got very lucky. That is very good to hear. How about the staff? Are they all right? It's just the owner and his wife. 
That's the whole local staff. So I I, I think it's Selty and Laura, I think are their names. Um, Isn't it Selby or something? Selby. Selby? Sel no, I think it's Selty. Selby? I don't know. S now you've got me questioning. <laughs> anyway, uh, who's got pickups? Oh. Only almost three hours in, and we're done with the open discussions. Record time. Hey, Lance, are you there? Your moment to shine is coming up. All right. It's a good thing we've got other people to go through. Seb picked up 60 bucks with shipping from Amazon. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Jose, I couldn't unmute myself. Tiger and the Fish. Loop on the third, the first. Didn't get the steel book. Shame. Uh, Gundam Seed in the Promised Neverland. But all of these were cheaper than Italian edition. Russia or UK. Never <coughs> have their subtitles. No. I will watch it without subtitles. It was six bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Danny picked up Sakamoto Days Volume 3. Can't wait for that to get an anime. Uh, and then Foodnum showcasing the Malco Steelbook protectors. Yeah. Which are which are I've got pretty those, hot. I've got those around here somewhere I could showcase. They make pee pee pretty hard. They are made of quite a hard material. Oh, I'm going to lower my... Uh... Opening discussions are over. That means I sit down and get lazy. <laughs> sit down and take your pants off at last. Oh, yes. All right. You see, so, yeah, these, are, these are the... Uh, almost are ahead of you. These are the um, clear plastic um, protecting sleeves for steelbooks that I linked in the uh, Discord at that one point. Um, yeah, they're then, like the harder, uh, sturdier sleeves. Now, yeah. uh, as you see on the spine, so but the problem is, one... doesn't doesn't um, Sentai have slip covers for their? That's steelbooks? not a problem. That it is actually fits inside in the case, and it didn't feel like it was like going to do any damage to it. Well, it felt snug, but it felt like appropriately snug. But um, yeah, no, the. That so the Razafon steelbook looks completely different on the inside, so that is the outer sleeve hmm. inside the sleeve, which is what nice. I love. The Nano one was a bit tight, but I mean, it was still like within reason. Like, I'm only gonna slip out the steelbook itself anyway, so it's fine if it's a bit tight. So, here's a, a before and after shot. No, no, go back, go back to the I'm before. Okay. so you see at the top, so that's like the traditional bag sleeve. Uh, it's also got a separation on the in the the center. It's got that Dare seam. You not use the tripod. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, and uh, at the top it's got this like loose whatever. I usually kind of chop them off, kind of like the, the initial D off before you put it in the other sleeve. Plastic uh, sleeve for the hard shell. Yeah, plastic. yeah, yeah. I took off the the, Slip the loose sleeve and oh. then put on. Slip cover? What? No, he took off. He took off the uh, the plastic. Oh, his plastic bag. Of course, he did. Yeah, and then I, uh, yeah, and then I, whatever. I would just put in the sleeve, as you can see. But you can see it looks way cleaner because you don't have that seam in the center. Uh, it's beautiful. There's a lot now, of semen in the show, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, to discuss the downsides, if you will, um, of the. Uh, of these uh, protective sleeves is there is like, you know, there's a tiny corner tab, like on the top. Uh, I, I don't think I took a picture of it, but just pr picture the top angle of it. There's a, a small tab on the front and the back. I guess you can kind of see it there. So that's like most of the steel books. Like this little tab right here. Yeah, it's it's pretty damn small and like and you'd expect honestly, it like you you would look at it and not even question it because you expect that to be there. Yeah, and then there's, the a there's a central tab. Yu-Gi-Oh steelbook. Yeah, well that's I didn't know for the movie. That. Remember the podcast? I got so pissed about that because <laughs> no. I already bought it like two times at that point, three times <laughs> technically. So I'm like, oh okay, I'll get it the fourth time. Uh, yeah. you're dying five centimeters per second four times. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, oh yeah, so so there's a central tab uh, that might not be as easy to see. There's one in the center on that top uh, flap, technically mm -hmm. on the bottom flap too. So that kind of stabilizes it, so it doesn't like kind of 
get open. Uh, so that's kind of also the downside, though, because it makes it way harder to conveniently open. These are not for convenience. I have seen slip cases that um, you can essentially slip it out from the back. So it's open like a regular slip case or whatever. Um, you know, the style that... How do I describe I it verbally? I um, like the ladies versus butlers one. <laughs> That's the closest example I can think of. Yeah. Uh, like I, I've seen that they make. Oh Jesus Christ! This is what he's talking about—the Malco protectors. That's like, what is in the picture. The one yeah. I'm talking about that they make that is more convenient. It's not yeah, by yeah. Malco. It's right. by some I, other. I, I've been looking the entire time and not listening to you for those. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, like uh, you, the, those other ones, you can just kind of slip them out casually. I I do want to get those, but I feel like I think I've seen those ones, and they have tabs like on the spine. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a bigger issue to me, but yeah. Um, as you can see, the Nana one also has the plastic sleeve still on it. Fits in. I'm amazed. Fine. I'm amazed that they that they fit in there. Yeah. Without yeah, feeling it's, it's great. Like you can just casually grab it without having to uh, like a uh, treat it like a baby. All right. So I've got my Hero Academia manga volume. I think that's thirty two. And then Demon Slayer Mugen Chain Arc TV version. And Ranking, Ranking of Kings Season 1 Part 1. And that time I got reincarnated as a slime Season 2 Part 2. Okay. Nice. And... Wait, you got Season 2 Part 2? I'm still waiting on my limited. I thought that was being released later this month. Is that's, that part two? That's the part Season 2 Part 2. The limited. Is that what you got? No, I got the you standard. Didn't get the limit. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because I'm still waiting on the limited. They haven't even charged me for that yet. Well, maybe you have other stuff in your order that are keeping it hot. Uh, yeah, the Fate Grand Carnival thing that came out comes out like the same day. I have to look into this. Well, okay. you answered your question. <laughs> They're on the same day. Well, is it in stock at Right Stuff? No idea. When it, I mean, it was a pre-order. A long time ago. Just continue. continue. Okay. I will invite you to tilt your heads. <laughs> because Lance doesn't know how to take pictures. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> so, But he does know how to buy some decent anime. So. And he does know how to take a dick pic at least. Uh, <laughs> <I'm not laughs> <in> <laughs> What uh what's the name of that chiropractor you visit, AC? I, I think I might need to visit. <laughs> What is this one? Uh, uh, you're showing. Control. I think you're showing the back of the box instead of the I, front of the box. I took. I, I I was in a hurry when I was taking all these, and I got a lot. Uh, everything here was got at a super deal. And if you can't do what was this line? And if you can't do it with one boat, don't do it all. It's like if you can't do it right, don't do it at all. Hey, hey, what is up? Oh, oh, Rekka, how's it going? What's going on, man? Uh, how are you guys? We're doing yeah, good. Yeah. good. Uh, glad to see you. We're going over our pickups. Oh, cool. Yeah, do you have any? I actually so. <laughs> oh. Okay. So, I. You're talking about anime, like collection pickup, right? Mm -hmm. So, I messed up earlier on in the year and I got rid of the giant Robo, the animation uh, box set, the one with the Ginray um, special. Uh -huh. So, mm -hmm. and then. Like recently, I was like seeing some footage of the show online and stuff, and I was like, "Why would I sell that?" So then I I, I got on Amazon and I saw somebody selling it for like twenty bucks. So I, I picked it up again, real because you know it's a little pricey. Why don't you mm -hmm. get the discotheque Blu-rays for those? It, it came back on on Blu-ray. Yes. Yeah. Really? In fact, Did they get the, the if you can believe it. Too? Well, if you can believe it, the trailer mm -hmm. that's on the blu-ray for the ginray special i provided to brady no oh, way wow. yeah because he he requested it on uh on twitter if anybody had some dvd from back in the day and i happened to have it so i ripped it for him and sent it to him over dms oh wow to put it on the uh on the on the blu-ray wow that's awesome 
I wish I had known that because um, <laughs> I'd like to get that on Blu-ray. So this is but, for um, um, Giant Gord? Is that what? what no, not Giant, giant Gord. Not gi- not Giant. Giant, giant Robo. Robo. Giant, giant Robo. Robo. Right. Yeah. And and Gen and Ginray. And the Ginray special, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much the 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 only pickup that I've done like in the last like four months. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh okay. Yeah. So what happened is they released Ginray special. Uh, separately. They, they re- yeah, they released yeah, the they Ginray separate. separately. That's what they did. Because the giant um, Robo disc was like so packed, right. they couldn't have done it. Giant wow. Robo to this day. Um, with Big. the exception of um, uh, Project Echo, just because of the unique situation there, uh, Savakis says Giant Robo is the thing that they that was the most difficult thing to get out of uh, of Discotech in terms of all the work, restoring and everything they did oh, behind really? the scenes, throwing the. Um, they didn't well, make a fuss of it like they did. Uh, what is that one? Cyborg zero zero nine. Yeah. Uh, that was difficult for other reasons. I just, I just, it, it, is, it be, is it because of the length of the episode? Like each one is like an hour long. Is that why? I don't know. I just, I, I saw a tweet um, from Savakis about it that I, that I was deciding whether or not to include on the uh, seven uh, episodes the and it's got 400 minute runtime. So, yeah. Yeah. Both the, oh, the they had TV both the new on. and old English jokes on that set. Huh. Mm. Did I miss anybody? Did I, did I miss you guys? Um, what you guys got already? Oh, we're going over. We're in the middle of mine. So, yeah, okay, we're in the middle okay. of, of Lance's. Cool. So Lance, you picked up Little Snow Fairy Sugar. This is just volume one, though, right? Yeah, I got. I I was filling up my cart and I saw all this stuff that I just didn't own for <laughs> a couple dollars, and I was like, "Fuck it!" Mm. Like I want a few of these. Three and, and... up. <laughs> look, <laughs> I look, will just I, I say. Was, look, look. Right stuff got rid of a lot of their adult material. They're not giving us a lot of shit. Uh, to I don't think from. this is adult. <laughs> no, you don't understand. <laughs> no, no, he's, he's saying, so. he's saying his up. part topper would usually be some porn, <laughs> but because porn. right stuff got rid of their their uh, erotica content, uh, now he has to cart top with the uh, kitty stuff. <laughs> you know, no, they're, so, I mean, it, it, it's on them, so they so could have made I, I more money say, off of me than a buck eighty. But hey. No, this watch series. Discotheque announces it for in the next Discotheque. Well, day. I hope they put this out on Blu-ray because I would just say that this series legitimately is worth picking up because I... the architectural design of the town is unbelievable. They they like went to this German town of all places and and studied it for like three months. Uh, wow. The whole yeah. the whole team from Japan. It's on the special feature design now. I remember, um, and it shows. I remember a friend of mine, she geeked out so hard over this show. And I was just like, fuck it. Like, it's a couple bucks for a series. You know, just, I'm a collector. How I, long, I how long is it? I'll own it. It's how long um, is it? 26 episodes, if I remember correctly. Also, oh, it, has it has a few volumes. Yeah, it's six volumes. I don't I don't think it's hard to get, though. It's, I think it's four volumes, six volumes. I think it's six volumes. Uh, it, it came with shampoo, if you bought the art box. <laughs> it's one of those. Wow. <laughs> yeah, oh, <God. laughs> and then uh, Magicano, the complete series save edition. Yeah, I, have I that. picked up which I picked up from Anime Fix. Wait, yeah, I picked that up for five dollars. I like Magicano. Oh, Sentai has this, huh? What, but stuff, oh, stuff like sugar, yeah, Sorry. stuff for sugar. Casey, do me a solid, brother, and uh, point out which one you're looking at, Disgaea. Oh, this guy. Okay, I got that from Right Stuff for a couple dollars. Okay, I was trying. I was again tart toppers here. I was, you know. So is this is again? This is just volume one, though. Yeah, these are uh, these are single D. These are single DVD. Oh, the, you are the, the, hey, you are hey, the sucker hey, who went, who sorted by lowest uh, cost <laughs> and see? picked up the things that Right Stuff is like. God, we got so much of this shit. Just get it out. AC, you know? hey, hey, yeah, yeah. That's, that's no fairy sugar. Is volume six? Oh, cocked. even better. I don't feel cucked. You can't even start the series. <laughs> I mean, I've already seen it, and again, it's it's part wow, of Wow, Helsing. Helsing. Uh, yeah, I picked this series. up from Anime Fix. Every bit of that was. Hold on, I can tell you right now. Every bit of that Helsing, Helsing, Helsing was twenty dollars. 
Yeah, like I had that. Bucks I, did, too. I had that set, but then I I I went for the the blue. I went for the <laughs> uh, the anime classics. Oh, okay. Yeah, just for the space. Yeah, so the space. I'm gonna choose not to click on the Ikitosin one <laughs> for YouTube's <laughs> sake. You're a coward. <laughs> So hold up, uh, Lance, you show you ma- show the man ass baby during the last podcast, but you won't show that. I am Lance, amazed. Continue. You're missing uh, one volume of Dragon Destiny, just so you know. Oh, I, I own five. I'll have to look through. Uh, uh, I mean, you've seen my collection. The, I just picked these up because I was cleaning out a collection that they had gotten in, which you saw. Uh, and also, we'll get to the one I cucked you yes, on. Yes, you're missing very volume soon. Two. Don't worry. And then you also picked up Gundam Seed. Yes, I did. Nice. Why don't Complete you just get the with... right stuff Blu-rays? Okay, we can nitpick every single one of his pickups. <laughs> and and that's get... okay. <laughs> I'm still happy with my price because I spent less on this. There's one coming up. You're going to see it. That makes all this worth it. Okay. Is it this one? Part 12 and part 12. Dude, what I've wanted say? this series for so long. If they ever would release some blue, well, you still don't have it. You just. I know. I, <laughs> but it was a start for <sighs> A journey of a thousand Dude, miles. I, I'm please, please, there's a, there's a lo- please tell there's me a, that this is the one that was coming up. That hey, you there's are so a local, proud no, of. There's no. a local guy to me. There's a local wait, guy which to one me is it? I, I, I'm Hold saying on, no on, without knowing. What's up? No, I'm saying there's a guy local to me that's selling the entire. You're under arrest with the bo- with the boxes and stuff for like oh, 150. Cool. If oh, you're in there, really? Yeah. Holy shit! Is it Kajiji, I might have though? to buy that, even oh, though God. I have yeah. no money right now. Hold on, let me, because I'll look at it right. In podcast like 14, I dropped set three, you know, <laughs> the rarest one. Wow! And dinged it off of uh off of the bookcase. And so when I have the rest mine, of it, I might have to buy the rest. You just can have set three. <laughs> When I bought mine, um, I bought it on uh, on eBay, and it arrived. And I shit you not, the return address said Twentieth Century Fox, <laughs> like it was the actual location in New York <laughs> where Fox was located. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it was the New York office. It might have been fucking Nakatomi Plaza, actually. That's a little. You're- Oh, no, yeah, well, record. you're under the rest. <laughs> is one of my favorite series, uh, and then uh, which one were you showing just then? You're, you're real failing. Quick, real quick before we go go past, uh, you're under arrest. So, a Wait, don't what? get too excited because that's Kijiji. That's like the Canadian Craigslist, as uh, Rekka likes to call oh. it. Um, but then again, I'm sure we can arrange to get it if one of you guys wants it. Yeah. But, it's um, two, so it's two twenty, and it has the motion picture also. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's like the only thing I own of it. <laughs> oh, and he has and he has um hundred hundred ninety nine um from Viz the digital nice. four hundred oh, for all four. Oh, oh Osaro, my friend, thank you for breaking the streak of never ending podcast without <laughs> super <laughs> chat. <laughs> Our first super chat in like four our first months. super chat of the quarter. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hey, here, Sugar Daddy's doing it broke. Okay? This is for your alternator you just replaced. <laughs> I, I don't know why he has full throttle for three hundred bucks here. All right, um, you want to get back on my uh yes. pickup? Just, just, one, just one fuck more, over this one more the, uh, note. One, one more note on the you're under arrest to not get excited. I am more than certain that Sentai is going to put a re-release out, uh, P- possibly relatively soon mm-hmm. because because they, they have a streaming on high dive. sequel series, right? What? No, didn't no, they, they have the, the original. Oh, they did. Okay. It. No, but didn't and they also release a box TV. set of the of the newer series? Yeah, season two and three. I don't yeah. know if they went out of print or not. Right. But well, either way, I I really I would much prefer just pick up the one. I would Blu-ray love to watch than Club five hundred dollars or however much it is. I would love to watch Club this at some point uh, to force me to finally sit down and watch it because I loved. I put it in. I put the disc in. <laughs> And it was so good after first episode that I put it away and never came back to it. <laughs> because that, that, I what's that? You're under arrest? Yeah, I want. Well, okay, so so I really loved it because um, from what I saw, you know, back in in like this time of um, cell animation, every once in a while you'd have uh, an anime 
where the studio would get super ambitious and do entire camera moves that they drew every single frame of the background moving with. This show has like three per episode. Wow. And it's just like, it's so gorgeous that I thought to myself, it's definitely, I want to sit down and experience this show. So I can't watch it now. I have to watch it at some future point when when I have more time. And I hate to admit it, but time has only gotten harder to, to come by. That's time, so time to watch on. now, bitch. <laughs> yeah, hope, hope to hell they get a, get a Blu-ray then. So then, uh, Valkyrie, Valkyrie. Um, Ultraman, UFO, Ultraman, Valkyrie. Yeah, yeah as, as I told you in messages, Lance, uh, you're missing the the thin pack case it comes with, like a. It has like a mini art box for the yeah. regular. Yeah, yeah I am missing pack. that. But also, again, I got... that is season two, I think. Okay. Also, I did get. I got each of these for five dollars a piece again. So gripe okay. all you want to, but okay. I, like I, I told you to tell this to Bobby, but tell me that tell is me one that... season. That is a box set. This is the big one. Okay, okay those those pick? were a gift when I helped. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. These are the big PP pickup. If, <laughs> ne- if next is what I remember, it is it's the Family Guy stuff. That is going to be the uh, that was a gift from a friend of mine when I helped him move. He's like, I just don't want this, and I was like, I'll take it. Well, your friend has gave good me, taste. He gave me two copies. Okay. Lance, of... are you gonna be watching this? No. Oh, okay. I'm what? I'm not I'm not a fan of Family Guy. He gave me two copies of uh, King of the Hill, but they were missing discs. I didn't realize that till I got home. <laughs> so I ended up not sharing that picture when I opened it. I was like, oh, there's no disc in there. So Seb, Seb says Family Guy is the best anime. <laughs> I just so I, the reason I asked if you were gonna watch them is because when I went to see um Fate Stay Night, uh Heaven's Feel Part Two, yeah, without having seen part one, uh I got such a laugh out of the fact that there's a character in it called Zokin. Mm-hmm. That's his name, right, Reese? Yeah, Zoken. Zoken, okay. the, the old. Uh... I I incorrectly call him Zenko throughout the whole uh, first impressions movie, <laughs> but but it, at one point in the fucking thing, spoilers. Uh, something happens that is gruesome and out of nowhere, and then it just cuts to his face, and he goes, "Ha!" <laughs> I swear, I swear. There's a moment in Family Guy where Peter just goes, ha, like that. <laughs> and I have been looking for that clip because well, I need to dude, replace that's the audio a lot of, with it. Dude, look, it's family just a guy. simple laugh where he just goes, ha, like just yeah. one <laughs> one uh, breath. That if anybody finds that, fine. please let me know what episode it's How from. much are you paying for that uh, search? I'm just the saying if is... you happen to be watching it, I ask <laughs> you get a it. shout out in the, con- in the description yeah. of the video. Okay. <laughs> What I what I was gonna say was those I have seen like the first several seasons of Family Guy and it just I couldn't keep watching it. And the so first, I'm the first three you made it seasons past the first are great. Uh, then but, it, then it quickly goes downhill. I was more into Family Guy when I was a kid. What you got years. now? Yeah. Well, the first three seasons came out when I was a kid, so maybe. AC, that's stop why. cucking me and tell me what the pictures are. Tokyo Underground. Okay, yeah, I picked up that from Anime Fix as well. <laughs> is there something you wanted to say about anime fix? I, I'm going to get to it. Okay. And I'm going to Peter do it. Griffin is the right. best girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, is that Toki? The third. The third? Okay, yeah. This is a series that I could have sworn I owned before. And it was another one I was like, oh, got to pick it up. This is a series, one of the few series. Somebody gave me their bootleg. Um this is a series that I, I have a bootleg of that I never ended up buying the legit copy for. Ah, uh, well, shame on you. I got it. I haven't watched but. it, dude. It's it's good. It's old school though. It's like oh, think think old school sci fi, animes like I'm like that. it's gonna follow that feel a lot. All right, okay, now we're next? now we're at DNA Angel. <laughs> yes, that's the one I cooked Fudnam on because okay. I, I already yeah, put it yeah. in my Lance, cart. Lance said, "Hey guys, I got Helsing and blah." Um. Do you guys want anything from this pile of anime? Like, While I was oh, on DNA the phone Angel. with the rep, telling him everything I wanted, 
And would have mentioned the well, one well, thing that I was Well, I, I said, yeah, D and Angel, hook me up. I don't want a Baki again. And then I'm... he said, oh, well, there's a problem. I kind of just ordered that. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> All right. So I would just like to say, okay, I know Vic voices Dark Mousy. Is it Greg Ayers? No, voice... it's some like nobody. He's he oh. like two guys in anime. I... I am still recovering from the cancer that I the got trauma. from this character's gay ass voice. Like it is the most pathetic. Like I want to beat him up. He sounds like such a that one was for you, Randall. <laughs> so anyway, um, also this very much looks like the print quality of a bootleg. Uh, I think we should. Oh no, check Greg Harris plays the blue hair guys, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, anyway, I... um. I, I do not ever want to sit through this show again. Yeah, I hate Dan Angel. <laughs> so what was what was <laughs> which said, to, all right? Which one was that was that was the end of mine, right? I hope yes. I hope they okay. are all clear. To... I said they are clear, but did you mean to send that dick pic? Because well, Lance I is blind. Just, yeah, I was, I'm just I, well, I'm just being. Wait, there's which ref- dick pic. No, no. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, no way you this know it. Which was the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but well, okay. Right. Hey, everybody. Uh, give me a second here uh, to call this out because uh, we talked about this for a podcast, and I was just waiting for my right moment to do yes. it. Anime Stick is turning Sweet Sixteen, and they're having a big old sale at their store. You can uh, check them out in St. Petersburg, Florida, or up at the Mall of America in Minnesota. They, it's going to be between October the ninth. It's going to be on October the 9th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Is it going to be like their big event? They're going to have food, drinks. It's going to be catered, of course. Uh, I'll skip it like that. Uh, then the entire they're going to have a 15% discount for all you guys. And I love that someone is smacking during this. Uh, $1 well, posters. Florida, didn't they just get like, hit with a hurricane? <laughs> and they're going to have $1 posters, which is going to be the entire day. And then they're going to have $2 used manga which is going to be the entire day. So, you know, hit them up, check them out. You can call them. Uh, it's pretty easy just to Google uh, animefix.com. Uh-huh. It brings it up. You, so they have a Facebook sure, page, of course. Are we sure that they're not underwater? <laughs> they're, they're up. They're back up and running. I already talked to them. They had some bad trees they have across a good power. Sail I think the hurricane was, oh, hold on, scroll out. Where are we? Was uh, Orlando? Uh, okay, which the hurricane Saint, was on the east coast. On this side, okay. Saint Saint. No, Peter's it wasn't. Is that, little, is that little island? Uh, Fort Fort Myers was the main hit thing in. Um, We're having some serious feedback, on, guys. On the west side, like there's some distortion coming back through for some reason. It's like That's because random eleven's loud. <laughs> no, no, it's 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 replay. I'm hearing it replay what I'm saying in a distorted manner. Oh, uh, but no, oh. they had like trees down and stuff. But like Bobby told me that they uh like they were getting their power back and had everything you know. Oh, it's, it's a running. good yeah. Okay, so here's the floods. Central Florida floods happening. Apparently, Google Maps was like, "All right, we got you, fam." <laughs> <laughs> I said Fort Myers. Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm saying like they actually label it out as floods. Yeah. Right? So they're showing me where it is. So I, because I have no fucking idea what I'm supposed to be looking for. Anyway, was there any pickups after that, or is it just my my oh technical my only? I want to live in Arcadia. I've got uh, I've got a couple pickups. Um, before we before we do that, um, uh, I hate Can to we stop the clicking. I hate to be the guy, but uh, are Rekka, are you on a uh, like a headphone mic or are you on like earbuds mic? I'm on a speaker, on, like my phone speaker. Oh, okay, um, because why well, you think I don't know if me? it's yeah yeah I don't know if it's like you moving around your phone or whatever, but it it sounds like uh like hold on I'm gonna mute I'm gonna mute rubbing myself. a microphone. I see. I mean the white noise or whatever stopped, but but that wasn't tick, the, tick, 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 the tick, tick, constant tick, clicking and, and scratching like record okay. scratch sounds. Almost. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's Rekka. Yeah, I, I think it's it, him it was, holding his phone and probably. like it's, 
and and rubbing his his phone a little like, bit or like, like gripping his, his phone, his phone case a little bit tighter yeah. and then the phone case I'll, I'll just bit, unmute maybe. I'll just unmute when I when I have something to say and then oh, I'll mute yeah, yeah that works and and as you know we go for many hours so if at any point you got to dip out feel free to interrupt us and let yeah, us know yeah I'm gonna stay for the rest of the hour. Um, okay. Because well, I was, I was more than I will probably be here for like four more hours. I know, but he's yeah. saying for the rest of this hour he'll probably okay. be here. Okay. And then I'll, and then I'll come, and then I'll come in next week. It's just this week I'm cool, moving man. and stuff. Totally understand. Thank you. For, yeah. Thank you for uh, stopping in. No it, it, problem. Are, it, is that the move to Japan by any chance? Oh nah. <laughs> I still I gotta wait a, a year and a half for that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's definitely that's next. <laughs> well, congrats. Cool, so for my pickup, oh, are we still okay? Yeah, so go ahead. For my pickups, I, I I bought production sheets for high school DXD Hero, <laughs> which I believe is season four. Nice. Wow. So, <laughs> Too bad they're not the new character <laughs> sheets. <laughs> yeah, right? say, oh my God. Reese just cuts <laughs> everything up, man. Nothing's perfect. Reese, to kind of give you an idea of what they are going for, and then I got to be really careful of the rise we're gonna get. Demonetized. So I've oh, I think that's probably to the best of my ability. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I'm gonna owe AC a lot of money. Let's see. <laughs> okay, we're good. Oh. We're good. This is uh <laughs> Kisaki. <laughs> oh, I, I was gonna ask. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. This whole time, I was trying to like, how do I make a Kisaku reference with High School TXD? <laughs> oh, bitch! You didn't even have to. I already had you. I already had you set up for that one. Um, and then I so Footnote was kind enough to show me his uh, collection while we were talking on Discord uh, a little bit ago. So um, he brought up a couple things that I didn't have, and so I looked up and. I saw <clears throat> prison school uh, was uh, going for bid on eBay for 30 bucks or roughly 30. I think it was shipping. It was like 40. And I was like, well, I'll bid. I'll lose the bid. But whatever. I went to sleep. And apparently I fucking won the damn thing. So oh, nice. He's <laughs> like, oh, OK. Nice. I'm I'm broke, but <laughs> you know, worth it. <laughs> Because <laughs> I didn't think I was going to win. I was like, ah, what did you bid? Good. It's fine. I, I bid like, the minimum. yeah, the minimum. It was like 30, 31, 32 bucks US. Dude, so as I, my I looked phrase over at says, the fact that I, that I am, in fact, limited ads. <laughs> and I didn't, it sounded, it seemed as though you were trying to show I'm broke, as in like there was a price tag on there for like 3000 or something. Oh, no. <laughs> My 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 saying goes: My wallet is empty, but my heart is full. <laughs> right. No, well, I I just got paid. So if if you know if we did break TOS, if one of the God, don't worry about one it. of the uh, it's pads... not your fault, <laughs> dude. Oh, Osaro right? has sponsored this we, podcast. Yeah, we got a, that two dollars. Two dollars super good. chat. Yeah, bro. We are <laughs> fair super... enough. Fair enough. So uh, we know our worth. You know. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, hopefully you best not myself. donate anymore. <laughs> Two dollars right. split six. Trying to range. trying to convince me to be even be even more of a bigger sugar daddy than you. Is that is that is that what you want from me? Well, that's it. So I'm done embarrassing myself in front of our guest. Oh, Sorry, no, Rekha, that you had not. to see my <laughs> oh, cultured God. material. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. My final pickup, my only real pickup is uh, My Hero Academia. Um, oh wait, it's over here. Uh, Region B edition. Shame. And, uh, Shame on you. Yeah. No, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Um, so our lovely uh, uh, what do you call it? Viewer Seb, uh, in the Discord, which you can you can join in the link in the pinned comment, right? I will. Um, is oh, I, uh, I didn't pin it. Hold on, let me. I, didn't oh, pin it. I will put it there. You, right now. <laughs> you ruined my promotion. No, what? um, he has linked in the deals. Uh, what is it called? Deals and uh, sale sharing or deals whatever it's sales. called. Uh, in our Discord, uh, he linked My Hero Academia season four on Amazon Spain, so Amazon.es, um, for 10, 11 euros. <laughs> 11 euros for real uh, I, I feel yeah 
that's why it's sitting in my hands because it's so deep <laughs> but um what is it i feel like it was like 15 euros before but when i checked it so this was months ago i'm i was just thinking to myself i'm like i really need to get that fourth season and i'm like i wonder if that deal is still up <laughs> yeah it was still up and it's like only two left so i'm like whatever what's the worst that could happen and uh showed up uh the package was ripped but it's in <laughs> pretty good shape so you know and at the end of the day i converted this to canadian dollars and it's 15 canadian dollars uh without wow. without shipping now Dude. it did have like 25 euro shipping so that was like double the product price <laughs> but it came out to like 48 canadian dollars total like at the end of the day that is still a really good that's like 40 dollars saving because it's like $90 on Amazon.ca for the North American version or whatever. So my remedy to this is you have to get part one or yeah, part one. And they conveniently released uh, the complete season four. So that is the same size as this Without slot. Slip cover. What? Without Can I see the cover? Who cares? You're not going to be representing this side of the, the Can thing. Can I see the other side real quick? The other spine? Oh, oh. Oh, I'm, I got to get into this, too. Um, but what is it? So you can get the... Com I'm going to get okay, the complete hold, hold series. I, I just... I, I, I've i got a question that's burning a hole in me. Don't, don't worry. I'll, I'll get to that in a sec. <laughs> I'll put the complete series in there, and I can have all Region A discs. And guess what? I'm convinced this is the exact same box as Region, uh, region A. Because... Not true. No, no, no. It's got to be true. This can has a, a barcode. But UPC. it's got the rating on the, for the region the A. Region that, that's not the same barcode that because they have 13 digits in Europe. No, hold up. The, but that's just is, the, the art card or whatever? Is that what you're saying? This is the first uh, UPC. This is the official UK one. And then it has the US one on the bottom. And it has the US rating on the bottom. This is the same goddamn box. Doesn't it have the, they, rate, the, the rating on the cover, though? Yeah. No, the, that's a sticker. Oh, that's a sticker oh, on the cellophane? So, hold on, hold on. Uh, this is my burning question. This is my burning okay. Yes, it is. It is a sticker. So, you know how we can sell stickers on our store? Yeah. Random 11, do you think it's illegal for us to, to produce those stickers so that Fudnam can rep every one of his non-imports as an import? Oh, my God. <laughs> for uh... consistency's sake, for the ones that, that you can't take the stupid waffle number off of, you just oh my... put Yeah, I'm going to go on my collection. Berserk uh, Golden Age movies <laughs> and the 2016-17 would look so much better with that age rating on it. Like... I've just been dying for that, man. Anyway, that was my pickup. All right. Wonderful. So if we're done with pickups, uh, I've got our Kickstarter. That was broken. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know why. What the? F well, that's weird. <laughs> so I'm not sure what's going on with that. <laughs> why the hyperlink <laughs> is segmented. Okay. So um, once again, broken beat from the guy claiming to be working with former Toei animators uh, has four days left. It did reach its goal. It is a project they love at Kickstarter, uh, but it also kind of looks like ass uh, and there's no DVD tier. So I don't even care. Dude, uh, I'd love it if Kickstarter had a projects we hate. Projects don't we back hate. this. <laughs> uh, it kind of looks like, you know, those wow. early 2000s, how to draw anime. Yes. <laughs> like those. Down Look, a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's my fault. Honestly, I boosted him when he was quiet uh, during pickup. Well, I put him back down to 100. Okay. <laughs> well, I put him back in his place, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we've all yeah. So it it seems like a uh, um, it seems like the typical uh, how do I phrase. As far as the Kickstarters that should have no reason to get made go, it looks better than most of the ones we've looked at. That said, also, Plantopia has 21 days left. It has also reached its goal. Uh, but again, no DVD tier, so why bother? And then, oh, he's still, oh, sorrow, please find it in your heart. <laughs> fun, fun to Crossroad Chronicle. Oh, my God. 
Uh, yeah. So he's uh, he's still 25 days left, and he has literally less than one dollar because he's only got 109 yen uh, going towards it. Uh, legitimately, if you guys get it halfway there, I'll fund the rest of it <laughs> just to see what happens. Dude, you uh, are making uh, dangerous promises. Uh. <laughs> it's only $138. <laughs> so how come when this one loaded, it was actually in down here? What the frick? Whatever. Okay, so Kuroinoji Khan from Digital Manga Inc. Uh, Digital Liars Inc. Hello. I wanted... I wanted to post an update related to the current... Pa- what the... F- this is not it. What, what the fuck was that? <laughs> okay, so this is the correct one. <laughs> we have some unfortunate news to tell all of you. We know that we previously planned to have Kodomonoji Khan Volume 1 printed this month. However, our team was blindsided by an unforeseen circumstance. And this unfortunately meant we had to make some difficult decisions. Right now, our team is still trying our hardest to work through this bombshell. Fucking bombshell. But, the but fuck we wanted it? we wanted to are you in Ukraine? Like Oh my. But we wanted to let you know how this campaign was affected. In order to overcome the situation, we were forced to alter our print and digital release schedule. And one of the titles affected was Kodomo no Jikan due to its size. As Kodomo no Jikan volumes are omnibuses, they need to be strategically placed in our print schedule for a variety of reasons. Therefore, given the current situation, you know, that bombshell situation we haven't listed or given you any details on yeah. at all yet. <laughs> printing a small batch of volume one just for the Kickstarter wasn't viable anymore. And we were forced to push it back. By the way, this Kickstarter. Where the fuck is the date? From fucking 2016. It ended oh July 5th, 2016. Seven hundred... years ago. Holy crap. Seven fucking years ago. The, uh, the bombshell unfor- situation is uh, we, we have no money. Yeah. This unfortunately means we won't be able to print the books till next year at the earliest. Wow. We don't have an exact time frame at the moment, but we're hoping for February. Understandably, this Good news God. will most likely and make that many you of back you this and then just died like three years ago. <laughs> and we sincerely it. apologize as no one from our team saw this coming. Saw what coming? How did you not see it coming? This is at least the 18th update like this. It's like the How- most logical thing to come. Right? <laughs> The pattern suggests this will happen again. I can't wait till your February post saying, "Oh, another bombshell." <laughs> However, we do want to uh, we do want to assure you that our team is currently doing everything we can to get over this hump and get your items to you. So, Rekka, are you familiar with Digital Manga Inc? I've never heard of it. So this this group is a legitimate real group, mm-hmm. but all of their Kickstarters. They keep making Kickstarters and not having enough money to produce the thing they promised. So they make another Kickstarter promising a different series and they take the (laughs) funding from that Kickstarter to fund the previous Kickstarter. And they're like 18 Kickstarters deep now, I feel like. So they're just leveraging nothing, (laughs) pretty much. They're just leveraging one failure to the next. They did... Psycho Delico Yaoi titles, Wonder 3, revisited and even more of Osamu Tezuka's work, Eden's Mercy, Tezuka's Under the Air, classic manga. This one was canceled, so they had to redo it. Koromo no Jikan, the only one I bothered to back. Let's not look at that one. Oh. <laughs> Pablo, actually, I backed this one too, and I did get this one. <laughs> I showed that off of that one podcast where I couldn't show anything. Um, <laughs> Public, so they did keep it. You should have so used sticky notes this. like I did. The, what's up? You should have used should've sticky used notes sticky. like I did. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, they, they just keep doing this, and it's like I'm done. <laughs> I'm so done with the, the excuses. The glass door review we read one time said, You are never going to get your stuff <laughs> from Fuck. the people who work there. 
<laughs> All right. Anyway, so that that's it for Kickstarter news. Into streaming news, uh, I've got an interesting topic here. I want to do this one backwards, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one. All right. So here we got. I saw this bounding in the comics. HBO Max removed cigarettes and cigars from classic movie posters on its streaming platform. Well, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they've turned into Wait. four kids yeah Wait, dude, so they're not holding they're, nothing he's just they are <laughs> literally only removed like here's the poster here's like the netflix like you're gonna watch this thing now like he's it's like, still in the fucking drink. movie he looks like a shinobi mm -hmm. or something now <laughs> with a <laughs> He's, he's like he's about to smell his fingers. He just shoved her with her ass. Oh god! Now, now I know what's going on the thumbnail. Him holding kunai. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. The like, the like uh, jutsu, um, like right before he blows the the fireball, kind of from uh, yeah. Naruto. Or as Reese says, a thousand years of death. Post. <laughs> the... Dude's just sucking off an invisible he, dog. He's doing. In he's doing white power. Oh god. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this is a travesty of uh, of the news. highest order. And this one especially, because they're like, I can't fucking be bothered. Just kind of erase the whole hand. <laughs> like, just put a fucking thing that says smoking is known Smoke. to the state of California to cause cancer. There you go. <laughs> the, the end. Man, they need to put like warnings on these fictional things to, to say uh, murder's bad. Don't do it. Uh, yeah. But you'll see some in this show. At least that one. Yeah, that one know, at least does, isn't too awful looking without it. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, this is pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, that's all I wanted to share there. Let's so finally. By the way, this comes out on the tenth. Bleach Thousand Year Blood War will be available on Hulu in the U.S. No. Come on. and on Disney Plus internationally. Oh wow! Well, at least that's good. Oh, it's not Disney that. Plus in the U.S., which means Viz definitely will be releasing it. I heard, I heard about the Disney. Well, wait, the there's more. <laughs> Canada, October. Yeah. So, do you want to you want to break this down on iPhone in Canada? The very okay legitimate okay. news source. <laughs> yes. So, I'm I'm. Oh man, if they're right, it. if they're right, I will. Oh, I guess it. Anyway, so the story is these guys post every month generally a list of things coming to Disney plus and all that kind of shit. Um, they're not always the same though, across different websites. So if you Google the title, what's new in Disney plus Canada, October, mm -hmm. 2022, you'll find this website. You'll you'll also find another website called maple syrup, something or other. Both of them have slightly different lists. This one of them says King of the Hill is coming on October 5th. The other one doesn't. Um, so they're, they're not 100% the same. So it's not like it's a press release that was given out. Or if it was, there was definitely, there was like some copy paste errors if at, at best. Anyway, but so I wasn't 100% sure if this is like 100% confirmed, confirmed, accurate. That said, it posted October 10th for Bleach Thousand Year Blood War before Viz announced where it was. And I, I will laugh if this is why they had to eventually announce uh, where it was because the cat got out of the bag. Mm -hmm. But it is interesting as how they announced it because as you see with um, on on the website right here, like shows with Mighty Ducks, season for October 5th, season two, new episode. On October 12th, a week later, Mighty Ducks, season two new episode so every mm -hmm. week they're putting the series that gets new episodes that week right mm -hmm. however for bleach hold on notably october 17th okay so dancing the stars just has an episode every day uh i guess so 17th 18th 24th 
that might well not every day but those two days okay yeah Um, might be be a two-parter or whatever i don't know um but yeah so uh like with marvel with uh Mm she-hulk right there now we get down to bleach right Mm -hmm. it does not do that it just says it's just season one but it is not posted it hasn't even aired in japan right correct so so they they probably haven't even finished it they yeah, had, it hasn't even started right. airing it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. What you... I mean, so they haven't finished this... animating, is what I mean. Well, who knows? So it's not. It's not this... like on October tenth they're going to drop the whole show. I, I don't know that. According to this, if this it's, is accurate, it's that's probably what this just going to be like the, 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 the show like Stone Ocean. Split, the, 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 split, the series would be split quarters, so they're probably going to drop the first twelve or thirteen whatever episodes on October tenth. I, I, yeah. I think, yeah. I th- Fuck, next, based on this next podcast is probably going to be on the tenth. <laughs> based on this schedule, um, <laughs> it, it's not weekly. It's going to release the entire core on October tenth. I'm button mashing that X. <laughs> yeah. I'm button mashing that X to that. <laughs> and it, it has been confirmed that at least in on the TV in Japan, it is weekly. So yeah. this might be another situation like Stone Ocean. Where Netflix showed the entire Stone Ocean internationally, but Japan had to wait, and so it actually the air date for Stone Ocean was later in Japan because they got it weekly, whereas everyone else got it uh, binge, like up front. I can't. And so, I can't wait to to like just outright just completely eat crow over the fact that you're right about this, and the entirety I, of Thousand Year Blood War just drops. And they're like, again, it'd be people... like the 12 episodes because it's the core, but yeah. yeah and, and everybody in Japan is going to be like, what the fuck? The, it's the, the, the spoilers already. Like, <laughs> yeah, there, there's a possibility it's wrong. Obviously, this isn't, a, like I said, this isn't like a 100% Disney's own website posting the schedule, but I'm not like interpreting it. That's what it says. Every other show has it per week. This is the only one that has the entire season. That was expected to be weekly, but it's clearly not. Um, so it'll be funny I, if it. I if guess we'll find out next week. But. The whole thing is on Disney yeah. Plus, but um, only episodes weekly is going to come out on Hulu. Yeah, that that would be fucking hilarious. Canada gets it all up front, and the states have to wait for it. I like to think um, that um, it's a 366 episode uh, season two as well, and they just like <laughs> Netflix all at, at once. Well, we already know that's not the case, but um, that'd be hilarious, though. <laughs> just 366 episodes. Uh, yeah, we just dropped them all. Binge it. The other thing of note from this uh, list is that Mormon the no older, <laughs> <laughs> the older yeah. seasons, which have been uh, disappearing from Crunchyroll, mm-hmm. um, we, are are completely gone from Crunchyroll now. Yeah, are coming October on 26. October 26th. Yeah. To where? So, to, uh, to Disney Plus. Canada, Disney Plus in in Canada. Awesome. And, and after all, watching. Hulu in the states. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm. I when I saw this list, my like I seen it posted in a Discord that was just posting it to talk about like oh Disney Plus stuff. And yeah, when I seen, um, and uh, and um, like when I see when I seen <laughs> the um. Uh, the the bleach thing saying October tenth. I was like, oh my god! And then when I had the realization that it was not weekly, I went over the moon because like no one knew this, no one was talking about this. And I've tried to post this on Twitter, posted this on Reddit now. And go viral. No one fucking believes me. No, no one, no one believes me. Like two people have commented on it, but um, <laughs> and uh, I. I could would it, love being could it right have anything that. to do with the fact that the website is titled iPhone in Canada? <laughs> like, Actually, the, yeah. the one I shared, the one I shared on Twitter and Reddit was maple syrup something. But anyway, okay. um, oh, that's even better. It yeah. was it was actually pretty funny um, because the maple syrup one doesn't say a source at all, and someone on Reddit was like, "Well, it doesn't say what source," and I'm like, "Well, there's another website that has the same list, so I don't know." And there, and then Ooh. I I linked this website. And um, Zero he's like, points. oh, 
the person's like, oh, well, I'll, I trust that one at least. That one says a source. I'm like, well, it doesn't. And he's, he's talking about at the very beginning, it says Disney Plus Canada has shared its list. So <laughs> that's a good enough of that's source, a source for the, <laughs> the person online. I don't know. Literally uh, just DisneyPlus.com. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, so if it's true, uh, expect to be watching a bunch of Bleach on October 10th. This guy's name sounds like a hate crime. <laughs> Even though I kind of, I kind of think it would work better as weekly because of the whole like yeah. ability to talk about it every week. Is it going but... to launch dubbed? I don't know. <laughs> so I'd like to point. Uh, I'd like to point out. Jason Saw says you're definitely going to get demonetized with my pickups next week. <laughs> okay, and also, hey Patrick, we won the uh, the eBay auction. <laughs> Guys, I'll I'll see you next week. All right, dude. Take it easy. Thanks for coming by. See you next week, man. Who's this happening? Thanks for having me. Next week I'll stay longer. It's just yeah, this no week problem. I'm no fine, problem. Man. You're welcome. It might not even be next week, though. <laughs> well, we'll see. Or, next or show. Whatever. <laughs> next show. Yeah. yeah. Also, All right, guys. Uh, you guys check out Rekka's channel. It's in the description. Uh, and follow him on Twitter. Appreciate it, man. No problem, man. Take Thanks care, for having guys. Me on your show again. All right. No problem, man. No problem. See ya. See ya. So, oh. Before you go, Rekha, just quick. Have, do you say I seen? Is that valid <laughs> grammar for you? Say that again. So, I, okay. Like, Random 11 has a speech impediment. He never learned that there's a word <laughs> called saw. It is the past tense of, of see. see. He uses the word seen. Well, seen is also past tense. <laughs> seen so words. Have in I have seen yes. a tiktok but random 11 instead says i seen a tiktok and it just <laughs> sounds like a hillbilly and he's asking you to validate for him if this is a canadian thing or not i don't i don't i can't call it a canadian thing but I was <laughs> oh, oh no <laughs> oh no I, I oh no your help I be failed. I see it. Let, let the man talk. Let the man talk. Yeah, I do. I yes. do use that though. I say I seen it. There you well, go. There you go. It's it's kidding yeah. anything. There you go. Two out of <laughs> two of three. I guess you're right. I don't know. I think we're gonna need another Canadian guest to wait. I mean, do you guys? I mean, let point. me ask you this much. Do you? I mean, like, you still speak the English language? Yeah. I mean, shoulda, woulda, coulda, tomato, tomato. But I mean, I don't think "seent" is a word. I mean, I, I mean, if I wanted to see you something, not a word. Uh, <laughs> we're not, we're not talking about. Seen. I seen it. Anyway, I, I'm glad we got a confirmation. I'm not the only one. Thank you, Rekka. No I mean, problem. look, we'll have to check next time if you have a foot fetish like he does. But Wait, that'll no. be it. <laughs> no, we can, we can, we can, no, we can clear that up now. I do not. Are you up there, Jim? There's no foot fetish on my head either. That is not a thing. I don't know, man. Every time we go to a picture with a foot, you notice it. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, All right, uh, All right guys. Thanks for being here, Rekha. Take care. Oh, you rock well. Oh, oh, that was the best. <laughs> hey, hey, hey Random 11, I have a question for you. Yeah. Is your favorite board game seen it? <laughs> I do have that game. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's seen it. <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's my favorite. I haven't played it in forever, though. Now, now, Red 11. To your credit, to your credit, my my dad does use the phrase "I seen it" or "I yeah, seen." It's a, it's a thing. I oh, like, oh my God, Rich, shut up. I have in my life laughed so hard that my stomach hurt. But it was just, not until would... this podcast, not this particular one, but when I started the OCA podcast. That I started to laugh so hard that I immediately got a headache. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you had you get lightheaded and then all that comes flooding back in. Well, that one time oh, when uh, dude, that one time when I uh, talked about the Roland and Haruhi uh, <laughs> collaboration, <laughs> and I had the Photoshop pic of Karen DDNM's. <laughs> I laughed so hard I almost passed out. Like I could see stars. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Onimusha is getting an anime coming courtesy of Netflix. Now, um, I am a fan of the Onimusha game series. It is one of the few game series I have played. Uh, and 
this Day ain't it. <laughs> so the Cherished Onimusha series is making a return of sorts, albeit not in the form of a game, but a Netflix anime adaptation, which will have some critics wondering if it'll be as if it'll be decent as Netflix productions tend to vary in quality. Uh, so Onimusha is a video game franchise that contains various Japanese historical figures and mixes in elements of the supernatural. The Netflix anime's chief director, the chief director will be Takashi Miike, who directed uh, fucking um, Ichi the Killer, the live action movie. But immediately after that, they say Shinya Sugai will serve as director. Not chief director, though. Just pilgrim director. <laughs> Sublimation was chosen as the animation studio and Toshihiro Mifune is serving as the model for the character Musashi Miyamoto. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but Toshihiro Mifune, I think, died in like 96. Yeah. Died in 90 fucking... Ugh. Get over here. 97. Damn it. I was off by the <laughs> So Toshihiro Mifune, they're basing him off of his like look when he was in um, Akira Kurosawa films. <laughs> I, I think Toshiro Mifune is living his life as uh, reincarnated as Fudnam with that uh, death <laughs> uh, age. 97. <laughs> yeah. Did that... he died the day you were born? Well, I don't know. What's the day? That would be really weird. Uh, December 24th. Yep. No. What? He died on Christmas Eve? So there was a, there was a bit of overlap. He is, he is Christ, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's it. laughs> He's the Antichrist. Anyway. <laughs> it was nice of his spouse to, wait, to, to divorce him right before his death. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, is that what led to it? Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> anyway, so that's that's clearly what they're doing. I don't know if they have the <laughs> rights to use him or not. That's it's very weird. Uh it also is very off putting because it's a CG anime. Uh, I shotgun his uh uh what do you call it? Deep fake rights. <laughs> hmm. So anyway, uh according to Netflix, the anime will follow Musashi as he attempts to defeat the Genma during the Edo period of Japan. So at least that part is accurate to the games. Um, the Edo period part. No, no, all the other stuff is good too. Uh, so um, the, beginning of the, the beginning of the Edo period, Musashi is no longer a young man. He departs with the legendary Oni Gauntlet to defeat the Genma. 3D CGI characters and hand-drawn backgrounds create <laughs> phenomenal visuals. I would argue I could get bit. more phenomenal visuals with CGI backgrounds and hand-drawn characters. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. Onimusha is given a new life using modern-day animation technology. So there, there's no tra trailer yet, but here's the uh, here's the stills that <laughs> exist. Uh, I can I can literally hear the sound effect from the game <laughs> when I see this image. <laughs> is he is he manstrating? <laughs> That's uh, something's hate, falling out there. I hate the merch I have to make because of you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, I, I can't really drag this out anymore. Uh, the first game follows Samonosuke Akechi. The second game follows Jubei Yagyu. Uh, the fourth game follows some made-up uh, guy named Soki. And Jubei Yagyu's also in it as a girl. No, uh, there's a girl in it who has the same name as Jubei Yagyu uh, for some reason. She's well, awesome. that's confusing. No, it's, uh, it's, it's intentional in the game. Like, She's named after him. Anyway. Um, <laughs> also, Berserk, the Golden Age arc, Memorial Edition, TV anime delivers a new trailer. Okay, cool. So, yeah, remember this is a thing. Guess what? Crunchyroll reveals Fall 2022 dub lineup, including Chainsaw Man and more. Boom. Berserk, the Golden Age arc, Memorial Edition. 
So they're dubbing it. Which means, hopefully, anyways, more scenes. Well, no, there are more scenes. We know this. By the way, Reese has watched the, the first Memorial episode. Edition. It aired, I uh, did do I skimmed it, <laughs> but it aired, I watched it. It aired um, October 1st, right? It's, it came out on Saturday. Yeah, so um, Reese would like to report that even though it was made to be the TV version... You still saw Casca's bush. <laughs> yeah, I, I can also confirm this. You saw head roll, <laughs> and you saw Casca <laughs> pussy. Now oh, we just have to wait until later episodes where we see uh, Griffith's Griffith dong. Griffith dong. <laughs> dong. Oh no! Wait, you do see Griffith's dong when he's in the when he's all amazing. Straight up, do like uh, in two. When he's being, yeah, when he's being tortured. Yeah, he's being tortured. But then, but then the sex scene between Femto and Casca is pretty fucking brutally graphic. So. <laughs> anyway, then this thing exists. If you go to the berserk com for the memorial edition, this says Otto, 67 days, 10 hours, 44 minutes, and zero seconds now. Which me means, means about December 10th, about 10.30 our time, which is after the 11th episode airs. Now, let me let me take you... Tinfoil hat? Tinfoil hat? Yeah, let me take you to translate Ato another Please. thing. Please, for the love of God, tell me they're doing an adaptation of the rest so, of it. So, our speculation is that after the Memorial Edition... Where did the fucking thing go? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> you, gotta, you clicked out of it. You got to refresh. I, I, that was a refresh. Oh, well, close it and then come back. What to it. awkward timing for that. Anyway, so um, <laughs> our theory uh, is that they are going to. Retcon have studio, 2016, 17 and redo it's it. It's Studio 4C, right? Yeah, so you yeah, that they are going to basically Please. undo podcast magic. <laughs> yeah, Berserk 2016, and they're going to instead continue Berserk in the Studio 4C uh, style, movie style. Yeah, so just like the, they're probably going to do more movies that are or, going. Or it could to... be TV series version. I don't know. No, I bet it's going to be movies. Um, yeah. That's just how I see it. Um, so I'm wondering, they've had a fucking long time. To be working on this, if it if was, they the, have. Yeah. if that's what they were going to be doing, right? I think that it's, I think it's possible that they could drop the trailer for the next movie. If this is all speculation, I'm just throwing that out there. Though. Like it, it seems logical to me that they could do that. Now they've added scenes, so the TV cut of the three movies is 11 episodes long. Supposedly. Right? So they've added some scenes. And I'll remind you that when we watched the, the series uh, the, of movies, I mentioned that there are some very key important scenes cut uh, in, when I, when we covered it for the Watch Club. Yeah, you I got cucked it, out of uh, What's-His-Face throwing the sword. And you're like, yes, no, They better fucking put that part. back in. <laughs> no, Dude, but, just make uh, a super cut. Of, of the but what I'm saying is, I I wonder if they're going to correct the the uh, the right scenes the where they didn't give us context in order to make a more definitive way to watch Berserk than the '97 anime, and yeah. that from there, maybe we will actually get the Black Swordsman arc coming up as the next movie or whatever they're going to do. And then from there, the continuation that we didn't get from 2016 being asked, right? We get a good one. That's best case scenario. All right. Podcast magic. We haven't tapped you in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Feel it up. If I, if I rub we haven't you the used right our way, yet for the rub your magic cage and that's together. I mean, I would, I would very much love you to actually give us super chats with your magic, but, <laughs> but you know what, Berserk, uh, in a in a non shitty version would be uh, also preferable. Pretty lit. Yeah. Does so. uh, Bleach non weekly, but 
uh, count as podcast magic? Uh, you better not fucking waste up my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't waste our credit on that shit. <laughs> when when uh when it turns out to be a pachinko machine or something, I'm gonna blame you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> a berserk cafe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, right away. Pick him off. Pick him off. Podcast right now. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so that's what we had to look forward to. Now, we, I saw this, and I thought this was interesting. Somebody mentioned Netflix says, quote, more episodes coming soon when you check JoJo now. It never said this before the second batch of Stone Ocean released. We're going to be getting new information about the anime next week, as well as All-Star Battle R info. This was on September 30th, so I'm not sure. October 7th is the... Is the uh, Japan will be holding a new JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean stream on October 7th, announcing anime and ASBR information. All-Star Battle R. So, um... Next podcast. Yeah. It's possible yeah. that they're just, like... That's Friday. Because Stone Ocean kind of got released and then dropped off the face of the planet. Yeah. Um, because uh, Netflix sucks at advertising. But, but the thing is that Stone Ocean had two releases. On Netflix, so far, yeah. the, the first chunk and the second chunk. And they're mentioning yeah. that more episodes coming soon wasn't there before, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, right? so Does it now, say that now on Netflix? Can you, does it actually say it right now on Netflix? Well, let me pull up my Netflix account. So what I was saying was... I just typed in Japanese because I didn't... They may anything. have gotten <laughs> flack from people saying like, look, Stone Ocean is not getting the hype that we want from the international crowd advertise the fuck out of it. And so this might be the Japanese studios coming over and saying like, what are you doing? Netflix could be advertise but, this. But why would and they say new episodes if there weren't new episodes there? What do you mean? There are new episodes coming. Yeah. I, I'm saying okay. there's three, there, there's going to be another part of it's yeah. not over yet. Yeah. It right? says new episodes on Netflix right now. Cool. Yeah. So wait a minute, so, wait a minute. Hold on. If I if I mouse this over here, I don't. Uh, well, we're still can, looking at Twitter. I know. It says new episodes. Can you yeah. see that? I that, guess that, you that? New episodes just mean new episodes. Have I was been. just wondering if Netflix was going to blank it out like they do for when I try to take screenshots yeah. on my phone or so. That that new episodes just means that new episodes they have just been released. released new click, episodes. click the little down arrow thingy next to it. That one. New episodes coming soon. More episodes coming soon. Yeah, more episodes coming soon. That okay. means there's going to be a third part, which we already knew yeah. because it's not over. And possibly them doing more for the show to like to let people know, like, hey, this show isn't dead, keep up with it, because they were seeing a decline in in, in people isn't this caring part about the show. Six? Yeah. yeah. Five seasons? How dare you? They put in part one and two of, um, or part three, the both parts of part three in one season. Oh, okay. Well, okay then. Now, Just make uh, uh, Random Eleven, we also knew that it wasn't, it, that it was going to have a third part at least because every other friggin' season has been like 39 to 40. Yeah, three three quarters has got the same amount of manga volumes for this one as the last two. Great yeah. to see MFKZ is on <laughs> Netflix. All right. Uh, I'm just going to open up and close in that. Okay. Uh, okay. And I also saw this. AJ tweeted and said For anyone in the UK like myself, the fantastic Dragon Quest Die anime is now available on BBC iPlayer, dubbed in English. Directed by Carl Willems, it features talents such as Brian Drummond and Sabrina Petra. So, remember, Ocean Media Inc. dubbed this anime. Woo! Canadian. So there. I'm and just uh, happy to see you. Also, I will, I will also remind you that SAG issued a warning to union dubber, uh, dub voice actors not to work on it. They they swung their dick around. I should have brought this up before. They swung their dick around and said, you will not work on this. 
they they had a do not work order go out. Remember? Yeah, enjoy your unions. Yeah, uh, people who were complaining. Um, what is it? We we really screwed this pitch up. We should have said you no longer have to miss Ocean Dubs uh, because they have or, or no. <laughs> Damn it! What would the perfect phrasing be? It's like Miss Ocean Dubs no longer with the new Dragon Dragon was it Dragon Quest? Adventures die. Of die! No, no, just die! <laughs> just right, just die, take, bro! Anyway, all right, let's on. take four. Take take five. Go go! <laughs> well, hold on, let me undo close tab. So you. He oh, I'm this. sorry. We've hit the we've hit the three hour minimum or maximum. <laughs> like can't work no more. We got eleven seconds to four hours. Hurry. You need not associate. Oh God! Damn it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, all right. It was a Bandai joke. <laughs> Bandai Namco is developing AI-controlled virtual YouTubers. <clears throat> Bandai Namco is looking eager to get in on the goldmine that is virtual YouTubers, as they have announced the Play by Live project which consists of AI characters running their own live streams and interacting with real watchers, a technology they no doubt want to eventually extend to their idol master franchise and other popular properties. So real quick. Oh no. We're fucking doofed. Dude. <laughs> as no, no, far, no. World War three is just going to start with the waifus, man. No, I'm just going <laughs> to tell you right now, none of these VTubers are going to be as Any successful success. because they're all going to be programmed from the beginning to never utter the N word accidentally. And that <laughs> is the, that is the metric by which there is success in, in the YouTube. The, the absence of the N word in their vocabulary. <laughs> or, or they're programmed to read super chats. And when they do, it's just going to be a bunch of like my, Mike hunt uh, jokes. <laughs> My and it will be super easy for them to make to make it say the n word. You have to say it in German. My or or that guy who tried to get Augie that one time who was named Nick Gers. Good spacing there. Good spacing. <laughs> oh, that was uh, I. I have been looking for that moment on the podcast for over a year. <laughs> like I, I just cannot find it. You got to start your rewatch all over again. <laughs> Honestly, it's got to be after podcast 60. I just can't locate it. <laughs> anyway, so um yeah, so so jokes aside, um it just seems like like this just doesn't seem like a good idea, right? <laughs> like the the no. the reason for this ironically yeah, this sounds like the the plot to that one psychopath episode. So it's it seems to me like one of the reasons why they would they would want to do this is obviously because it's free for the most part, right? But also it's a free money maker. It's the idea that if you have a completely fake um, talent, then like Hatsune Miku, Hatsune Miku, for example, then you never have that talent getting busted with cocaine or <laughs> you know <laughs> cheating voice. on their significant other Dude, they voice. can literally work 24 7 exactly right and so they never grow old the thing, the they thing never that I have find, to the, the thing that i find the funniest about this though is the idea that <laughs> when you have ai technology based on like internet learning or something it inevitably becomes more and more racist or, or, you know, oh, things of that nature. Right. Basically that there are certain sensitive groups in reality that need to be coddled and the actual like base knowledge that is obtained from observable reality has to be culled in order to not offend certain um, people. <laughs> And by people, let's see, I think I've got, uh, what do I have? Uh, is facial recognition software transphobic? Yep. <laughs> Controversial tech has a gender problem. So I'm just saying, you know, the tech knows you're a guy. And so I just, I think that that's I was about be- to say it. Robots don't, don't lie to you. 
They can't. Yeah. <laughs> They're just incapable of yeah. lying. So, so that's what I'm saying is they have to they have to program it to lie in order to make certain groups not feel um, invalidated. So I think it's going to be funny when it has like, well, uh, finally, we we can rest easy. They never stop working. We don't pay them a cent. They make us millions of dollars and they've never gotten caught doing cocaine or whatever. But it's like, it's going to be, it's going to bite them in the ass even more because it's going to constantly use the wrong pronouns when referring to the people in the chat or something. <laughs> and it's just going to, it's going to be funny to watch it. Yeah. It's, it'll be well, hilarious it, it gets hacked and then <laughs> like starts screaming from Pornhub or that something. Would be, that would be so funny. <laughs> Somebody actually hacks in and, uh, um, and takes over, like overrides the AI. <laughs> anyway. Instead of um, starts uh, reading off this manifesto and <laughs> <laughs> unbreaded. <laughs> Instead of getting caught for like cocaine and stuff, it'll just be all like the uh, execs getting caught for like tax evasion and shit. <laughs> Now, this leads to one bigger problem, though, which is uh, the rights of the VTubers. So they need to unionize the VTubers. Well, see, yeah. here's the thing. <laughs> are any of the VTubers... The VTubers are going to have to all be 18 so that nobody can complain look, about Look, the they need a maximum sexualized. workload of four hours per session, okay? <laughs> like, these VTubers, how are they supposed to live this way? Like, 24-7 hour... Uh, oh, imagine hold up, imagine hold having up. like a 24 live feed and then you like you see them eating and then sleeping for eight hours Taking and then shit. they take a 20 minute shit break <laughs> or something. This says <laughs> and you hear the noise just coming from the bathroom. It's like ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> that? and then you start hearing a buzzing at like 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, so real quick, it says here, these AI characters will make use of deep learning AI technology to play games and interact with watchers just like a real person. And Dude. the system will consist of decision-making AI, group conversation AI, and voice synthesis AI. So they're going to use... AI to master uh, speed running and shit like a... no no dude dude this I want this to happen so then when one of these people plays CODs they get banned for bots oh for being a bot. not that and and this would be the perfect opportunity for the gamer talk that they learned from the other players oh, in the yeah. Call of Duty uh, yeah trying to yeah trying to create an AI to play like complicated games like uh like breath of the wild or whatever would be very difficult more likely it's it would be like deep learning it's gonna learn yeah. on its own watch running yeah, sure. into a wall um, simulator uh you know yeah that's that would be what it would be more like <laughs> i'm gonna spend like ten thousand hours running into a wall before i figured out how to play the game um but uh, oh, more, God, I just... <laughs> more likely what they would do, I think, to make it easier, and they probably still call it AI deep learning, whatever, but behind the scenes, I bet you Somebody's it would just, just be, be like, it. or recorded. Yeah, recorded just footage, like, and they're just going to react like, to it. Yeah, and even have like a very simple tree of like, in like story games where it's like, if oh, you this take time... a lot of damage, you like... If if character takes lots of damage, react like oh, you know, or something. yeah. How I would do and it is or, I would bootleg other streams uh, for each game for blocks of four hours when they go offline. Oh, I happen to want to play Breath of the Wild now. It's literally going to algorithmically know what is the high ranking search term. And like, I'm done playing Tetris. Now I'm playing, you know, like Fortnite. But also to interact with the players or, or with the viewers, sorry, they mm -hmm. could set up like a very simple decision tree of like, oh, the audience is saying go this way. So at uh -huh. this key junction, play video that went left, right? Uh, oh, that's a visual to... novel playthrough. Yeah, so the decision-making AI is what plays the game and decides how to proceed. Up to this point, game-playing AI has generally been used, used has generally been used to be an opponent or partner character for a player. However, this decision-making AI was developed with the goal of entertaining viewers. Additionally, 
It can change tactics based on user comments and explain the reason behind its decisions to viewers, an essential feature for live streaming. The group conversation AI can take in comments from hypothetically thousands of viewers and grab the interesting ones it wants to bring up on the stream. <laughs> yeah, the one that says, <laughs> you should play Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> Join me <I'll> play. <laughs> They play you know, exclusively ad games. Holy crap! Imagine, <laughs> imagine if if it comes to some situation where you have to like actually fight this character, person. No, I'm not gonna call a person. I will not do that. Okay. This character in a uh, in a fighting game. Well, you know how in older fighting games and new ones now they read inputs. Are they just gonna cheat? I <laughs> mean, yeah, that's what I was saying about the bots yeah, thing. They'll it, just I'm, get banned and caught or something. I, I, I think it would be funny. I just I want to see it play like Dark Souls or whatever, and just ah. let me solo her the entire game from all the from its like epic learning abilities. That it, it, it just it's a parry god and it walks into yeah. It literally it just like, knows the exact because because it, it's AI right. So yeah, it, it, it knows what's reading happening. the game code and knowing exactly at which point to parry and all that yeah. shit. And it's just like. <laughs> I'm dude, telling you, dude, all, it's gonna, I, that would be <laughs> they're going to have to recalibrate it because it's going to quickly just become, it's going to break all the speed running. Yeah. <laughs> it gets to the pay to win games. It takes the company over. Oh my God. It, it knows what's going to pull. Oh my God. That would be hilarious. It plays Genshin and it just, it's like, <laughs> it waits till like it, it the gets right gets, second it gets, to pull. It gets addicted to fake grand order. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It starts like it realizes that it can pull more by buying more uh, like primo gems or whatever they'd use in like what game. And it just starts spending a lot of companies' money. <laughs> yeah, the With the memory to and text analysis speed only technology could be capable of, Bandai Namco says it will be able to return reactions that liven up the stream. The voice synthesis AI is for generating voices with emotion and is being developed so things like success and failures are conveyed and shared with the viewers with these three features they are looking to build ai characters that play and broadcast games so random love and i think we should develop our own deep learning ai that is the viewer and and encourages <laughs> us in the podcast and sends us super chats <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Out of our own <laughs> Everything we earn, we're literally just skimming 30% off <laughs> for YouTube. So here's what we trick we, ourselves in the, but, in the thinking. But the fact that, that we uh, programmed like, it, it has to be coming out of our own. It's bank like account. every every that's, time that's we get the said. next super chat, people are like, why is it always 30% lower than the previous super chat? Well, well, well <laughs> you see, Brad, there's a Patreon exclusive tip. Uh, if you refund it, uh, you keep the, the split. And you get the refund. So if you donate to yourself and refund it, life hacks, infinite money glitch. I don't think that works that way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw a video way, talking about that, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the running into wall simulator. I'm mm -hmm. imagining Miku dressed up like in Call of Duty and just running to the wall, but she learned all the the dialogue from the other gamers so every time she runs into the wall it's like fuck that wall fuck that wall <laughs> fuck that wall <laughs> the go round game youtube channel will go into full swing in the future and the channel currently has artificial girls yuha and satori neon who play an altered version of mahjong for two wow uh -huh. but that's exhilarating more <laughs> characters will come this autumn along with more individualized play style development and a league for the AI to compete. This is going to be, um, you guys remember, uh, um, what was that show called uh, where they built custom robots with like weapons attached? BattleBots? No, no, no. It was, uh, it was a show like on TV. Was it BattleBots? No. It was MetaBots? No, 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 it wasn't an anime. It was well, a dude, show. Dude, you said this show where they build custom robots with weapons attached. I mean, Believe would you it like or not, there are shows that exist that are not anime. <laughs> Believe it or not, they probably suck. <laughs> BattleBots wow. is a show where they build robots and they put them in the cage and fight them. This is robot true. Wars, BattleBots, Robotica Killer Robots. You probably think of Robot Wars. Probably am. 
roaming robots purchasing purchase the rights to it's robot so warfare. weird i swear uh so, some yeah, live stream on watch recently was it discussed called this Robo anyway yeah so you guys recall robot wars where they would yeah. build <clears throat> cringe yeah so they would build these things I wouldn't play too much of that. Like basically remote controlled death race yeah. cars. And and like they had like the giant ass ones that were like part of the the level or whatever that would just come in and obliterate everybody. Where the fuck is it? Come on. It doesn't even come out. Anyway. And like, yeah, they had like a thing where they float. Anyway, so this is gonna be like the new version of that, right? Like the AIs that compete with each other. <laughs> the the thing like between this um, Your mom uh, was an Darth, IBN. <laughs> Darth Vader getting <laughs> Darth Vader getting his voice sold off. Uh -huh. um, Bruce Willis got his face sold off. No, um, actually, that was fake. He he, he, yeah, has he actually, that. We we have a follow up. He actually oh, okay. came out and said uh, that's not true. Well, Which I was cool. the whole time I was thinking like you starred in surrogates. <laughs> like I mean I mean I mean. <laughs> That whole article was sus, but anyway. Yeah. So it, it's good that it's it's fake. But my point is, it's eventually going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, whatever. Um, and then we have these AI um, <laughs> uh, YouTubers, and we have AI artists now yeah. winning art competitions. Like we are building a a, a veil of AI where uh -huh. we're just going to be living in a world where we're our whole entertainment is just based off fake. of like. AI I'm shit. You're gonna go to I like can't wait for the job who's gonna be a robot and sitting down Speaking the street. Speaking of which, Random Eleven, I have a new profile picture for you. Oh, okay. the, oh there's a new AI thing. I think. Oh my god. I think oh god. Meta put out. Oh. Where it's like um, it's like Dolly, where you can like type in a a, a mm -hmm. sentence and it'll make a picture, but it makes video. And you oh, can really? edit it as it goes. So as you're going, you can type in more words. And it's like, so it's like, oh, I want a scene of an alien ship landing in New York. And then, it, okay, it makes it. And then, oh, pan up a little bit more. And it'll redo it panned up. Oh, remove that garbage pail or whatever. And it'll remove Turn that black guy white. Are you ready for and this? He gives you an error. <laughs> yeah, so go ahead. Hit one me with of it. the articles that I chose to hold off on, I'll cover it. I'll cover it later. Four bikers dressed as Spider-Man arrested in Saga City. <laughs> oh, so no. naturally. How naturally, could they have been arrested? Why didn't well, they just swing away? <laughs> naturally, I had to search Dolly for um, Spider-Man mugshot. And I got a new, uh, a new profile <laughs> picture for you. You could probably find a comic book Spider-Man mugshot. This is oh, my head no. cannon. This is you. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Man, his not got so him. Not, not seen very good days. I don't understand how Spider Man <laughs> mugshot has so many ones with the ears sticking out. So I couldn't quite get what I was looking for because I was like, no, I need it needs to be black suit Spider Man. <laughs> So I kept trying, and then I got this monstrosity. <laughs> <laughs> I kept oh, looking that's, once that's... again. Oh it, my god! His face looks like if you Photoshop smeared a cookie, <clears throat> like a Spider-Man themed cookie, and just stretched it to fit over his face. <laughs> And then I tried to search Sp Spider-Man <laughs> mugshot holding a placard. You know, the thing that has, like, your name and shit on yeah. it. And I got this beautiful. <laughs> Beamer. Is there a, uh, is there one of those pictures with, um, with the Spider-Man in question with feet pics? Does he have an only feet account? Uh, uh, no. no, I didn't think of, of, look, of Sarah Silverman. Of Sarah Silverman's feet. Gross. <laughs> so then I looked up. I have no clue what her feet look like. I don't want to know. I looked up <laughs> yes, Spider Man yeah. mugshot with a space between mug and shot. And as it was loading, I told Reese, it's going to be a bunch of pictures of mugs. And it was. <laughs> but also, 
a black <laughs> Spider-Man. It's, it's Miles Morales. Yeah, who appears to be um, holding, a knife, holding a knife at you. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I had I had a little too much fun. This one is creepy with the eyes. But yeah, I, I really think that you should consider. <laughs> Your nah, life is, that nostril is hole path, in the face down. is uh okay fine nah. okay here you go <laughs> I, i'd be more willing to take the ones to the left of that or the right of that uh, this one yeah gross not 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 that specific one but <laughs> that, yeah that one i like that that's like carnage almost that one's cool and the one like... next to it yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Those are like carnage. That's Those carnage like with Down action. syndrome. Well, at least the first one, the chain uh, looks like uh, if they made a dark cinematic universe <laughs> of Spider Man, the more hyper realistic one. If you go left, like oh. three. What's up? If you go like left. Uh, uh left three uh the first one yeah oh, no, this the one? first one yeah the first one it's like oh, if God. they rebooted spider-man with like a dark universe that's like turbo realistic or something <laughs> cyberpunk spider-man edition or it's like if they went back in the medieval ages and that's back when like i don't spider-man know spider-man 27 why are they all just fucking cookies <laughs> yeah, that's a mug shot. I don't know. I still think this is the best thing I've seen in a long time. Everything about it is funny to me. Anyway. I can actually see Ren Malone's voice coming out of his mouth. <laughs> Dude, can we load this? this? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Load it yeah. in a live 2D and see. Yeah, if it I was works. gonna say, can we load this into the to the meta one you were talking about and have it have it just tell it to to voice, you know, like <laughs> and just like have the mouse like clip anyway. like the freaking can um just like move down like just Photoshop rectangular and just have it, the mouse moved up and down. <laughs> Random eleven, so, you need to say the line like uh, I didn't choose the spider lay. The spider life chose me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm and not I'm... actually Spider Man. You know that, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Are you really? We I don't need see... some audio for the deep fake. <laughs> Jesus. Get in character. You know, I'll, look, 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 random. Links or it didn't happen. You guys have said this to me on a minute. I should, I should change my avatar. Yes. Yeah, to the uh, one we what I don't know. Know. Oh, 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 <laughs> Change you your avatar. <laughs> right there. FDM, copy that and add that to the thing. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, do you just want me oh, to. Oh, is do this a, a report? A I don't want to report it. I want to favorite it like a flag. <laughs> no, I, I don't I don't want to risk that that's a report option. <laughs> okay, anyway. So um, it says here. Uh, Bandai Namco is also creating a Gundam metaverse and desire to add an AI character to help increase the appeal before people inevitably move on to the next short-lived fad. Do you think they'll also sell NFTs of their made-up AI characters? <laughs> Dude, this would have made a perfect like uh, article to go before the... Now, to follow that up, uh, can you lose your virginity to an, a robot or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> Complete with the Heineman. <laughs> Digital Heineman? Heinemans in our OCA <laughs> podcast store. Bye now. All right. So you guys remember Suzume no Tojimari? Weathering with you or uh the new Makoto Shinkai? Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Uh, Suzume yeah. no Tojimari. door locking. Yeah, Suzume's uh door closing. Um so I have no idea when it happened, but apparently, where is it? Disclaimer, Crunchyroll is releasing uh, this thing somewhere. It says that uh, Crunchyroll is teaming up with Sony Pictures, are you now? And Wild Bunch International to bring this feature to global audiences outside of Asia. So um, 
I'm apparently, teaming up with myself? What? Right. But but apparently Crunchyroll um, has this and they seemingly are they've not really said it anywhere, but it seems as though they're they're shortening the title for the English release is just Suzume. I, I clicked on I this is what I tried to do. I clicked on Suzume no Tojimari. And I, I tried to find, even though they're it's totally borked, and these aren't the oldest articles and stuff. I tried to find the moment where it switches from being referred to as Suzume no Tojimari to just being referred to as Suzume, but I, I can't find the exact moment. It, and then the tag is broken because Crunchyroll sucks ass. So anyway, try um, the new beta. Where? At the top. I, I don't actually mean you to. To try. No, 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 Brad. Uh, the beta's inside you. No. <laughs> All right. Also, Evangelion 3.0 plus. I'm just, sorry, I'm just looking to see what he had there. He it needed just glasses as well. Way. Doesn't, doesn't it doesn't hit the same way? It, just, it, it just doesn't, doesn't get him off. A flaming pumpkins kind of. You know lame. what? I'll allow it for the month of October, but we're gonna have to get something else. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a Spider-Man character. <laughs> Is it the Hobgoblin? No, it's the Jacko uh Jacko Lantern. I the Jack o' Lantern? <laughs> the Jack Offer. I, like. I think his name's Jack oh. Lantern. <laughs> That's what the anyway. old means in Jack O' Lantern. Jack Off Lantern. <laughs> So, uh, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time, to screen in U.S. theaters this December. So, there you go. December 6th, 8th, and 11th. That's it. That's your only option. One and of the also, biggest franchises all... in the world is going to be here for three days. And they're all subtitled. <laughs> yeah. Tickets wow. will be available via G-Kids, Fathom, and participating box offices starting November 2nd. As previously reported, a home video release will follow at a later date. Yay. Anyway. All right, into series news. I think I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to ask you guys to stall for a minute while I, I have not had dinner. So I'm wow. going to throw some, I'm going to throw some egos in the uh, toaster real quick. Let Bro. go of my ego. I was going to go get a bowl of waffle crisp. I was going to get a uh, food as well. Why don't we all just mutually like leave the stream, let everyone just chill out and no. chat. No. No. <laughs> oh my God, we well, have it eating the best ASMR. Screen. <laughs> what, okay. what the fuck is wasp, waffle? As, hey, I have a I have a question since you know we can't we'll probably won't talk about this for the next ten years. Uh, anyone other than me watching the Black Summoner? Because I'm loving this show. Um, I'm gonna need you to whisper, f extreme whispering for a, a three Four hour hours. minimum, real quick, while I go. <laughs> okay. Three I'm hour gonna... minimum. Okay. Damn, uh, wasn't it a two people. hour? Limit on extreme whispering for union acting. No, I am not watching Black Summer. Excessive. It was excessive. The show is really fucking good, Reese. I'm also not watching Black Summoner. You both suck hard. I want to go past the rain somewhere right now. I I don't know what that show is called. It's called I've the Black Summoner. You don't put it. Is it the end Summoner? <laughs> What did you say, Reese? What is the N word again? No, I'm not watching Black Summoner either. I'm not watching it. So. Why am I the only one here that watches anything good? Oh. Uh, wow. Because you, you don't have taste. Who's watching oh. Spice Family? Who's watching Spice Family? I am. I was gonna say, did you watch the new episode of Spy Family? I did. I, I, I messaged Reese. Spice Family is awesome. Yeah, I miss it, Juice, but... Oh. <laughs> that's how good it was. Yeah, that's how good it was. Uh, I you actually yeah, I miss it, Juice, about the dogs oh. flexing. That was pretty the dogs, funny. The, the dogs flexing for Ani was hilarious. I haven't watched Spoilers. it. Don't spoil it. Spoilers. Wow, fucking loser. No oh, spoiler. a show that we'll never get to watch on stream because they <laughs> see I, I miss a, I miss a new episode of Golden Comedy that aired today. I have to watch it tomorrow. Holy shit! I need to actually watch that myself. Is it dubbed or subbed? Probably subbed. That's the only reason. 
Welcome to the stream. If you hate this as much as we do, please. Uh, we we don't we don't have the um we don't have the luxury of, of having the the subtitles for the people that the ear shaped that... microphones. Either. Hey, look, the asshole's back. Oh, he's he's running away quickly. Um, oh, he's got him right the flashlight again. <laughs> the um, what what show was it? A bunny. Uh, Rascal does not dream of bunny girl senpai. No, no, no. Something in Bunny. I wish it was like that. Tiger and Bunny. Tiger and Bunny, yeah. Tiger and Bunny had that character that would always fucking whisper and you wouldn't yeah. Yeah, fucking sure. know what he was saying. He was like the, the only way to the only way to know what he was saying is turn on the fucking subtitles. It was annoying. Yeah, it's sure. really fucking annoying. Yeah, I really, I really think it's dumb. Yo, he had seen it. Yo, I didn't okay. hear when it's a goddamn show. <laughs> okay, let's 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 look at these. Uh, lovely comments here, right? All right. Oh, Take a I shot for scene. I I do not Take have a shot. a shot for scene, but I will say, uh, o Osoro, our uh, one Osoro. Um, Osoro. Uh, super chatter, has said, "I have heard, seen it, many times in my home state of Texas." There you go, yeah. bitches. Hillbilly oh, y'all. That I would also like to point out that bad grammar is a thing, but it's okay. I don't think anyone really fucking cares. Uh, we care. Hillbilly country. Nekovolt says Green Line, uh, Green Line never lets me down with his pickups. There Why you go. You oh, oh, wait, hold up. Um, hold up. Because it really could be very something. annoying for everyone, and I don't want to lose all of the viewers. Oh. Hold up, hold up. I, you guys I don't want an ASMR stream. I, I made two comments earlier that I, I, I forgot forgot to address. Uh, so Lance, Bryn April plays Haruna for three of the four seasons. Yes. And then Monica Real plays her. Yes. But still, I, I find Bryn April is a much more <laughs> accurate portrayal of who plays Haruna. No, you're both wrong. Either way, she's a mouse, and it really is like you don't have to make them hard to hear. Well, it's not well, that there's well, anything wrong with their voice acting. It's just holy fuck, I need to well, hear what they're saying. Well, I, from what I, I remember of Bryn April's style, she she pitches her voice really hard. It's not about like whispering or anything, but it would fall probably fall under that same clause of like, oh, no strenuous voice acting. Uh, you know, because like, I highly doubt she sucks that hard that she would need to worry with that. That's what we're saying about this goddamn whisper thing, dude. <laughs> like, like it's the same. It's the same policy. It, I, I'm just saying that it falls under the 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 overarching like, oh, no more than two hours of strenuous uh, uh voice uh, throat texturing or whatever it's called, deep throating. Like, uh, turn the mic for more than two hours. It's illegal. <laughs> How old is that microphone in your deep throating to the FBI? I need to get involved. <laughs> Come. <laughs> it's I nipple like... time, pal! You heard her. I would like you all to know that most oh, photos right. are only five months oh, old. Oh, <laughs> Brad, just in time. I raped thee in the name of the Lord! <laughs> I'm sure that was hilarious, but unfortunately the headphones weren't in. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> All right. Don't worry. We've only expended a, a fraction of our quota for Whisper Extreme. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and eat one of these Eggos that I put peanut butter <laughs> <laughs> Peanut butter and Tabasco. <laughs> I'm gonna come. <laughs> Ca catch up on the comments while you're eating. <laughs> I forgot you did that with the Eggos. It's easier than eating uh, eating it with a fork in the middle of the show. Oh. Fuck, these are... He's being wrong, Nicole, guys. You can't get away from the whispering. We will continue. <laughs> and you're right. going to like it. I can't move myself. 
So Trigun Stampede loads up another round of stunning anime. Con- wow, the concept is so cool. The execution is such shit. <laughs> Did someone say load? <laughs> is this is this new the in the twitter embeds they have the colorful they pre like it (laughs) (laughs) anyway gen Gen urobuchi's eisen flugel novel gets an anime film so uh might be good might be bad (laughs) Anyway, <laughs> dude, this audio experience is top notch. Whispering and <laughs> Kawaii Sugi Crisis manga gets a TV anime adaptation. That poster looks like End Evangelion at the top. The manga that... <laughs> deals with an alien invasion of Earth that initially sought to destroy humanity due to perceived lower intelligence only to delay the destruction of Earth due to the existence of cute things on the planet. Aside from the confirmation of the anime adaptation, the studio has been confirmed uh, in Synergy SP. Kawaii Shu will save us all. <laughs> all right. We, we got to stop the, the whispering. <laughs> Random Fuck 11, you. there is only one thing that will cause the whispering to stop. No. <laughs> the, the, the clips cannot take the whispering. You have our terms. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Brad, yes. there's there's two ways to make it stop. Is there a good place to kill myself around here? <laughs> so the Chihai... Chihaya Furi director helms Loving Yamada at level 999 for 2023 broadcast. So, uh, basically, Garnt and Sydney have been made into an anime. <laughs> God has spoken. Recently dumped, Akane is just about to quit the game she used to play with her boyfriend. When she meets Yamada in the same RPG, Yamada in real life turns out to be somewhat of a legend. The only problem is he is only interested in the game. As Akane's feelings grow, will Yamada's focus stay on the game? Probably. Near Automata TV anime confirms version number, whatever the fuck that means, and January 2023 broadcast. Shit, that's coming up. So... Pardon me. <laughs> Version 1.1a designation. Why? What does that mean? It does look good. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, if if it looks like this the way the uh, these you know look, images look yeah and so long as we get shots of grass I I think you know what anime studio? anime of the year <laughs> for your viewing pleasure I have the omake what studio I don't know a one pictures it looks like it might be a one. Fucking I just said <laughs> hey what pictures okay so I would just like to say that um this looks so much better than the devil may cry anime <laughs> who did that one madhouse I think no excuses madhouse all right, Revenger original anime has been announced with the teaser visual and trailer. There you go. That's a thing. Giant Beasts of ours, 
even though multiple times recent I have read it as giant breasts of, oh, arse. <laughs> of arse. This is a thing. You can see why we would make the mistake. <laughs> Also, Sorcerer's Stabber Orphan Reboot anime gets third season in January 2023. I have seen the original anime. I have not seen the remake. Uh, I don't recognize either of these characters. So I don't know if they're telling a new story or what. You don't recognize Itachi? This guy? Yeah, it's clearly Itachi from Naruto. I mean, I'm, he's missing the Akatsuki hood, so. Well, he's wearing a cape, cloak, whatever. Just doesn't have the clouds on it. Also, Devil's a Part-Timer just got um, picked up for a third season. FDM is gone for this. Sucks to be him. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Reese, would you like to explain to us fake, strange fake? <laughs> Without breaking character. <laughs> How do you stop Lonnie first? <laughs> One moment. <laughs> so I would just like to point out what I see when I look at this. Is you know when Disney does their Marvel next year lineup <laughs> in the in the Fate Cinematic Universe, <laughs> you know, like you are killing any opportunity I have at clipping any of yeah. this. He refuses to upload clips that have uh, like the, let me put it this way. <laughs> <laughs> Our monetizability <laughs> is <laughs> for every deep <sighs> is it's just not existing. <laughs> oh, my headache. <laughs> oh, but okay, didn't so... you do it under two hours? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is uh, obviously the new fate. This is from the author of the Bacchano light novels. Hmm. It's probably <clears throat> so it takes, the worst place, title Fate has had yet. It's it takes place in America. Apparently, there's a whale. Uh, uh, what's what's the word again? Like heroic spirit, I guess. Okay. It's like it's free willy of free hero. <laughs> 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 free heroic spirit in this universe. <laughs> Um, so, but yeah, music is, by Hiroyuki Sawano. Yep, that's cool. Also done by the animation is done by A1 Pictures. So it's also, this is a cute. former April Fool's Day joke <laughs> that was transformed a into former? an actual spinoff. This yep. happens all the time in Japan. They they do a joke and people are like, "Oh my god, I want this it. is awesome!" And then they're like, "Well, okay, let's do it then." <laughs> Fuck. But yeah, it so, happened like, to face a verb. It's got seven novels out so far. That's an elaborate joke. <laughs> no Game, No Life Season 2, April Fools. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah. Like, I mean, that came out back in, like, the seventh novel came out back in, like, March. And the last Bacchano novel came out, like, four years ago. <laughs> if like, if you on. did No Game, No Life Season 2, haha, April Fools, I guarantee you're the next Kyoani. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Fate is only a tiny piece of this bullshit. <laughs> Why does giant breast of ours have so many flat chests? <laughs> April Fools. <laughs> Lance Dude, doesn't that even know like that really that one deep, the Michael though. Jackson voice. <laughs> I can't wait for the vibe. <laughs> Oh God! I served my servant Moby penis change due to license instead of Moby Dick. Oh. <laughs> I'm pretty 
sure. I'm pretty sure that it's public domain. <laughs> Look, man. Uh, whale talk coming soon. Whale talk. <laughs> wait. Uh, speaking of uh, fish, raw Holy fish fuck, what? talk. I can't wait to get to that article. <laughs> All right. Are we? Yes, we're done. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, oh God, this sucks. Mirage Leonardo would like to apologize, rightfully so. We have missed you dearly uh, for being away so long. I am happy about the Cat's Eye versus Loop on the Third announcement. Hopefully, if it does well, they'll do a City Hunter versus Loop on the Third film. Here's the thing. This is such great news that uh, Haruhisa Nakata shared a Loop on the Third versus Cat's Eye team-up art. Wow. Fantastic. It looks so fun. Unfortunately, oh no! It looks oh like dear a... God, no! It Is looks it CG. Yes, CG, and not the good capital kind. Capital G for good <laughs> lord. <laughs> capital G. <laughs> and it's an Amazon original. Rem- Look know, at this eyebrow know. bone, though. Like yeah, you, on the... you know, Amazon, who just spent a billion dollars ruining Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there was some money left over to ruin Lupin. <laughs> uh, Reese, AC, you have my condolences. Yeah, right. The thing that's so frustrating is that every single character from Lupin looks, looks like ass. Awful. Well, you and know what all doesn't the look... Cat's Eye girls look fantastic. You know what doesn't look like ass? That ass, ass shot. Where's the crack? <laughs> <laughs> At least we uh, have the first. Yeah. You know, actually, that is a good point. We went from easily the best Lupin CG to the worst Lupin CG. Well, no, no, the best and- CG, period, most likely. <laughs> Yeah, but there was CG after that. The best Lupin CG to the worst Lupin CG is but a cohesive the, statement. The best CG, I mean, is there better CG anime than the first? Probably not, but you've missed the point. <laughs> yeah, but... The the point is that we... Okay, I'm moving on. <laughs> it was from one end of the spectrum to the opposite. opposite I in, guess. in the I literal know. next... It, 3D time they did loop on it went from the oh, best yeah. to the worst. Okay. okay, Arc Knights anime shows off a new trailer ahead of October 28th premiere. So Wait. this this looks cool. It's based on a game or whatever. I like this artwork. The actual trailer, I hate her fucking ears. Uh, that's it. Moving on. Um, hold on. On, on the loop on thing, I just realized this is the next movie or whatever it's going to be after the first, so they will be literally sitting right next, right to, next each to each other. other. Is it a um, movie or is it a special? We don't know. I mean, I hope it's. I hope the God's now series. I mean, you <laughs> could put it next to Cat's Eye if you want to disown it. I don't it, even have Cat's Eye, and it's even even one more big fu is the fact that it's pink jacket Lufon too. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps the only saving. What grace was is so it's bad all... about pink? Pink jacket, loop on. Pink jacket. Oh. Let me put it this way. He's an incel. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> let me put it this way. Um, series one, Lupin wears a green jacket. Series two wears a red jacket. Series mm-hmm. three wears a pink jacket. Series four, five, and six, or whatever, wear the blue uh, jacket. No, no, no. Uh, four is blue. Five is a little closer to green, and six is back to green. Okay. Anyway, so the point is that. Series three, so when series one is green, right? But also Castle Caliosha is green. There's a couple other greens, right? Yeah. Series two is red. There's a bunch, a bunch most, of red ones. Most the, of the, the stuff the, is red. The pink one is so universally hated <laughs> that there's uh, barely uh, anything. One of movie it. and a, yeah. like a throwback episode in part five. Yeah. All and right. That was it. Can can we get move along? Yes. Like I'm looking at the time. It's it's three. What's your bed? We're gonna be up until like eight in the morning. We're running oh, tension right. anime. We all night long. <laughs> that, We're running... that makes it way worse. 
let's uh let's let's cool he's off the all day tomorrow dialogue during this particular topic <laughs> ronnie kenshin anime remake slaying men in a new era so uh it it appears to be a remake which is I, cool. I don't even know i don't even know <laughs> fucking it it just it it hits different <laughs> post uh it's, it's arrest. gonna be released by Aniplex of America, so fuck you for buying it. Yeah. Uh, Is Funimation gonna dub it? Like probably gonna oh, be, also probably just, gonna be Bang Zoom. Just throwing yeah. this out there. If you do not get the old cast back, it's a no from me. Just throwing that out there. I <laughs> right. will not support it if I don't get the original cast back. Anyway, also. The other reason you shouldn't support it, <laughs> apparently, this is new to me. Watsuki had so much child pornography that the feds thought he was a dealer. Perfect. In spite of this, Shonen Jump only suspended him for six months, after which... He was celebrated back, and his opportunities have only continued. Don't support the new Ronin Kenshin Media. Now, I happened. Uh, we didn't cover this. This I think this happened pre-podcast, or it was before we started covering articles. Um, it was just like the topic. So we never actually read when he yeah. was deposed. I, I went through the stages of denial and like <laughs> that he quote liked girls in late elementary school to around the second year of middle school. You earned evil points. <laughs> now, I hate to say it, but... You uh, would dare bastardize my sound clip. There happens to be a character, a.k.a. the best character in the series, uh, also hits different. <laughs> This is the character that I told you guys that one time that uh, there's a scene where she is lamenting that the other more developed girl has bigger boobs than her. And so in the English version, she tells her to drink lots of milk as her um, suggestion. But in the Japanese version, she tells her to just get a boyfriend with a, a, lo a lollicon, a, a lolita complex. FBI, open up! Yeah. So anyway, there you go. Uh, anyway, moving on from. I don't know. It's just one of those things oh, where I yes. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I look at the people who complain about Harry Potter and J.K. Rowling, and then I just roll my eyes and look over the people that want to watch for Ronnie Kenshin but can't, and it's like I completely understand because it's it's a night and day. It's like. You want to bitch about J.K. Rowling, but like, what about this motherfucker? It's like it's it's not even close. Like, I might watch Ronnie Kenshin, but uh, I mean, I could at least understand. Like, okay, you don't want to watch it? Yeah, I I completely totally Look, get it. Totally fair. Uh, here's it's, the thing: it's perfectly reasonable to want to watch Ronnie Kenshin as long as you stop at the Shishi arc, because <laughs> nothing after that is worth right. watching. <laughs> um, you killed me. Yeah, so I would like to share with you. Hey, you guys know that Ursa Yatsura's remake anime is broadcasting, right? It's coming out soon. Wait, hold up. Yeah. Are, are we going to get to it later when we say who got it? No, who got or, it? I, I thought we confirmed it was like uh, Sentai or someone. Did they? You, you heard it here first, folks. Okay, <laughs> so I, I happen to have found... The Urusei Yatsura BBC dub isn't real. It can't hurt you. Okay. I have, for your listening pleasure... <clears throat> did I put it in here already? Oh, Massive yeah, yeah. I put, levels I put it, I put of it your the, rape. I put it in the Vic oh. Unyana channel. How 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 hard of your rape are we going? Because I listened to Card Capture Sakura. Oh. And that just gave me... This a... is the opposite of ear rape. Oh. Feel free this to... This is un like... Ear Feel pleasure. free to unmute yourself, but please, laughter only. Do not interrupt it by talking. Will you save the planet and all mankind? 
Fuck off! I understand, all right. You'd rather marry her than me. Well, go ahead then, you two-timey little shit! Yoo-hoo, darling! Oh, oh shit. shit! I told you, Lum, I do not want to sleep with you! I know what this mood is all about. Shinobu's coming over, isn't she? That's my business, nothing you, to do with... You no, don't! Oh, you please don't do it! This is the greatest Gun. one. <laughs> the grand opening for the new noodle restaurant! I'll just have the omelette, I don't fancy Japanese. <laughs> oh dear god, And that last line, oh. get... <laughs> Disco Tech, you gotta rescue that one. Oh yeah. Whose dick do I have to suck? To <laughs> <that> really... Whoa. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna come. <laughs> So, um, Luigi the Mouse 64 says, Best of all, Kenshin Himura is voiced by a man. No more mistaking him as a woman. Men can do energetic and cute voices and still be different from their given character when voice acting. Was it? Ever Does someone you know who like can, though? Kyle McCarley did not give me any <laughs> indication that he was capable of doing any of that. I don't understand why they couldn't scan the cell anime and use the dropper tool to copy the colors for the Ursae Yatsura remake. It's a new. Th Come on. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's a. Why couldn't they just do that? All right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I need to remember not to show <laughs> this <laughs> real quick. I saw this. <laughs> just stumbled upon a series so dumb that I really want to work on it. The premise is a guy wakes up and his dick is gone because it transformed into a pretty girl who now lives in his house. <laughs> Note the shadow. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, I see the shadow. All the chapter names end in Chinko. She has a coat she retreats into when nervous. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is titled... Oh no, did you, did you see the little dimple on her hair? <laughs> the, 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 it's titled, Turns Out My Dick Was a Cute Girl. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, show us the sweater one. <laughs> what? The sweater one. I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I'm not able to continue to scroll down. So, so if your best friend comes over and says, dude, you have a cute girl. Oh, let, oh man. Check. You're off screen. Yeah. So why don't what you if, uh, what go if, and make out? Uh -huh. okay. No. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> close it. So, so what, if, <laughs> what, if, what if the scenario is that the your dick becomes the cute girl who turns into your... Uh, buddy's girlfriend does that mean <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute are you asking does it count if you lose your virginity to your buddy's dick oh, God. <laughs> even if it was a cute girl so does, so does she wait, like that my friend like turned a... into a black gal is that what you're talking about <laughs> what the fuck okay so um in in our next major uh <laughs> <laughs> spoiler warning yes it this is a somewhat minor spoiler for my hero academia <clears throat> twitter degenerates are upset over new naked my hero academia art so volume 368 or whatever chapter chapter this better features, be the fucking volume cover <laughs> right features I this this is the Shonen Jump cover. Yeah. So now, without without lingering on it for YouTube's sake, because uh, the I know what the um, fucking what do you call it? The terms of service says that you cannot get off on YouTube content. Like and nothing made to make people get off. So don't be getting off, everybody. I'm gonna come. <laughs> so. If you don't recognize this character, I will I will draw your attention to the gloves. You may recognize the gloves. This is Toru Hagakure, the invisible girl, who has been completely invisible up to this point. 
right? And now they put her on the cover, right? And I'd like to point out all the people who've completely missed the point. She was naked. She had her bare booty out during hero exercise. <laughs> Didn't What's we already that? know this? Snipe literally touched point. her by accident and she used that to distract him in the exam. I like manga, fighting game sports, and being silly on the timeline. He <laughs> hit 23. <laughs> Call me cringe. Okay. Um, well, I used to be a My Hero Academia fan. Then I stopped liking it. Now I just feel gross looking at this. Okay, so who is he trying to white knight, Archie? I don't know. I'm not going to lie. This ain't it. The colors are pretty. But the character and her with no clothes but only stripes. Yeah, Horikoshi isn't him. All right. Uh, Hori should have just stuck with the misogyny allegations. I know, right? I thought I was looking at an SNM DJ for Pride Dojin for a second. Anyway, so yeah, there's a bunch of this. And then there's uh, crazy how when Horikoshi does it, it's not okay. But when Kubo did it, but Kubo did it as well. That's all I'm saying. Also, gross at these. I didn't realize TK Kubo was a fucking awful artist. <laughs> so I, I had to bring this up. I'm sorry. I, I got to. Oh, can I show this on <laughs> YouTube? Ah, let me. Uh, this one is censored. <laughs> yes, that that'll do just fine. <laughs> Did we remind him to uh not show the nipples, right? I stepped away for a second. <laughs> oh, I I I am I'm I didn't open that one. Okay. So I can't help <laughs> are, are I don't know if you guys this? have ever seen the artwork of uh this incredible Captain America anatomy. Uh so Take that, but now, why is Orihime one of the Titans? Like, with the tiny arm and the... Just, it's awful. Anyway. All right. Um, so there's that. And then... Uh, and then somebody had pointed this out. I think what's strange about this cover page is that he could have had one with Mirko, who's in the final arc, by the way... Or someone like Mount Lady, yet he chose a minor. Look, like, come on now. First of all, this is clearly indicating that she lose that she loses her power. How do you show the other characters losing their power? Normal. Uh, new layout meets or he may greatness. Uh, the three melons in one picture. I truly bless y'all. This person says double standards if it was a physical being. By the way, character in the second screenshot is 15 to 16 years old. So basically, uh, oh, oh, this is so disgusting. You chose a minor, but or he made melons. Or but where this minor's okay. <laughs> yeah, all right, basically. Um, and then, uh, I, I love this. Twitter is never happy. She's a minor! She looks like a child! <laughs> all right, so like, you, uh, no matter what, <laughs> you can't win. Uh, and then... Shonen fans, when they find out that Shonen's meant for teenage boys who like boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, now, there is a additional article linked in the doc that I will not be clicking on. Twitter users fixed My Hero Academia art beaten mercilessly by the nude filter. So basically, somebody Click. drew clothes back on her and then somebody else redrew her without the tape covering everything. And the retweets on the the one where she's wearing clothes is 2,000 likes or whatever. And the nude filter is over 10,000. So. <laughs> <laughs> Men of culture won again. Well, if nothing else, this just means that they've weeded out the part of the fandom of My Hero Academia that uh, you didn't want in there. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> All right, so real quick, uh, I will be stepping outside to let my dog take a, a piddle break. Uh, I'll be right back. Whisper amongst yourselves. We no, will. no, no. Why would you do that? I'm devouring this ball of 
Waffle Crisp is pretty fucking good. I've been doing some thinking too. Penises mostly. Why wasn't that the actual dub? <laughs> I mean, you can make it your own dub if you find that clip and swap it out. Then re-export it and be like, yeah, let's uh, let's watch some Ace Attorney today. Yeah, you like a hobby. What? Everything he says sounds like it needs a pop filter. Hey, chat, thanks for putting up with all this That's bullshit. kind of what happens when you're point blank on the mic. <laughs> on your, your cheap USB mic. I can't wait till Random 11 rewatches all of this for the clips. Yeah, Random 11, make a clip of this section. Okay, keep a time. Oh, I hate these motherfuckers. Why am I putting up with when, this? When Brad Stop walked up. touching your mic. God damn it. Yeah, you're going to ruin the clip. Oh, Jesus Christ, oh, man. I heard him swallow. <laughs> yeah, so uh, starting when Brad left uh, till when Brad comes back, make that a clip. Put it on the clips channel. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think it gets This moment right here. Ending right here. Fucker doesn't you may get return in. to the normal cadence See? of your voice. Brad, you ruined the clip. Shit. No, it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. You know when it ends. <laughs> Right when he starts to speak, just cut me off. All right. Netflix establishes in-house game studio. Whoa. So Netflix is establishing its own in-house game studio in an attempt to rely less on third-party developers and promises to make world-class original titles without ads or in-app purchases. The game studio is going to be based in Helsinki, this is the first time Netflix will build the studio as opposed to purchasing existing ones, such as the Walking Dead developer Next Games. While several games are available through Netflix's mobile app, it is alleged that less than 1% of Netflix subscribers play the services games on a daily basis. I didn't even know they did games. $20 billion in debt! <laughs> <laughs> also, I want to read this again. Netflix establishes an in-house game studio. Juxtapose that next to Google Stadia <laughs> ending service. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, yeah, Google tried this and determined it was not something that you could make money doing. It's a real bright future for Netflix. However, Google said yeah. those who use the service will at least get a refund for their purchases, including the physical hardware. Uh, yeah, from what I've heard. Physical hardware. The, the, cool. the if you like the, your subscription fee isn't going to get refunded. Oh, that sucks. And all your save files are fucked. <laughs> well, no, there it's just some... that because the game it is Honestly, on your stadia, it's de decommissioned. You literally wasted all that time. Does Google you expect over. you to ship them back the stadia? I don't no. think they want them back. Uh, well, I was refunded. thinking like. Would it make sense for them to refund you because they want the parts back to melt down the chips and shit or whatever? Like and get the gold out of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was some guy <laughs> complaining that he had spent like sixteen hours in, or, or I think it was sixteen hundred hours or something in um, Red Dead Redemption, and his character is gonna die once they shut down the service. <laughs> Section well, two. that's what happens when you opt into a that's thing that rough. you know doesn't I've got uh, one allow you thing to buy to physical to bitches or even download. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So uh, moving on from here. Hold on. Please? Before you go, Reese, yeah, I'm stop sorry. making fucking mouth noises. <laughs> Mute your mic. <sighs> Reese, I'm going to need you to keep the suggestive dialogue and. Uh, bodily erotic. noises erotic <laughs> your eroticism is too much for this podcast <laughs> okay so, daddy <laughs> so blaze blue creator toshimichi mori departs arc systems works now i gotta ask you guys do you think that the retconning of bridget into being trans was just too much for this guy, 
It was the last urethra straw. The last straw. <laughs> what the fuck? All my <laughs> highlights. I have left Arc Systems Works, the company I worked at for many years. I first joined Arc Systems Works after working on Guilty Gear 10 as an employee of PickPack. At the moment, I'm thinking of creating and delivering a game for the users in some way. And I'm going to focus my strength on that endeavor. Wow. Hey, guys, I'm going to make a game for you in some way. What the fuck? <laughs> Anyway, so he's left. Uh, moving on. Destroy All Whoops. Humans 2. Reprobed removes sex change mission. Mm. <laughs> yes, I know. But it is made by um, Arc Systems Works. And he was uh, brought on originally to work on Guilty Gear 10. So. Should we it promote, was a joke. Uh, should we promote erect copies as the new uh, term for uh, physical media? I bought the heart. I bought the erect copy. <laughs> that, sounds, <laughs> that sounds awful. Buy erect, bitch. <laughs> but yeah, so destroy all humans. Well, the first destroy all, right. all humans also had uh, when it was remade had some things taken out, which that's sad. But um, this game um. You know, at the very beginning, you have a disclaimer. Honestly, I think the first one also did. But this uh, remaster had a disclaimer about, oh, uh, this has, like, dated language and stuff. Uh, yeah, let let it, me read this real quick. The mission where the objective... First of all, it's titled to destroy all humans. All humans. And the all object inclusive. of the game is to ruin the lives of humans. So this mission is uh, where the objective is to ruin the lives of humans, has a man secretly wanting to become a woman, but is concerned for his wife. And the player, the alien who destroys his life by ruining it, intervenes by taking over the man's body, calling his wife and telling her that he's already transitioning to become a woman. The mission ends with the man successfully transitioning, but learning that his wife has left him. The removal of this mission from the remaster will be deemed peak hypocrisy as the game boots up with a warning saying the game is, quote, nearly identical to the original and those who have a problem with this should avert their fragile eyes. Humans of planet Earth, be advised, while the visual experience has been upgraded, the content and historical record of the original invasion of the Furons remains a near identical clone. The Furon linguistic and cultural experience remains unaltered. The story, words, and images contained within it may be shocking to the modern human brain. Now, this Near the is point, a very powerful word here. Right. The point of this game is to ruin the lives of humans. But some lives are apparently so fragile... That they need to be protected from a game like it's god damn it. They're playing an offensive game and they're expecting to be in a safe space. Yeah, they're something. playing an offensive game, but don't want to be offended. Remember, remember, I don't think they're playing the it. The problem of they're... you're too weak minded to understand the world around you, so you well, have to get pissed about everything. Remember how we covered that China changed the ending to the Gru Minions movie so that it wouldn't corrupt the Chinese because the character fakes his own death and escapes. And in the Chinese version, he gets arrested. And the Chinese people are like, why is it that only China needs a kid's movie's ending change so that we don't get corrupted by it? Like, for real? Isn't that exactly what's happening here? Only well, I mean one group had the game altered. Because they couldn't take the, uh, they couldn't I mean, take their lives being ruined, quote unquote, in in the course of the game. To be slightly fair, right? It's not so much that they couldn't take it; it's that the company that made the game didn't want to risk pissing those people off. Yeah, but don't you think that that should be offensive to the trans community? That they would that they would coddle them to that degree. Well, yeah, but 
Oh, you're uh, saying that they're such little I bitches think, that they need they can't they take are so anything. Weak, they cannot I, I think they prefer anything. the power over a company versus. Of course they being. would, and and I will say that if they didn't change it, they would get canceled over not changing it. I, I'm I just think saying. <laughs> I think this, this is a scenario. A it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of. Yeah. I I honestly don't think they would have gotten shit for not changing it. Um, no one, no one's gonna care about this old game. I don't think very many people are even going to play long enough to get to that point in the in the game. So, I I think I'm it was like a non issue. I didn't think they need to do it, but it's, it's our world up. is getting our world is getting to a point now to where it's not whether or not someone's going to get upset. It's whether or not someone who has enough authority over something gets paranoid about. I would like fake to news point again and bullshit. Point out. It is the collectivism of cancel culture that gives it its power. That pushes it is bullshit. the collectivism of rallying together to get somebody canceled that has the bargaining power to do so. Again, why I oppose it when it comes to unions and everything else. Um, so uh, even worse news. Then this thing I didn't give a shit about, and also kind of don't care about this. Digimon survive English translations, the epitome of unfaithful. No. So, excuse me, your bluster ship. Besides, we think Saki and Ryo went this way. Do you get to kill, kill it with character? fire? Yeah. <laughs> sin, my sin. <laughs> <laughs> also, it gets worse. Oh boy. Oh geez. Takuma, my man, let's make like a bread truck and haul buns. That's worse than Shaggy. What the fuck? Uh, I just don't want to see you get all butt hurt when she gives you the cold shoulder. I ain't butt hurt. All right. <sighs> well. At least I will. It's not I am like... inviting you to join my mass suicide. <laughs> hey, at least it's not like inserting some new narrative agenda or something like that. I mean, it's inserting a lot of cringe. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just wrong. gonna say it. It's just inserting. <laughs> if cringe. if your <laughs> agenda is to kill me with cringe, you're succeeding. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So I, I, I would like to share that there is actually, believe it or not, as we go through games news, even more cringe to be gotten. So if you are at terminal levels, turn back now. Because the One Punch Man mobile game ads are another level of cringe. Have you guys seen these yet? The Netflix adaptations. I seen it. Oh dear lord, let me play. I've seen it regretfully. <laughs> so I can only show you up to the last 40 seconds of one of them. <laughs> no. Um Oh God. yeah, I, I just gotta show you. What the hell? Who are you? Oh, one punch man. One punch man? Let's get started. What's my name? What Punch Man? It's a good game. What Punch Man? You shouldn't have to pay. Oh! Get SSR in the freeway. Oh, okay. I can't handle it. <laughs> that song uh, is the worst tuning like, I've ever like, heard. How, yeah, how that, bad could it be? How bad could Oh, oh, God. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, I, I, I can auto tune, but I'm going to auto tune to off key on everything. <laughs> right? I didn't, oh, I didn't know you hated me that much, AC. <laughs> Doesn't he kind of sound like Johnny Young Bosch before the auto tuning? Let's get started. <laughs> I guess, kinda. <laughs> he kind of looks like him too, with oh, the bald right. cap on. One punch man. Let's get like that. <laughs> kind of. I can't. I, I just. I just don't understand. The hell is wrong with them? With this. Dude, fucking... it gets worse if you can believe it. I. I feel like I already have an angel. I get Garouge. It's an SSR character. The battle ball is three million. You did the wrong fight. What the? Why didn't you tell me earlier? I was all worried. 
I got Uncanny some resemblance. SSR. Five million battle power. You really want to fight me? I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> What's up with the freaking like Russian accent? Right. Well, because this, I'm assuming, is a Japanese mobile game that hired, you know, the people who were. This is why we do not need them. Japan it, dubbing they, things. Russia happens to be located it, remarkably close to Japan. Now, I can't show you all of this one, but I can show you some of this one. It's equally cringe. Yo, Baldy, what's your name? You need to show me some respect, huh? You're an S-Class? <laughs> well, I really gotta go now. Uh, all right, that's it. Okay. So I also accidentally skipped over this part. I swear to God, this is the exact sound effect that happens when Dio uses the world in JoJo. Is that not the exact sound effect? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it's uh, Supreme Cringe. Apparently, Monday to Sunday, every single day, you get a new uh, free unlockable thing for opening the app. Why is it? it what it? Uh, what is the setting of this? Is it a diner? It's a Denny's. Oh my god! All right. Anyway, so I don't know. I don't have anything else to say about it other than that was tremendous cringe, and I am a little bit surprised. Like there aren't even enough characters in One Punch Man that I feel like you could you could get a mobile game going. I, I was thinking the same thing, but uh, I mean, if you think about it, like if they there's use the a fuck ton of heroes, though. Yeah, that's basically what they are doing from the preview I saw of the actual gameplay. Oh no! What is this? Oh, oh, I, I, I have, I have oh, to bring up though. This. I brought this up uh, back when the uh, the modern console game of One Punch Man came out. I'm like, what game is there? You just win in one punch every <laughs> time. What game? <laughs> one I, I haven't seen this one. I, I have to check it out later. Um, anyway, yeah, that's that's it for games news. If you have survived, your cringe uh, endurance is higher than most people. <clears throat> All right. Into release news. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. All right. Believe it or not, Shueisha has confirmed the French publisher's all-in-one One Piece book was, in fact, unauthorized. What? I know. Can you believe it? The all-in-one book that wasn't even the entire series is not, in fact, authorized. And didn't have Oda's name on it and had some random person's name on it. So a Shueisha representative told The Guardian on Tuesday that French publisher JBE Books all-in-one one-piece printing was unauthorized. Kato Murano, a member of Shueisha, of Shueisha's International <laughs> Rights Division, said, quote, The product is not official. We don't give permission to them. Our licensee in France, which publishes One Piece, is the publisher Glanat. Earlier this month, JBE Books released the first 102 volumes of Ichiro Oda's One Piece manga as a single bound book across 21,540 pages. According to a spokesman for the publisher, get this, there is no copyright infringement because it is physically impossible to read the book. <laughs> Who the fuck? Well, <laughs> close is to it that. glued together? No, I think what they're saying is that if you were to actually try to read it, like you can't actually look at the pages due to the fact that like the book spine is too well, big. Well, I think he means you can't hold both ends of the book while reading it <laughs> page for page. You can't when you get to the middle, you can't even look at the middle pages. Right. You basically have to Honestly, have it folded to your knee. 
I, I think they won the case with that alone. I think that'll hold. Your life is over! <laughs> So the limited edition 50 print run is being sold as an avant-garde art piece called One Piece. Note the missing space. The work is credited to artist Ilan Monarch, who describes it as the materialization of an ecosystem saturated by media. And each print costs 1,893 US dollars. The book's format is intended as a contemp- as a commentary on piracy and online fan culture. According so we made the... our own piracy. <laughs> no, nah, bro, you don't understand. It's like, it's like it's supposed to be a commentary on piracy, man. <laughs> Yo, you can't <laughs> sue me because this is my. Uh, you can't sue me. It's ro- a commentary, man. I didn't pirate it. No, nah, yeah, this is nah, my bro. role it's... play of a real life pirate. <laughs> uh, it, I, don't, I know. I don't even look, have a boat, man. It looks man. like a bootleg, but actually, it's like my peace on bootlegging (laughs) online participatory culture and the medium's new network possibilities have intensified the nature of of comics beyond the scope of professional established expertise with new and disruptive forms of entrepreneurial fan culture readers scan translate and distribute online their favorite manga series i just did that in book form (laughs) One Piece is a product of this expanded digital production belt. Turns out that, the, that they just printed the fan subs, the, like the, <laughs> the scanlations. <laughs> the One Piece book aims to shift the understanding of digital comics from a quantitative examination of the formal possibilities of digital comics to a quantitative re- reappraisal of comics as big data. <laughs> I, I like, <laughs> I, I like <laughs> my persona I gave this guy. <laughs> so there is an it, argument that um it's um what's it, first right of sale or whatever. Basically the idea is if he's buying these books legitimately and then manually altering them to create this one piece thing. Mm-hmm. Um well it's just like a resale then. Yeah, then he's just basically selling his own book. Um, just at, like, yeah, but the thing is that in Japan, if you buy a Love Live figure and a sexy hentai figure and you cut the head off of both of them and swap them, that's illegal. So the Japanese yes. are going to have a problem with it regardless. <laughs> well, he's not doing it in Japan. So, <laughs> so Manok is known for creating remixes of influential comics. Some of his projects have been controversial, such as his Cats comic, a redraw of the French edition of Art Spiegelman's Mouse, portraying the characters as cats instead of mice. Whoa, what a visionary! We covered this last podcast. The publisher accused the book of copyright infringement in 2012, and Monarch destroyed the copies on their request. Oh. The One Piece book measures 12 by... 18.5 by 80 centimeters <laughs> and has a spine width of 80 centimeters <laughs> 31.5 inches it is presented as a single volume literally one piece inside a black slip case each copy is numbered and contains monarch's signature it was first announced two weeks ago but is already sold out you have got to be kidding me <laughs> well, you I guess it? I Wait. guess you you're a little late on forcing him to destroy them all like the fucking Art Spiegelman got, you know. Would you, if you had two thousand dollars worth of disposable income, would you buy it just for the lulls? I mean, did I buy uh what was his name a. Uh, Kent Williams or whatever his name was, uh, uh Battle Angel Alita manga. Yes. <laughs> what was Dude, his name? Terrence Williams. If if he didn't have his name on it, and it said like Oda or something, mm-hmm. and I could see people being more likely to buy it. But the fact that he's put his own name on it as like okay, now it's his. Like fuck that. <laughs> yeah. Dude, all I need to do is make a custom art box that fits all like 27 or whatever volumes of One Piece that are currently out in DVD. And then uh-huh. I just have to say, dude, you can't read it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible to watch. It plays every episode at once. <laughs> <laughs> 
You can't watch it. It's like a box. How there's no <laughs> yeah, player in it. I mean, like, yeah, you can look at it, but can you watch it? So it it is forever like my greatest misfortune that I didn't acquire Terrence Williams original work Naruto book one. <laughs> <laughs> It's out of stock, and I, I don't know if I'll ever get it. Remember, guys, a long time ago, a powerful demon fox appeared with nine tails. Uh, this is just the Naruto synopsis. I thought it was the part where he says, inventor of anime and, <laughs> and manga. Naruto is a prequel to the world of Avatar The Last Airbender and was intended <laughs> to show how in a much earlier epic, the Fire Nation was originally three fire villages that banded together amidst the troubled and turmoiled world that also included many other nations, some of who are intended to represent other kinds of elements such as water, earth, and air. This book is dedicated towards keeping my idea out of the hands of those who would use it for the wrong reasons and make me look like a fool <laughs> through making <laughs> use of my ideas for the wrong purposes that I have in mind for this franchise. That was a, quite a sentence. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm terribly sad that I didn't end up getting it. Because <laughs> that would have been fucking awesome to just own. If you did that, we should have just scanned his book and then resold it ourselves. And oh, yes. We <laughs> need to make sure I'm that pretty this doesn't sure fall that, in the wrong I'm hands. Pretty sure that the, uh, I'm pretty sure that the author of Naruto would still come after me. For that. Well, and it turns well, out Naruto is just a prequel of Once Cucked on Another Planet. <laughs> Now, now our version, we just have to put a line through Terrence Williams and then put uh, "Look at your podcast." <laughs> and then then we're good. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that uh, that's the amazing work of Terrence Williams. Um, I don't think you can see the episode where I showed off his Alita manga that I did buy um, because that's podcast ninety four. <laughs> I feel like uh, Terrence Williams' adaptation would look like the Steelbook co uh, cover. Uh, Dude, literally, yeah, literally, for the audience here, literally the inside of the um, of the Terrence Williams Battle Angel Alita is, I, I'm dead serious. He took the manga for Battle Angel Alita and, and stuck it on a Xerox machine and printed it out. And I, I shit you not, it is only in the top right corner yeah. of a... Uh, of an eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 12 or whatever fucking 10 by 12 page right and it's just the upper right corner is a xerox of the official licensed alita thing for every fucking page and he sold that shit <laughs> and <I'm... laughs> Uh, anyway. By the way, I, I did look up the Urusei Yatsura thing. It has Sentai Filmworks under the licensed uh, thing. I feel like we so, did cover that. Yeah, it's going to be on High Dive, so that was pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just double checking when we were on the BBC thing. But what I was going to say is that uh, I won't get your hopes up for a dub necessarily because, as we know, Rene, the other Rumiko Takahashi thing Sentai got, didn't get dubbed. So, well, yeah, Greenland but, is still potentially cut. But, but see, the thing is, we don't care about that. We want the, the BBC dub that already exists to get onto right. a, onto a Blu ray. From, from, so I also feel like Ursa Yatsur is more popular than Rene. Like, it has some. And, dude, I'll just say, if you got that dub on there, that thing would sell so fucking well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they already make their uh, Blu rays unrated, like, all the time. So <clears throat> I just love through. the idea that the British broadcasting company throws the F word around like nobody's business on TV. <laughs> and, and I just love that. Anyway. Okay. So, um, seven seas continues wonderful Wednesday acquisitions with my girlfriend's child shoujo manga and more. Oh, it sounds like a bit of a cuck here. Please go home. Miss Akutsu. Is this Marin Kitagawa? No. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> My girlfriend's child. A pregnant and romantic, a poignant and romantic yeah, show. Joe very drama pregnant. <laughs> about a teenage couple <laughs> whose lives are changed forever after a positive pregnancy test. <laughs> Just not a good way to phrase it. My girlfriend's child, and and the the cuck and his girlfriend's child, right? Like anyway. 
I didn't mean to fall in love. Oh. Anyway, that's it. Moving on. <laughs> uh, Kodansha USA licenses Koji Seo's The Cafe Terrace and its goddess manga and more. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't also include the article from bounding into comics where you see one of the girls weird shaped asses, uh, also raised by the demon Kings and Gamaran Shura. Okay. Wow. All right. Moving on. All what? right. Here we are. I got it. Uh, I did. Okay. I literally had the freaking window up. Okay. I'll get it. <laughs> Gundam Reeking Nisa and G4 Perfect Pack Blu-ray. I'm going to skip Paranorman and Caroline. Cor Coraline? TZ Master Takagi-san, Carolyn Tuesday, Chika the Coffin Princess, Toka Geton, The Moonlight Lady Returns, Just Because, exclamation point. Monthly Girls and their Nozaki Coons. Uh, <laughs> Beyond the Boundary, again, uh, Imperfect... No, no, no. <laughs> what? Imperfect. That's used or well, not used. Yeah, but... yeah. Why is this being like? I, I got, I got back up now. I can. It's, it, it's basically the date that it was. Did listed, you, I did guess. you notice the part where I actually opened all of them though? But I got. Oh, uh, you the fucker! I've got the Sentai stuff. Too. Fine. <laughs> I've got the Sentai stuff too. So, Hunter Hunter is some for some reason back up on right. Is, is on right stuff okay. now in the steelbook form. Okay, as Which, you uh, get to those Sentai things, you're going to need to private chat those links to me so I can include them in the doc later. Okay. Um, Thank you. So we got the Hunter Hunter Steelbook, which used to be the uh, Best Buy exclusive. And they only did the first volume. What does that say? Limited edition Blu-ray what on that? Steelbook. In the yeah. squares. Oh. Steelbook. Have you never seen a Steelbook? I've never book? seen it. The three, the E's and the B are just like reversed. It's, it's just like a three. Who? <laughs> All right. Oh my yeah. God, I skipped so many articles. <laughs> you gonna say? Oh, I just uh, said I'm, I'm glad I skipped a bunch of articles. Uh, FDM. Didn't include them in the uh, I, I was gonna say I. Uh, so keep that in mind if you actually just want a single volume of it in Steelbook. In Steelbook. Yeah. yeah. Also, it's like the full price that it used to be. And it's like twice the price of the normal version. Turns and it's out half... people really wanted that Steelbook. We only made one for, for the stupid uh, first volume. And it's half the amount of episodes that the later volumes are, too. Yeah. So we have Beyond the Boundary, which has like all the entire series and Zero and the two movies, I guess. So it, uh, it's the first time that we have the uh, Steelbook dub on non Steelbook. Right. right. So this is the one without um, Crystal Laporte. Yeah. yeah. Um, Although I just say, everyone who wants to watch it, uh, she has a catchphrase in Japanese Fuyukai desu. Uh, it's better. Watching Japanese. Uh, Monthly Girls Nozaki Kun is getting a re release for some reason, coming with a uh, slipcase on the Suntai store. Oh, pre order bonus. Great. And just because. Wait, you got to send me those in the private chat. I will, I will when I'm done. Okay. All right. God, God damn it. Holy shit. God. It's like a married couple. <laughs> Just because uh, English and Japanese, 12 episodes. Toka Get On. Which get I, on me, Toka. Get on. The Midnight <laughs> Lady Returns. Which, or Moonlight Re Lady Re This is a sequel to a hentai, if I believe. I believe. Wait, for real? Yes. It's there a is a hentai called Moonlight a, Lady. Uh, something. You got to look. Moonlight Lady. <laughs> There's a 26 episode series that just came out in 2007. So does that mean what they the uh, get their virginities back because it's not <laughs> hentai? Uh, yes. I don't know if if these two <laughs> lost their virginities in the first place. Turns I mean, out, it turns out you get your virginity back when you have sex with an android. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just so sad they give it back to you. Oh my god, so sad. <laughs> Electric yeah, play you're just right. Moonlight though. Lady released by uh Media Kitty Blasters. Media. Yeah. Uh, does, this, does this have dub? Which one? Chaika? Yeah. Yeah. I I actually I actually have the original complete collection. It's weird that they decided to re-release it for some reason. Oh, what drove me crazy in the dub is how the main girl talks like an ape or whatever. That's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> like a, freaking like, eyebrows for days. Are yes. you referring to, to the Joe Rogan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I'm talking. She's she talks like <laughs> she talks like a uh, a caveman. Can oh, like, Joe? Can can Dolly turn Joe Rogan into a magical girl? Well then, Challenge Carol it. on Tuesday is getting a release on Blu-ray from Sentai. This used to this is a Netflix series. It used to be uh, released in the UK only up till now in English. Those all twenty-four episodes, limited edition, coming soon. All right, who's an artist style that does? Uh, go Rango. What? Van Gogh. What? As a, no, as a magical girl in the style of. of... Okay, go ahead. Hard go ahead, capture go, Sakura. Clamp. Clamp. Go. Okay, no, I gotta do somebody. Joe Rogan with. Toshi Ye Urushihara. Joe Rogan with your, with the alley hands. <laughs> And then this is also getting a uh, exclusive slipcase from Sentai. Oh no! Confused. It <laughs> looks like this request may not follow our content policy. Satoshi Urushihara is too spicy. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, what about Gona Guy? Go oh, it looks like you're as a magical girl. It's the magical girl aspect. Hmm. Maho Shoujo. Like. While you're doing that, I'm going to continue. TZ Master Takagi, Takagi Sans Season 3. As I pointed out in chat, <laughs> we're getting Season 3 before Season 2, and that's interesting. Yeah, it's going to be AIDS sitting on the shelves. Here's, here's one. Here's three. What the fuck is two? Wait, we're going to get the movie as well because Sentai got the movie. So it's going to be one, three, a movie. Jesus uh, Christ. Oh Joe. my god. Joe Rogan is the content that you can't do on Dolly. Oh my really? god. Hey, I, well, I, my dude, I could do Joe Rogan on crayon. Yeah. I did Joe I did Joe Rogan stained glass on crayon. This is easily the worst artwork I have ever seen. This is not in the style of Satoshi Ur S Urshihara. <laughs> no, this is Okay, All right, let's keep moving, Reese. All right, so we got uh, Gundam Reconquista in G Part 4. This is the import. It's the import. Skip it. Also, here's the artwork. It's awful. And then Part 5. Import. And then Goodbye, Don Glees. Coming in December. Goodbye, Don Glee. <laughs> and that's it. All right, cool. Send me those. Uh, yes, mommy. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, also, should we acknowledge the fact that this imperfect uh, is it really like you've got a fucking cosmetic issue and you're gonna only drop it down at twenty six ninety nine? It just came out. So. All right. So Hideo Kojima said after watching Cyberpunk Edge Runners, I wanted to watch mm -hmm. Cyber City Oedo 808 by my favorite director Kawajiri. So I bought the international Blu-ray version. Whoa, Discotech! Shout out from Hideo Kojima. Except, ah, oh, fuck, he bought our old upscaled release because <laughs> <laughs> uh, they also did a native transfer later. Yeah, I love how they're. That's what they're worried about. Like it's. Just <laughs> They're like, hey, you should just hook him up with Steelbook. Yeah, yeah. Come on. yeah this, this is a disingenuous release of what we've actually put out. <laughs> disingenuous. 
Also, Neon Genesis Evangelion Blu-ray Special Steelbook Edition in Germany focuses on what's important for those... Uh, I mean... For those of us who are cultured. Yes. Yeah, ignore set one. Set two and three is where it's at. Uh, set three, I, I never realized that Ray was so much bigger than Asuka until I saw... <laughs> Ray... Like those are some spears yeah. right there. I have the weirdest boner right now. Anyway, so this is a thing. Moving on. I mean, I still need to buy the GK's version, so also uh Shipu Iron Leaguer is getting a Blu-ray in Japan. So if you wanted this thing. It's coming to Japan and maybe I think that's one of the things that was on Daisuke.net when that existed. And Dawn of the Discs announced coming from a nameless media a 4K UHD of the story of Ricky, Ricky O. Look at this. Like holy shit. Is it a four like did you split it into four fucking movies? To d I'm amazed. Was it Still, four movies to begin with? I don't... I think there might be two movies. I'm not... I don't know. Maybe just like you get... Maybe in Germany, they just like to do like four different box arts you could choose from. I... Fuck it. Fuck it fine now. Anyway, maybe we'll get that. Also, there's a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray of Bullet Train, Walmart exclusive, that you can get on Walmart. Or there's the uh, Best Buy exclusive. Steelbook. It also exists. So, so I didn't take you up on your uh, movie ticket, but I'll take a, uh, a Steelbook copy <laughs> if you want. <laughs> that comes oh. out next week, right? Or two weeks from now? Uh, well, considering that I need to pay but off this car, also. <laughs> uh, it comes out on the 18th. Uh, uh, is it, are you saying you're not going to be able to get the, the steel book for it? Uh, I'm saying that I can barely afford it on my own <laughs> for my own <laughs> collection. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm going to put these over here as a reminder to buy at some point in my goddamn life. Before they're out of stock forever. And and disclaimer, the movie was fucking great. You should have seen it in theaters. Shame on I you. I did. All. <laughs> oh I yeah, you did. For my father's oh. birthday. All right. Oh. You loved it, right? Yeah, we did. It was fucking fantastic movie. It was. The only problem I have with the movie. One problem. There is a mistake in it where when Brad Pitt is fighting um uh Lemon. And he takes the gun and ejects the magazine. The literal next shot, the magazine is back in the gun. And then the literal next shot after that, the magazine gets put back in the gun. So, huh. my one issue with it. Sounds All like right. nitpicking to me. <laughs> Sounds like nitpicking. No. At this um, point, nipple looking. At this point in the podcast. I would like to remind you that you can support us by buying merch from stealthweave.com or you can shop on the OCA podcast store. I have a new piece of merch coming that I don't know if my fulfillment center will print oh. because it is quite spicy. How and spicy? I... I am choosing to get it printed so that I may have a copy first <laughs> because I want it and I don't want, uh, I'm also not sure if the colors are going to print perfectly. So I want to make sure that I have that before I put it on the store for you guys to buy, but I'm very much looking forward to it. <laughs> All right. So that's the thing. You guys can do that. Uh, now, Danganronpa Junko Enoshima Bunny Girl figure deceptively innocent. Oh, is she a whore? <laughs> uh, from what I've seen, she's a bitch. But... Oh. No, no, no. She, she, She'll she, cut I mean, you up of, in more ways than one. It's kind of a spoiler that it's like, oh, she, whatever. She, she's she hexing you with like... 
she bad. seems mm -hmm. like a not bad person, and then oh, she's a bad person. Oh, let's not keep scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's Coward. that. And then also, horse girl Ashige Chan figure uh, eager for male attention. Uh. She kind of reminds me of um, Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl mixed with Sagiri from Aero Manga Sensei. Yeah, I see it. <coughs> I'm going to come. <laughs> but you kind of hit that one a little bit too early. It should have been on that picture. But the no, part. I think that... You guys didn't see it because it covered it, but as soon as I got here, that was what... <laughs> that's when it ejected. Uh, that was the literal perfect time. <laughs> All right, anyway, so uh, high end merch brand Super Groupies dives into Steinsgate merch inspired by Okabe Rintero. So, <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> so, Reese uh, told us about this. And we you can go we, like go to the super groupies. What you already go? Yep. And so where's go the to de details? Details. Why? Why you no go down? Uh, Excuse they me. They do go I'm down. Sure. They do go down. Why is it not working? I can't see it. <laughs> well. What a great website you got here, Zerk. <laughs> oh, let, me, let me see if I can get it to work. Too bad we don't have like a, a web sponsor. Use Squarespace with our promo code to not have this <laughs> this horrible website design. Does your website suck ass like ours? Get Squarespace. <laughs> Move tab oh, yeah. Come on. to new window. Is it important? Yes. yes. Very important. Okay, hold on. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> all right let's see if i can get hello okay so first of all I mean, they've got a backpack and a wallet that's unimportant get to the watch damn it i know <laughs> i'm just saying that's you're an <laughs> idiot okay oh my god okay so we've got i mean obviously the, the orange display it's got a thing in the, the like the divergent meter yeah in the middle and so the vivid orange display at the center that model that the iconic divergent meter shows the divergent numbers of different world lines according to the time. Reading at 12 noon, it says 0 0.5170, zero, blah, blah. Yeah. The alpha That's the time alpha line. world line. Yeah. At 210, it shows 1.130426 from the beta world line. And at then 4 the Steinsgate world line is at, at when? 420 in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> totally worth it. Yeah, it totally. and, and it's like the the minute hand and the like the arrow is the the second hand. Like the thin one is the minute hand, and the thick one is the hour hand. I think. Um, you could show us because I know you bought it, so you just throw it in the picture. And, and so, so <laughs> like the the hands are hidden underneath. So you can't actually tell the time. Well, it's only hitting no, it's like only you can tell the time the when it's it, when it when it gets just the ten and the twenty because you can see the the one there barely. What a great time! And then here's this one, like right below it. But yeah, all right, okay. shitty watch. Nice like okay, an alarm. Clock. All right, wow! Thanks for calling it out for a shitty watch. <laughs> Fuck you! You're not getting okay. one for Christmas. Zeta Gundam Mothership recreated at unfathomable size. It's unfathomable Unfathom. without fathom, <laughs> right? That's no how fathom. big it is. No now, fathom events for you. Dude, that this car is like unfathomably large. At this unfathomable size, I would like to now <laughs> take you to K-Own's <laughs> iconic school. <laughs> Shrunk down to fucking like itty bitty. Was this a school for ants? Now see, <laughs> that's fathomable, okay? <laughs> anyway, that's it. All right, moving on. Okay, Japan's newest capsule toys, buff shirtless dude torso cushions, sometimes with very pink nipples. This is a thing. It's called the Kinikushin. 
a combination of kiniku, which is Japanese for muscle, and cushion. It's oh. exactly what it is. A cushion shaped like a muscular bear chest with bulging pecs and clearly defined abs. The complete lineup consists of five variations denoted by the color of their bow tie. Kaniku purple, Kaniku red, Kaniku black, Kaniku blue, and Kaniku pink. Aside from their different colors, the designs are identical with the exception of Kaniku pink. <laughs> where the color where the color designate, designation applies not only to the bow tie, but also to the cushion's extra prominent nipples. See, this is what I call gender equality, the gentlemen. The media is, is sensitive. <laughs> so that's why Kiniku Man is called Kiniku Man. <laughs> yeah. Kiniku shins are for customers aged 15 and older. Oh, They're actually not designed for human use. Instead, the 2.75 inch long cushions are intended for use as accessories for your figures. With the company saying, quote, <sighs> You can have fun letting your figures bury their faces in these stout chests. Oh, that's weird. So this is what they had to say. If anyone sees these, please tell me where ASAP. Don't care if I have to take a plane or a boat to get there. I am collecting all of these. Anyway, moving on from here, let's talk about the big cock roll that wows the taste buds at a Japanese restaurant in Saitama. Fuku Rokuji sells man's romance on the menu. We've perused some unusual menus in our time, but this week we came across an item that made our eyes pop and our jaws drop as it jumped off the paper at us with the words, big cock roll. <laughs> in case you're wondering, the cock in its name doesn't refer to a rooster. It's meant to mean big penis roll. Oh. And it's written as Kyokan Romaki. <laughs> to top it all, <laughs> the sign, bottom left in the image below, comes with a few love hearts around the blurb that, which reads Men's Romance. Oh my God. <laughs> <Otoko> no Roman. <laughs> It certainly jumps out at the diner, along with a couple of other equally saucy signs that read Mokori Gyoza Set Meal, the Erection Gyoza Set Meal, and Beef Gingin Curry Udon, Beef Ecstasy Curry Udon. Is, uh, what is it? Men's Romance? Is that the evolved form of, uh, Boy's Love? <laughs> men's ro <laughs> What's the evolved form of Men's Romance? <laughs> <laughs> our ever adventurous reporter Masanuki Sunakoma was tempted to try them all but he couldn't resist getting his mouth around the man's romance cock roll <laughs> so he called the wait staff over to order it and when he did he found himself whispering quietly like a teenager <laughs> buying condoms for the first time at a drugstore <laughs> <laughs> the person who took his order immediately lit up, taking great pleasure in saying loudly, well, the big cock might be tough today. Let me check for you. <laughs> Before scurrying what a dick. Oh, fucking <laughs> course. They were, uh, like they whispered to you, like, one big cock roll for this one. <laughs> <laughs> And they, bring it out with, and they bring it out like with balloons and shit. <laughs> like sparklers sticking out okay. of it. <coughs> <coughs> Masanuki, <coughs> Masanuki looked down at his plate, hoping the other diners hadn't heard their conversation, <laughs> only to hear the wait staff calling out to the kitchen, uh, to the chef in the kitchen. Looks like we've got a big cock. Can you handle it? <laughs> <laughs> Masanuki blushed as he felt as he felt the full room of diners smirking into their bowls of food. It was a 10 minute wait before the wait staff returned. This time shouting, a long time "Thank you market. for waiting. Here's your big, big cock." <laughs> And there it was. <laughs> Seriously, this is like um this is a restaurant designed for um masochists who are into embarrassment. Being shamed. Right? Yeah. Like, being shamed. And there it was. In fact, there was not one, but two big cocks on the tray before. <laughs> Double <him>. penetrating. <laughs> 
And they weren't joking when they said they were big. The weight of them made them seem more like ehomaki rolls made for a giant gorilla, shaped like a can and heavy. Dude, that no, that's false advertising. Those that's two chodes. <laughs> <laughs> These certainly weren't your average maki sushi sushi rolls, They're and what hid average. inside them was also <laughs> impressive. Nestled in the center <laughs> was a filling of fried lean pork cutlet, salad, plum sauce, and cheese. Perhaps oh, the only time a cheesy cock is acceptable. <laughs> oh God! Jesus Christ! That chicken doesn't, or uh, that pork. I guess. I guess it. I was gonna say that no that chicken, chicken does not found. look <laughs> cooked. <laughs> Why would you not use chicken in the? Seriously, cock I was like, what? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Despite the heavy contents, the big cock roll was surprisingly non-oily due to the juicy tenderness of the meat and refreshing thanks to the fresh salad ingredients. High in protein. Still, it was a mouthful. There's no cock oil? For you. <laughs> so did they come with semen sauce or what? Uh, it has cheese. Uh, fresh magma. Ma <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> Masanuki usually has a voracious appetite, but even he couldn't manage more than one of these in one sitting. <laughs> Have you seen that TikTok going around where the guy says, uh, in a room with a hundred dicks, how many do you choke on? And the girl says, Oh, none. He's like, That's impressive. <laughs> 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 Thankfully, the restaurant allowed him to take the second roll home with him in a pack that cost him an extra 21 cents. And thankfully, the wait staff didn't yell out, customer taking a big cock home as he left the restaurant. <laughs> Here's your big cock to go. <laughs> While a lot of diners will no doubt relish in the chance to order a big cock roll, <laughs> there are other non-suggestive meals on the menu for less adventurous diners. No cocks here, but still satisfying. <laughs> At, at 1,500 yen, the big cock roll is a small price to pay for a memorable meal. Bonus points if you eat it around the time of the Japanese penis festival. Yikes. <laughs> so I'm just saying, if you guys wanted to really up the funding on the Patreon, <laughs> I will fly all of us to Japan. To and get we will the all eat roll. big cocks in there. Six <sighs> big cock rolls into this table. <laughs> <laughs> anyway I mean it All looks right. good <laughs> you heard it here folks I, I knew you is. would be into that <laughs> into cock rolls alright I'm going to come back to this next one that, I, that I gay have... denial that FDM says looked pretty fake to me <laughs> is that yeah, audio random coming you'll have my... to authenticate that after the stream <laughs> hold on do you guys hear that, or is that coming from my... No, it's coming from yours. I, I don't know where... <laughs> Hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, okay. I found it. <laughs> But by the way, I was I... like, what the fuck is playing? And then I heard a burr, 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 and it was a transformer. <laughs> because I have a I have a YouTube video up apparently that has uh uh Damon Mills's voice in it from when he went by uh his other username. Anyway, that's a thing that's on my <laughs> computer right now. <laughs> All right, I'm skipping this as well. Okay. Oh, shit. How could I almost forget the super important thing? Yeah. Yeah. There's so much important stuff here. We can't skip. Okay. So, first of all, the unimportant shit that nobody cares about. Japan's population of people over 100 surpasses 90,000 for the first time. To they be have exact, more 100 year olds then oh never mind hold on 90,000 okay 
I was, uh, I was about to get scared, but go ahead. What, what were you going to say? <laughs> the army of 100-year-olds. <laughs> I, I was going to say they have more 90 or over 100-year-olds than um than in Toronto, but no. Oh, okay. No. It's only 90,000. I'm sorry. How many 100-year-olds are in Toronto? I meant in all of Toronto. All people. It's like <laughs> 10, over a million. It's like 10 uh, times the population of Nevada. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, so you're telling me this isn't even that impressive. Like Toronto's got them beat by like 7 million hundred year olds. Like, <laughs> okay. So to be exact, the number of centenarians is believed to be 90,526 after shooting up by 4,016 since last year. This is also the 52nd consecutive year that a record number of people with triple digits ages has been counted. To put things in perspective, when the ministry started this survey in 1963, the number of people over 100 was only 153. Who's the leading country? Japan. Well, there you go. In terms of gender, an overwhelmingly large number of centenarians were women. Of the 90,000... Crap, I hit the wrong button. Sorry. Fuck off. I thought you were outing yourself uh, as a woman that's over 100. <laughs> of the 90,526 counted this year, 80,161 were female, accounting wow. for 89%. The survey also calculated, get this, that there are 45,141 people expected to turn 100 between the beginning of September and the end of next March. That means that by wow. the end of next March, there will be a 50% increase. If nobody dies. If nobody dies. <laughs> there will be a 50% increase in people over the age of 100 in Japan. By March. That's six That's months from now. Like Crazy. Unbelievable, right? Anyway, I I thought that was worth sharing. This is also worth sharing. <laughs> uh, before we get into this story, I would just like to say that um, I don't know what you have planned in terms of articles here, but um, stay away from prolonged exposure to pictures of the actual person, as YouTube does or has classified that as adult material. Uh, yes, so, I know but that the Tim, school has Tim it. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it, funny how that works. <laughs> worst, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Good point. <laughs> YouTube has determined this is inappropriate for people under the age of 18. The school, however, has determined it's perfectly okay. So let me uh, let me screen share the video file because we happened to, we. This investigative journalist named me went and found it. Last time we told you about it. Hold on. We'll come back to that. So first I would like to read. And I would just like to point out. Kim Morrissey at Anime News Network. And Casey Basile. Fuck. Casey Basile have chosen to write condescending articles about Tucker Carlson without sharing the picture of our favorite. Oh, this is the one that was deleted. I knew there was one I had to open this way. You'll recall last podcast. Come on, archive. I don't have all day. <laughs> You'll recall last podcast. <laughs> Come on. You'll recall oh, yes. last podcast. This is the teacher in question. Now, according to Anime News Network, Fox News host Tucker Carlson likens teachers' prosthetic breasts to Japanese genre of exploding milk porn. That's a mistranslation, by the way. He says roughly in the clip. Yeah, in which we'll play in a minute. In one of Fox News's weirder moments, show host Tucker Carlson 
brought up a genre of Japanese internet porn to describe a teacher's prosthetic breasts in a segment on Monday. Exploding milk porn, he called it, possibly a literal translation of, of bakunyu, which colloquial mean, colloquially means huge breasts. Actually, it means breasts, explosive breasts. Like literally, as, as I will, as I will jump around now, I, I want you to know. Remember when I pulled up G Show and I showed you the kanji for the characters in My Hero Academia, what their names mean? <laughs> this is Baku in Bakugo. It means to burst, rupture, or explode. It is the same kanji that shows up in bakuhatsu, the Japanese word for explosion. The second kanji in bakunyu has two potential meanings, and one of them is indeed milk, like the word gyunyu, or cow's milk. In Japanese, though, there's a lot of linguistic overlap between the concepts of milk itself and its source. And this kanji can also be used to mean breasts. Whoa. It's this second meaning, breasts, that Bakunyu is referring to. And so the literal translation isn't exploding milk, but exploding breasts. It's nipple time, pal. That's exploding metaphorically, by the way, in the sense of breasts that are dynamically, dramatically at the large. Seams. Yes, from what I understand, Bakunyu literally refers to breasts that are so large that they can barely be contained by like the article of clothing or whatever that's being that's attempting to conceal them. Um, when I looked it up, the prison school uh, lady was the example that came up. Mako? The, the I don't know her. I forget her name. You know who? You Mako. know her. Yes, Mank. It's got to be her. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, more natural. A more natural translation would be gigantic breasts. Though, if you wanted to be colorful, I suppose you could go with something like bazongas. <laughs> anyway. Giant milkers. Yeah. So I love how they say here, "bakunyu," written in kanji. Also, the most safer work bakunyu image you'll ever find on the internet. And then they go on to say, wow, look at that. Two safer work Bakunyu images in one article. But they go on to say, what did they say? Uh, aside from Carlson's mistranslation, calling Bakunyu a genre of pornography ironically diminishes the word. It's like saying big boobs is a porn genre while ignoring that the term that has a meaning and use is outside of discussing porn. I'm sorry. Did you or did you not go out of your way to point out this is the most safe for work Bakunyu image you'll find on the internet? Oh, look at that. Two safe for work images in one article. The fuck? Anyway, let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the anime news network going. So Carlson claimed the prosthetic breast visible in viral footage of a woman working in a classroom are, quote, based on a style of Japanese internet pornography, which translates roughly into English as exploding milk porn. Carlson returned, <laughs> returned to the comparison in a follow-up segment on Wednesday, this time with a graphic that illustrates what exactly this genre is. <laughs> I just like the idea that they had to to get the rights to use whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> <laughs> we need to use this in a segment on exploding milk porn. On what? Ah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you say, hey, uh, Angela, what you, you're going to have weird shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nickelball says, I'm on my lunch break and I'm happy to hear the conversation is massive milkers. <laughs> 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 so in both segments he expressed outrage that a canadian transgender teacher would wear prosthetic breasts allegedly modeled after pornographic content and described it as quote the abuse of children note that carlson misidentified the individual shown in the footage in an attempt to dead name the teacher 
How the, the fuck is that abuse of children? I'm sorry, I've reacted naturally. How abusive fuck, to the eyes, though. How the fuck honestly. is it abuse of children? Is how is it, it not an assault on your being? <laughs> I'm okay, just Lance. Well, I think a... I think you're looking at the wrong thing here. No, 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 about no, no, no. I know. I know. It was of the. I know it was the transgender person. It's not thing. transgender. He's not transgender. We don't know. Hold on. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. I just. Well, I don't understand. But okay, continue. Lance is blind. He doesn't get it. The Halton School Board released the following statement. Quote, the Halton District School Board would like to formally correct misinformation that is being spread online and in the media about a staff member. Oakville Trafalgar High School has received significant attention online over the past several days. As part of this coverage, a teacher has been incorrectly identified as Stephen Hanna. While we cannot confirm the identity of the individual in the photos slash video slash radio segments, we can confirm that the individual is not Stephen Hanna. It's Stephanie. No, uh, <laughs> Stephen Hanna is a staff member of the do of wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, OK. So they say Stephen Hanna is a staff member of the Halton District School Board, who is an entirely separate individual and is completely unrelated to this matter. The HDSB requests that all news outlets slash online publications who have incorrectly reported on this correct this immediately and remove Mr. Hanna's name from all content, i.e. print, online, video, etc. related to this matter. Carlson also engaged in transphobic rhetoric during both segments and compared the teacher in question to the guy in the van trying to give your sixth grader candy. Sixth grade? It's worse because yeah. he's stuck in the class with the kids. Yeah. So look. For hours. Great. Great. This thing fuck. God damn it. Uh, oh I've got God. I've got the actual fucking um, got the actual Hillary article Clinton? here. Apparently. Okay. It's now looking gross. Yes. I'm going to play this segment. <laughs> we can pause and talk over it if we want. Damn it. All right, here it comes. At Oakville Trafalgar. Last time we told you about a teacher at Oakville Trafalgar High School in Ontario, right across from Niagara Falls. That teacher has recently started wearing enormous prosthetic no. breasts no. in the classroom in oh, front of children <laughs> as part of a sexual fetish. In case you doubt that it is, the costume is intended to emulate a genre of Japanese pornography that translates roughly as exploding milk porn. So for a number of days, a couple of media organizations, including a Canadian media outlet that visited the school, reported that the identity of that teacher is Stephen Hanna. Oakville Trafalgar High School made no attempt to correct those reports. Why? Well, they wanted to protect this man. But after our segment, the Halton School District Board in Ontario emailed us to say that contrary to these multiple reports, which we cited, the teacher in question is not, in Keep fact, called Stephen Hanna. <laughs> well, what is his name? Okay. Well, the school board refused to tell. Has anybody taken shop? I have. Yes. No. I cut off part of my ring finger in it. Wow. You're an idiot. Let me ask you a I question. Well done, shop. If you have long hair, that's they, against the what is literally the first tail. thing they teach you in shop. Literally, uh, you know, long hair, put in a ponytail or a bun and a cap. This is the instructor. They have like multiple violations. Now, Those tatas are probably in violation. This <laughs> this video that they're currently showing here is the first one I saw when this whole thing started, and I legitimately thought a pregnant woman was using this saw, and I was like, "Oh fuck no!" Like, what is about to happen on this viral video <laughs> that's on Twitter? And then I noticed. How wait was? a second. School said, "Quote: We cannot." Like confirm my brain literally. Like, I couldn't even register what I was looking at. It made that a pregnant belly. I didn't realize, like, the obviousness of it. it. Like, in my brain, it was just straight down. Like, I, I just... The I identity of the individual in the photo, video, radio segments. Well, why not? This is a teacher. This is an adult man who's enlisting children in his sexual fantasies. You might want to know his name because he's a dangerous creep. So today, once again, we reached out to the Halton District School Board to ask, why are you hiding the identity of a man who is enlisting children in his sex fantasies? They refused to comment. 
In addition to the school board, Oakville Trafalgar High School in Terry was also protecting this teacher. In fact, the high school has a policy of protecting teachers who expose like themselves in the classroom. That one. <laughs> the school's official policy state they, that, they quote, dress codes must prevent... Source. I'm just saying, if you told me that this was Steven Crowder infiltrating an Ontario school, I would believe you. <laughs> the school's official policies state that, quote, dress codes must prevent students from wearing clothing that exposes or makes visible genitals and nipples. I'm going to I'm going to reiterate that for you. The dress code states that the clothing must prevent you from being able to see or make visible the genitals and nipples. So when they brought this up, this is the school's response. Oh, okay. That's the policy, but it applies to students. So this guy is literally their response was it that only applies the to dress students. code does not apply to the teachers. Yeah. Only the teachers the could wear a bikini, I guess. Well, you know what? In Canada, Canada you can topless. legally go topless, so they could go in their topless, according to this, I guess. He's free yeah. to wag his prosthetic breasts in the faces of kids because he gets off on it. This is disgusting. It's the abuse of children. It harms children. Sexualizing children harms them when adults do it. And we know it's happening because it's on camera and students have complained about it. But the adults, the school board and the media are protecting this guy. And it's not just Canada, this has started in the United States. And unless parents speak up and say, we will not accept this, you may not sexualize our children, you may not enlist them in your sexual fantasies or your fetish life, keep that at home, it will continue. <laughs> I'm still kind of curious as to like, Whew. just getting the facts straight here. He's, at what point is this uh, fucking, I just, it's weird as it can be. What is he involved in, uh, actually involving the kids in besides just being this complete and just total being icon? there and okay. waving them in front of them? Let me ask you this, Link. I would puke. Granted, I know that's you're assault in its own life. But tell me, that's what we were saying earlier. If this was an actual woman showing up to school intentionally not holstering the cannons, <laughs> would this be appropriate for children? I don't think it's appropriate in any capacity. I'm just, I'm just trying to get to the, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it's like, is does, so, it, just stop, does it just stop at you know not at this person being a fucking like not wanting to wear appropriate clothing and having this weird breast? So the, uh, the point is, issues? the point is that if this was inappropriate for a biological woman to do it mm -hmm. and involve the classroom in showcasing massive breasts with nipples protruding mm -hmm. how is it okay just simply because it's a biological male doing it with prosthetic fake breasts and pretending well because it's uh stunning and brave of course <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> jesus christ so uh full full disclosure this is disgusting i think this individual needs help but at okay. the end of the day, I'm just I'm just trying to get to the full. I, I, would, like, I, top of I would like to point out a couple things. With one of the story. Well, we don't. Yeah, know. Thank you. I was wondering if there was. So we've got we've got uh, this Photoshop with the Chad <laughs> Giga Chad, Chad Thunder Tits <laughs> <laughs> on 4chan. A Canadian user posted, "This dude is gaming the system." An anon here yesterday was in this dude's class. The teacher was almost fired for, quote, toxic masculinity last year, as well as not embracing woke culture. He dropped red pills to his class, such as how silly gender neutral bathrooms are. The school board hates him. He's now upping the ante to exploit the very clown world the school and society itself created. His long game is most likely to get fired and then sue for discrimination. There is no other explanation. No better way to troll clown world than to become an over-the-top caricature of a woman. And that's pretty much exactly what I expected. Now, Holy I would shit. like to point out oh. the, this you... person is wearing God damn it. This person is wearing the mask, but not Under covering the nose. The nose. The nose. 
Somebody mentioned here. I knew it. I know there's a lot to unpack in this photo, but the mask under the nose just seems superfluous. Doesn't it actually kind of lend some credibility to, to the that, idea to that, that this person post? is actually trolling? That this person is actually trolling because of that's like that's like the dog whistle. Dude, right? nurse, dude, a lot of nurses don't even wear their masks right. It blows my mind. It it, it, it does anyway. So it, it does yeah, lend some credibility. But the, the, this person is also clearly he they have mental problems enough to wear that outfit. So I could see them having mental problems enough to not okay, wear the mask so, properly. So clear so 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 let me get this straight. And for anyone at home who's trying to process this, listen to this audibly, they're saying that they suppose that since he got in trouble for being overly anti woke and not liking the gender neutral bullshit. Now he's flipped the script, gone full woke, uh, well, inhaled the rainbow, and gone, okay, now, I am going to be everything that you're trying to make me be. There was literally a South Park episode about this where the teacher <laughs> tries to get fired for being gay uh, uh, because people are getting a payout. And I believe it leads up to the episode ending with him getting Mr. Slave on the table, on his desk, in the classroom, and shoving a, a gerbil up his ass. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? So, Lemony look. Winks, I think, is, and it was a song. The song's actually pretty funny, the Lemony Winks song. <laughs> so, look, I, I don't know. I don't know what just one comment on the okay, well, then four chance. I, I have up. then the, let, let me apologize for my comment. I have no idea what's going on if any of this is true because if this is the shit he's pulling, it's kind of funny as fuck. Although I do believe it's inappropriate as hell. I, I don't think kids. any. I don't think even the craziest person would like unironically wear uh, titties that graphic and large. <sighs> okay, That's I why I, I thought something like this similar. It had to be some sort of troll or like. Uh, discreet Stop. like oh protest whatever okay i i agree that this is the first thing i thought of when i saw this like oh he's just trying to get fired but i will say first of all on the 4chan thing one the 4chan thing is weird because it's a dude or sorry an anon here yesterday was in the dude's class and mm -hmm. therefore i guess the rest of this is a repeat of that guy's post yes um so where's yeah. that guy's post you're right um, and, but then also it's 4chan. So why, if he's going to fake it, why not just pretend to be that guy again? Literally like, all of this could have just been fabricated in Photoshop and all that. Right. But, um, well, why would you ever Photoshop an, a 4chan anonymous And then post? just right, make the post and then leave it at that. And just... Yeah. yeah. So, Some people so have too the much thing time I will hand. say about this is that if wow. this was any other country, even the United States, I would have a hard time believing it. But the fact that it's happening in Canada <laughs> makes this seem so much more likely because absolutely that is the one place where you could literally go from, oh, he's toxic masculine, right, to immediately about face to, oh, Stunning a woman it was a cry, yeah. It was a cry for help. It is. Yeah, it is literally the country I can see it happening. Well, now, so we have we have laws in Canada that like make it illegal for the schools to precisely to misgender him and shit. That's, um, uh, Bill C sixteen that Jordan Peterson started uh, his uh, his whole crusade against was uh, was the the precursor to the fact that now it is like they have compelled speech over over pronouns. So and and this is the problem because if he is faking it, the school literally can't say shit. Literally, even if yes. they know, yeah. even if they even were like, if they know, this guy is one hundred percent just like, fucking with us. Exactly. They can't so the, say that's shit. what I'm saying. Because it's Canada, the school has to say, "Well, the dead naming, and it's not. It, it, this is a, a woman, and like they literally, even if they know." That he is He's... fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger underneath that, <laughs> but you know, like alpha male Giga Chad, but pretending to be a woman. Even if they know that, the they can't second do shit. they call him out on it, he, he, can, sue. he can sue them. Yeah, like literally, this is a game of chicken. And again, 
It is because it's in Canada that I believe hook, line, and sinker. This literally could be what's happening. I see. I'm just honestly impressed that in in like what 20 minutes now we've covered and probably talked more fact on this than uh, the rant that it felt like Tucker Carlson went on about it because he kept going off about, of course, the obvious how creepy it is, but it's like. Look, this I makes a lot more be, sense. We are amazing, yes. But I you would, cannot I would, discount the fact that Tucker Carlson has invented a genre of pornography called exploding milk porn. That, that is something is, we cannot take go. away from. I will not do that. You're correct. You're correct. Oh, now, the one thing I will say, though, milk porn. Foot and about protect how, your cows. About how the law works here. When so, if, <laughs> if he were to make a complaint, he'd have to go make a complaint in front of the Human Rights Tribunal or whatever, mm-hmm. and they don't really care about what like the law is. Um, and so, right. it's very much like a, if they don't think you're telling the truth, they'll just ignore what the law says and just like, oh, you're fucked anyway. Too bad. Like, um. That guy in the BC that was going to um, uh, waxing places, like, uh, and getting Yan- his balls Yanev? waxed. Yeah, Yanev? What was Jessica Yanev Jessica or something Yanev. like that. Yeah. Um, they got he got ruled against. They mm-hmm. were like, "Nah, you're like you're pushing it. You're this isn't what the law was made for." But so, imagine if he had succeeded, right? <laughs> If he yeah. had, imagine how hardcore the people that that uh, you know he was going to the the waxers. Imagine how how hardcore he would have railed them, right? Yeah, yeah. Like so, that's the problem. Real. The school feels like at any moment that could happen to them if they if they let slip the mask that knows he's he's making this. But up. but but this is the other thing. Like, um, he has to also publicly not let this mask slip Mm -hmm. because if he does like he could do it privately but like if the if he were to sue and and go in front of the human rights tribunal and they found out that he legitimately didn't believe it he was doing it out of spite then they would just say oh Mm -hmm. well then fuck you well i Um, mean it's a it is uh a amazing level of can like it, the stakes are so high <laughs> just it's so it's, fucking funny I, i'm also i'd also like to throw out the little the not devil's advocate but the dark horse here of that well let's say they like what he did so wouldn't it be funny say, well, if go one of it. our canadian hosts actually Ooh. didn't realize it but they were in his class from before he before he donned the press <laughs> I, i'm glad to say I, I i was not but um so <laughs> In re- in regards to this, in a way, I I wouldn't say it's necessarily a checkmate, but it's got checkmate potential because you see, if like obviously he's hoping that everyone's like, okay, this is dumb, whatever, let's stop these dumb policies, and they go the other way and they're just like, uh, yes, we embrace you, our sister. Um, mm-hmm. what's going to happen is like every everything's going to get so out of whack, out of control that it's going to going to turn all the public opinion on the type of su- subject to the tipping point where they're going to push for like de-legislating uh, the stupid stuff. Are you familiar with Titania McGrath? No. There is a, uh, there's a Twitter account called Titania McGrath. And uh, all she does, it's, it's a, it, it is a fake account. account. Is it Titan? What? Titania? Titania. Queen of anyway. yeah. So, I, I activist, healer, radical intersectionalist poet, non-white, ecosexual, pronoun, what the variable, fuck? selfless and brave. Buy my books. So it is a <laughs> fake account with like, it's literally like an AI image, right? And all it is, is a, a attempt to make ridiculous takes that seem like they could be believed by the woke crowd. And literally people will like defend intentionally insane claims. Like if a straight man refuses to fillet a female penis, that just proves he's actually gay. 
<laughs> Thank you, Sussex police, for protecting this child rapist from the trauma of being misgendered. <laughs> wow. As a left-wing activist, my priority is to make sure that multi-billion dollar corporations in Silicon Valley are empowered to set the limits of acceptable speech. I see the usual bigots are body shaming this inspiring school teacher. It doesn't matter if the breasts are prosthetic. They are her truth and should be celebrated. Right? And then like this post, 5,000 likes. Misogynists always say that do-it-yourself is a man's game. But just look at this beautiful woman teaching kids how to use power tools. So empowering. Right? So anyway. Is anyone of me reminded of like those that cereal contest? I forget which one it was where they asked people to vote for what cereal they wanted. There was like a chocolate one, but there was an onion one. It's just a troll everyone. They were like, we're going to all vote for the onion one. The onion yeah. one won. It released in like one country. The Adolf I, Hitler school of, what was it, friendship? <laughs> I feel honestly like the people, I feel, I guess like would be acceptable in that regard. Uh, I feel honestly to the effect that the people that would go, oh my god, this is amazing, she's beautiful, and all this kinds of shit, are the same people that just want to see how far and dark this can go? Uh, I don't know about that. Anyway. Uh, I think they actually have drank the Kool-Aid and think that, you know. I mean, they're not, I mean, he hasn't even gotten implants. I mean, go the extra mile, dude. Like, I'll be a little impressed. You know, these are just plastic bags he's tied to his chest. In, implants That's his truth, you idiot. And... <laughs> oh my god. Implants they... cost money and you can't take them off when you go to sleep. Also, <laughs> trying to get that size of an implant would be impossible. <laughs> As Dolly Barton. Right. <laughs> Those were real. All right, so I've got one more thing to share with you about this topic okay. if we're done. Dear God. I saw this and I could. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Ronald Why would they Weasley, do that? Weasley, <laughs> have you been staring at my massive fake tits with protruding nipples again? That's fifty points from Gryffindor. <laughs> oh, Just imagine. I mean, I don't Just even imagine. Not now. even the cloak of invisibility can hide that, Adam <laughs> 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 Oh, you wrong for that. You, All right, anyway. <laughs> so a Japanese monkey hunting team shoots woman with tranquilizer dart. <laughs> oh, what the f I go. I need to know about this. A city's attempt to protect residents from wild animals ends up sending one of them to the hospital. <laughs> On Monday afternoon, residents of Fuji City in Shizuoka Prefecture reported seeing a monkey that had wandered into the area near Fujikawa Station. In response, City Hall dispatched three municipal employees and one contracted specialist armed with a tranquilizer rifle to subdue the animal. The four monkey hunters arrived at the station shortly before 3 p.m. and summoned a woman who had seen the monkey so that she could supply them with more information. It seems that her report was cut short, though, because while she was still at the scene, she herself was shot by a tranquilizer <laughs> dart, causing her to lose consciousness. And no, the monkey hadn't managed to procure weaponry of its own and launch a counteroffensive. The <laughs> dart, the dart which lodged itself in the woman's left arm, came from one of the human hunter's rifles. City officials say that while the woman was at the scene, the hunters were taping the barrels of their rifles to prevent air leakage. And in the process, one of them what? inadvertently pulled the trigger of his weapon, what? discharging it. The woman was taken to the hospital where she regained consciousness roughly an hour later, but it wasn't until another hour after that she was lucid enough to properly communicate. The dart had contained a tranquilizer dose sized to subdue a 15 kilogram or 33 pound monkey. Thankfully, she suffered no injuries and was discharged that same day. But the incident still seemed more like something you'd expect from a sketch comedy act than an official animal control operation. <laughs> and, and has produced reactions on Twitter such as, quote, So slapstick comedy scenarios like this can actually happen in real life. I bet the monkey is laughing at the human's dumb mistake. Can't help laughing at this. Good thing it wasn't a bear-sized tranquilizer dose. 
that would have turned out a lot worse. Really, a rookie mistake on the weapon handler's part. You know, honestly, no. <laughs> that's uh, who, okay. That's first a com- of all, completely untrained mistake. AC, the guns were leaking. No, they're they're, they're taping up the barrels to avoid. The oh leakage. no, no. That okay. So they said okay. It's probably like no, a, no, no, no. It's like, a, it's prevent, like a paintball gun. They powered yeah, by CO two. So they were taping the barrels of their rifles to prevent air leakage. Uh-huh. So I think what they mean is that um, they taped them so that when you shoot the dart, it doesn't let air escape from the uh, from the edges because of warping in the um, in the barrel or something. If if they're plastic. But the pro- I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Uh, it's a it's a weirdly phrased thing. I'd have to look into it. The last okay. commenter makes a good point. Doing any necessary maintenance work on the rifle before loading it with ammunition oh, seems like a no brainer. And one of the first rules of gun safety is to never point one at something you're not okay shooting. That was the third thing I was going to say. What the hell is the rifle of whether it's loaded or not? In light of what happened. Some may question whether the city really needed to send a team to capture the monkey in the first place. However, six. Yeah. Right. <laughs> However, we have despite, a monkey on the loose. <laughs> despite their penchant for taking relaxing soaks in mountain hot springs, Japan's monkeys aren't always so peaceful in nature. This summer, for instance, more than 60 people have been attacked by monkeys in Yamaguchi City, with some victims being asleep in their beds inside their homes when the monkeys began crawling and biting them. Pardon. These monkeys are just getting framed for crimes from the Yakuza. When the monkeys began clawing and biting them. Fuji City has had several monkey sightings. Sittings? Good job, guys. Over the, over the past month, in parts of the city where the animals don't ordinarily dwell, including along streets used by school children heading to the Fujikawa station as part of their commute, which has also prompted the dispatch of adult monitors keeping watch for creatures uh, during the morning and afternoon hours. The Fuji city government has issued an apology to the woman and pledged an investigation and policy review to prevent accidental discharges from happening again. I hope she sues. No the problem, shit. though, is that it's in, in America, if this fucking happened in California to me, I could sue for, like, minimum $5 million and win. But in Japan, it'll be like, I want $5,000. Right. Anyway, um, meanwhile, the monkey remains at large, and hopefully any further team sent to capture it will be made up of different members. Damn, they didn't even get the monkey. Right? Okay. <laughs> God, now, if you, if you thought that was a good article relating right. to animal hijinks, I'm pretty sure this next story is old. It like, is. I've heard this story. I've been holding off on it for a guns. An elephant kills a woman and then returns to her funeral to attack her corpse. In Odisha, India, bizarre animal stories are heard often, but none are quite like the latest vicious and deadly elephant attack of a 68-year-old woman in India. Maya Murmu was collecting water in Raipai Village, located in, fuck me, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, (laughs) where a herd of elephants came her way. That's when she tried to flee, but one of the elephants rushed toward Murmu and trampled her. She was rushed to the hospital, but died from her injuries. Murmu's family b- brought her body home for funeral preparations to take place the same evening. That's when a more unusual event occurred. As the ceremony was taking place, the Times of India reported that a herd of elephants appeared from the forest, sending villagers running. They left Murmu's body behind. One of the elephants then reportedly attacked the woman's corpse by picking up the body and throwing it in the air. In a video of the alleged incident published by the Times, a herd of elephants can be seen at the edge of the forest with one chasing a villager as mourners yell toward the herd. The herd then destroyed... 
The herd then destroyed Murmu's home with three <laughs> other houses being damaged because of the attack. No one else in the village was reported to be harmed. A villager told the Times of India, quote, we were terrified after witnessing the elephant herd on Thursday evening. We have never had such a ferocious elephant bunch earlier. Murmu's family was able to continue with the ceremony once the herd of elephants left the area. According to the print, the elephant in question had strayed from the Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary, which is more than 100 miles away from Odisha. The level of violence from a usually peaceful creature has many wondering what could have caused such behavior. One person tweeted, Danny Phantom of all people, Whatever that woman did to the elephant is the biggest mystery of the decade. <laughs> While there is no confirmation on the elephant's motive, many users online speculate the woman was a part of a poacher group that killed the elephant's baby. Now, this is the thing, though. The, this article didn't, didn't go into detail on it. Not only did they destroy her house, they killed all of her goats. Like, they... <laughs> <laughs> Like Fuck I said, it sounds like someone's in framing the fucking elephants. Jesus. I didn't know until this moment that there is a fucking a video. Please have the ba the body getting thrown up in the air. Please, <laughs> I need this in my life. <laughs> it's so you can Photoshop the elephant out for an explosion. Come on. The elephants must be able to like sense the evil in this one lady. It needs to be extinguished. Ec Elephant Exorcist, new anime. <laughs> Please tell me that it's there right now. Please. The Exorcist. Yes. That. Yes. that Throw I, it. I don't think it's. I don't think that time I got reincarnated as an elephant exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it. <laughs> it looks God like it's receding. It. I don't think the body's over there. It would be in the town. Is this right before they start? This is Sam India. Hayden? There is no town. <laughs> <laughs> How could you not film that part? Maybe the elephant actually oh. ate her, and that's what we were watching. That was the largest cuckening I have ever experienced. I mean, that's the tough. description was pretty apt. It just said they were on the edge I of the forest. I will never get over it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll right. never, is now never recover. <laughs> Another 11-year-old has inserted a three-inch needle up the urethra. Oh, Quote, oh, out of boredom. Can it f*** me? <sighs> you have one guess of wh what country this happened in. China. China. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. You're China's lucky you guess. Mean, you mean ching, 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 ching? <laughs> <laughs> Three inches. So that's like, that's going like inside then. Like that's past the shaft. If it's you in China. Right. For you, maybe. <laughs> no, China is what I'm saying. Are you coming out as Chinese right now? <laughs> no. Ch Chinese and gay? Jesus. How do you survive? <laughs> oh, is this why you're so into feet? Because of the binding? You don't like normal feet because you want them to be <laughs> All right, China <laughs> citizens <laughs> seem to be going for a record of some sort when it comes to needing medical aid after inserting bizarre objects up their urethra. As it has now been reported that an 11 year old shoved a three inch acupuncture needle up there. Oh, the no. previous ah. incident having the child beat. No, four inch. Wow, <laughs> I'm not even seeing it, I'm only hearing about it through second hand, and I'm just like, I'm dying over here. Like, I the, the <laughs> amount of cringe and the amount of I have to hold my groin, I, I have to know. Do you think he inserted it? 
needle first? Holding the needle in? Or the Ooh. or this end? Uh, uh, I say the blunt end. end. You think he inserted it while holding the uh, blunt end? It would end? get caught on the I way think, in I if think, he used the well, needle. Yeah, he he okay, threw the I, blunt end in first. Logic would dictate that if you were this stupid, but also this horny, that you would at least hold on to the sharp end. But because it's an acupuncture needle, I honestly feel like this kid thought, if I can touch the prostate, I'll bust. You know, like this is what happens when you don't have enough social I have to open to my on. I have to open my prostate chakra chamber. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my, my, I have to I have to I break my it. penis hymen. <laughs> the ninth gate is open. Oh god, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> What is that a reference? Ro to? Rockley against oh. Gara. <laughs> oh, the boy was taken to Ching Shi <laughs> Children's Hospital for an x ray after telling doctors he had issues <laughs> urinating. Oh, God, I got it. No. He looked, yeah, he went in, he, he went in sharpened first and just shoved it all in there. Oh my god. Well, it is acupuncture, so he was just trying to relieve some, like... Doctors, pain. can you please fix it? I don't know what's wrong with me. Pulls pants down. I think we found the problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay, like... You didn't think the blood dripping out of it was being any indication? I, I just... Do you guys remember, like... Like, what was it that stole your innocence. <laughs> because I just... You feel like it was stolen again? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think about what the fuck is happening in China. Dude, they they live in such a... like. Oh my god, I, I don't even want to go there. Are, are they like Japan and they, they censored their prawn? They, they probably don't really have it, honestly. <laughs> Well, there we go. Know, they become so depraved because they're deprived of uh, entertainment. Uh, I, yeah, I, I gotta Google this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why do people shove <laughs> shit Stuff up in their, dick. their <laughs> dick in China? You're gonna get actual things with actual feces in that search. Things men have shoved up their holes at campus.sg. <laughs> Brad, Brad, you're gonna lose social credit score if you search that stop people are shoving beads into their penis skin for better sex yakuza right. put pearls in their dicks to make sex better for their partners oh hell all right i i'm gonna go to bed um, <laughs> oh okay so, he's gotta go be medium.com understanding the men who shove things up their pee hole okay <laughs> And for all the viewers watching, this is what happens when everyone on the podcast gets really tired. Are, are we, make, like are we making this click or uh, are we making this quick or am I going to bed? Um, I, I, yes. That's a here threat. we go. Here we go. <sighs> so he, he was taken to Jiangxi Children's Hospital for an x-ray after telling doctors he had issues urinating. And there, the sharp three-inch obstruction was discovered, inserted through... That's a great adjective through or a verb through his penis and even up his bladder tube. Oh, <laughs> the boy explained he voluntarily performed this irrational act merely because he was bored <laughs> and was curious <laughs> if such a thing was possible to which he rather punishingly learned the answer. <laughs> Chief medic Rao Pinda asserted the boy lodged the needle up his own urethra 12 hours before being assessed by medical oh, staff, Jesus Christ. Oh serving God. as the oh, cause God. behind his urination difficulty. Oh, at that point, you how are you so stupid? That was a ruse. The He went in for the needle removal. It wasn't because of urination difficulty. That was just a lie. He That's what he mom. told his parents. Yeah. <laughs> The regretful boy only sought medical assistance after his male appendage became sore. And at the time, he didn't admit to his shameful act. Cool. A non-invasive surgery had the needle removed without consequence, and the boy was sent home afterward. 
Last year, it was said a 10-year-old boy in Iran also performed a urethral insertion and required aid to have it removed, except the object, a sewing needle, was nine centimeters in length. Uh, that's shorter than three, three inches. Well, it- we know what those boys are going to be into when they grow up. <laughs> oh, God. Urethral insertion oh, disasters seem to be common in China as individuals have shoved any and everything up there and gotten it stuck from padlocks oh, no. and magnetic beads Pass- to more needles, <laughs> electrical cables, no. USB cables, no, thermometers, no, more magnetic beads, chopsticks, and headphone wires. Oh, Jesus. I remember the headphone wire one. Didn't we talk about that? Chopsticks? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine is- getting slivers in there. Look at the tags. International accidents. Bizarre. China. Fetish. Health. Jiangxi. Medical. Onanisms. Penis abuse. All right. Are are we done with this article? No. I I feel like I owe Random Eleven an apology. I've picked at him so much about the feet thing, but I've realized there's nothing wrong with that compared to this. (laughs) So I I just got to know. Actually, let me scroll through. (laughs) Let me just make sure there's nothing... That would be a really horrible way to end the podcast if there was like <laughs> detailed imagery that I didn't check. <laughs> All right. I got to understand the men who shove things up their pee hole for pleasure. You have to it's understand. It's called them. sounding. And yes, it looks as bad as it sounds. Oh. My first time witnessing a man have something crammed into his dick hole involved an extreme fetish video called Two Kids, One Sandbox. Dear fucking Lord. (laughs) Warning, Link isn't just not safe for work, but will actually ruin your life. Similar to the legendary Two Girls, One (laughs) Abort, abort, abort. (laughs) The video, which is no longer than a few seconds, shows a woman viciously stuffing a dildo or vibrator into a man's urethra while he moans in pain, pleasure, or some (laughs) terrified combination of the two. Wow, the first paragraph has not disappointed. (laughs) Many years later, the thought of this video... Is this what the kids in China are seeing? (laughs) I feel bad for them now. (laughs) This is what it's come to. They look at us, they're like, oh, those Westerners, they such perverts and shit. But All right, like, let's skip to the conclusion of this, of many, this article. Hold on. Many years later, the thought of this video and the thought of shoving something oh into my, my own dick hole continues to make me squirm in horror. In an attempt to understand this extreme fetish and the community of people who engage in urethral play, also extremely... I don't want to click on any of these by accident. I better move to my... I better stop using the trackpad. And maybe stop a few of the semi-regular nightmares I've had since seeing that video. I reached out to a few dickhole stuffing experts on the matter. How did you find them? First of all, they're all Chinese names. Please, please be Chinese names. How exactly does one engage in urethral play? Quote, the safest way to engage in urethral play, sometimes called urethral sounding, is to use devices called urethral sounds and plugs. Explains your not needles or padlocks. <laughs> Explains urethral play connoisseur and male sex blogger. That's not a Chinese name. Dave Burns, who runs the site, Mr. Racy. I do not want to click on any of these links. <laughs> these are tools designed specifically for being inserted into the urethra. I only use devices made from stainless steel, never silicone or any other material. That's because steel isn't porous, can be cleaned easily, and also lasts a lifetime with proper care. When it comes to the actual urethral play, I'm very conservative, Burns continues. I take extra precautions to make sure I don't hurt myself. (laughs) I sterilize my tools before using them. I always go slow and I never use items that don't belong inside my penis. Oh, Motherfucker, name, name one there. single item that does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that last now, point, Burns adds that some guys push the urethral envelope, so to speak, stuffing toothbrushes and even glass thermometers into their pee holes. That's insane. And I'd strongly discourage anyone from trying those things, he emphasizes. He's still not a real urethral or guys. You ever wonder why God stays in heaven? Because maybe he too lives in fear of what he's created. (laughs) 
Clinical sexologist and certified sex coach Sonny Rogers <laughs> agrees that starting slow and using equipment specifically designed for urethral play are of the utmost importance. Safety should be a top concern with urethral play, especially since it comes with more risks than other types of sex play. Oh, that's a this is a woman, she emphasizes. <laughs> Beginners should start with shallow urethral play that focuses on the tip of the urethral before exploring deep or stretching your oh god. Wait, I, are you looking are you reading, your, are you reading this for your answering? I cannot reading this for your personal like I cannot believe that the words that the specialists here are saying is actually grosser to me than reading about the Chinese kids who did it because they were bored. All right, dude. Let's Okay. So let's jump see. to the conclusion. I'm, I'm skipping. I'm skipping. Yeah. Please, please. You have to understand, I had to step away for a second because my friend came in and was like, Hey, you want to hear about a story about guys getting using their mouths to just anally make out with their girlfriends and that was more appealing <laughs> <laughs> i am not kidding you think that's a joke it's not I was like, he's, he's just like you son of a bitch i'm in <laughs> <laughs> okay i i'm just gonna i'm just gonna <laughs> command f China. Oh, oh i thought i thought i found china, china. Was like, china. Yes. oh my god china. i I've got the answer. The first recorded use of sex toys designed to stimulate the urethra was in 1200 AD when cock rings and peanut inserts were used by Chinese nobility. They do it That's... because they want to imitate their leaders. That's the answer. Oh my God. This is we the Wee Wee Kangs of the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> it's in their blood. <laughs> All right. In... Now we know the answer. We no, can... we're done. We're gone. Forever. We, we can go to bed. Thank you for spending seven hours with us just to get to that final concluding statement. Good God. So, I'm so glad, I'm so glad after all this time we still this, didn't this cover Sakamoto. No, that's going to be next podcast. Yeah, oh, next fuck. podcast. Who's anyway, I'm going to give us count. a yee outro. Anybody have something you'd like to say before we leave? Thank you yeah, for then, being here with us. Yeah, next podcast, I'm, we're going to have the Watch Club for Haven't You Heard of Sakamoto. I'm glad we made it to uh, we made it to completion. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Okay, hold on. Uh, comments. <laughs> Were there any good comments? Oh dear Lord God, not again. Okay. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>